Bonjour à tous Et bienvenue pour cette troisième journée des finales mondiales de Brawl Stars. On a commencé vendredi. Il y avait 16 équipes vendredi qui sont entrées en liste. Il n'en reste que 8. 8 équipes aujourd'hui en compétition toute la journée. Mais un seul trophée à récupérer. Une seule de ces équipes pourra être sacrée championne du monde. Ça sera à la fin de la journée. On a beaucoup d'action aujourd'hui. Et j'espère que vous êtes chaud pour toute la journée. And of course, in English, for all of the English speakers in the crowd, are you guys at home? Of course, welcome back. The Brawl Stars World Finals, this is day three. This is Championship Sunday. 16 teams entered on Friday. Only eight remains. But you know what? This is a championship. Only one can take this trophy. One team will leave as the world champion today, right here in Disneyland Paris. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I am Damascus. I will be your host all weekend. But of course, you know what time is it. Let's get brawling! Are you ready? We fell down from the top, but we wouldn't let it stop us. Felt my heart drop, but I picked myself up and didn't let it show. And I knew I had to go be resilient. I'm never one to quit. Welcome back, everybody, to the Brawl Stars World Finals. On the final day, it has all been coming down to this once again at Disneyland Paris in a packed venue. I'm ready, set, and I couldn't be more excited than to do it with you, Teddy. Man, I, it's a privilege, again, to be here at the World Finals next to, you know, the incredible ready, set. It, it's, it's been crazy already in the two first days, but now this is when things get even more interesting. 
Wow, I mean, we got insane matches lined up for you. Can't wait to get into it. It's what it's all been coming down to. So many matches leading up to this. A bit of a bracket recap as well as we've gotten through those first eight matches in the past two days. And man, have they been exciting, but it's been a lot of 3-0 victory. Some very convincing matches, but it's all going to get that much closer today. As we move into the quarterfinals, and we blast through this entire bracket in one day to crown our Brawl Stars world champions. Yeah, this is what good seeding looks like. You know, a lot of trios in that round of 16, but some closer matches too, looking at Zeta Division 1 versus Chasmank. That 3-1 could honestly have been a 3-2, a bit lower. The other Zeta Division 0 against the other Chasmank gaming team, the Brazil uh, side of things, a 3-2 that went to double match point. So we did have some of the closer series already in the round of 16, but looking at our quarterfinals today, those are already insane. Zeta Division 1 versus Reply Totem. That's pretty much a grand final quality match. STMN versus Team Kazio. Always love some uh, NA versus EMEA matches. Tribe Gaming EU versus Zeta Division 0. Hella stacked as well. And last but not least, Tribe Gaming NA versus SK Gaming. That is, that is one, one, one of the El Clasicos of the BSC. It certainly is. And by making it to the quarterfinals, these teams, they have claimed a whole lot of prize money as well. A $1 million prize pool here for the Brawl Stars World Finals. And $400,000 go to that first place team. That is going to be awarded when we crown our world champion later today. And that is going to be insane. Headed into what we expect for the outcome of these matches, though. We knew that SK and Tribe is uh, going to be a close one, but it looks like we have some similar predictions. Wow, all right. Well, for the three last matches, uh, three last quarterfinals, rather, we are all going STMN, Tribe EU, and SK Gaming. Interesting take here. But, I mean, it seems like the first quarterfinal is where we have some different opinions here, even between us, Red. Look, it's a split decision, especially when it comes down to Reply Totem. Seems to be a bit of a divisive team here. However, what we can expect is amazing gameplay across the board, but Zeta Division 1 really going against them with Reply Totem. And you think Totem is going to take it. These are the Brawl Stars world champions as well. But I can't knock it. We have to see it played on the battlefield as well. And we'll see who gets those predictions right as well. And of course, we want to hear from you guys as far as your predictions as well on the event platform, event.brawlstars.com. Make sure you interact with the stream, win some prizes. There's a skin. I think, uh, I think we've been doing pretty well on our predictions. So we got the skin already. However, we want you guys to get some in-game goodies as well and interact with the stream. We also want to know how you are reacting to some of the things that are going on here. Please share your experiences with us on TikTok, hash, rather TikTok, hashtag BSWF22 to share your experiences with us. And we can't just see, wait to see what you guys have to offer. Yeah, exactly that, because we have a live audience here. We can see their reactions. We do want to see yours too from home. So excited to see how and what everyone thinks about a World Final so far. Well, I mean, we have only a bit more time before we lead into that first matchup, and it is going to be absolutely furious. Zeta Division 1 versus Reply Totem, and okay, we already had a split decision on this <sighs> one. What do you want to say? Just just go ahead and say it. Man, I, this is a grand final. This is a grand final, but before yes. the grand final. So uh, incredibly excited to watch those teams play. Let's welcome them to the stage. Et allez, c'est l'heure de notre premier match de la journée, le premier match éliminatoire, le premier quart de finale. On en a beaucoup aujourd'hui. Et ce premier, évidemment, comme le caster l'ont dit, il est très important. C'est de grosses équipes. Ils ont fait des bonnes entrées ce vendredi. Et c'est le moment de les accueillir. La première équipe, évidemment, fraîche d'un 3-1 vendredi. On était là, ils étaient prêts. Ils sont là pour prendre le titre. Ils font partie des favoris de ce week-end. Ils nous viennent du Japon. Et si vous voulez les encourager, tout ce que vous avez à dire, c'est Zeta Gambare. Un match de bruit pour Zeta Division 1. Zeta Division 1, do they really need any introduction? Shitapo, Kenji, and Moya Goku, two world finalists on their team, one world champion from last year being Shitapo. Kenji also making it to the world finals last year with Queen Nai. Moya Goku, this is his first world final as well, but they've set a high bar and a lot of expectations, taking four monthly finals in their regions as well, just a star studded team with a lot of expectations preceding them. 
Yes, and if you guys are thinking, well, you know, the World Finals, that was a year ago. Well, they won MSI. That was in June. They got first place there as well. They just have incredible results across the board. Last year, no one saw it coming, but now they came in as big favorites for this uh, World Final 22. Well, let me counter that because MSI was several months ago as well, nearing that six month mark as well. And their opponents have been looking great in those last six months as well. Reply Totem, an absolute powerhouse. Let's welcome them to the stage. Et oui, on est là pour les adversaires maintenant. Ils sont du côté européen. On a Europe contre Japon cette fois. Ils nous ont fait un match plein de rebondissements. Le vendredi, il était très plaisant à voir. Et cette fois, ils ont un très, très, très gros client. S'il vous plaît, un tonnerre d'applaudissements pour Reply Totem Some of the local favorites here as arguably the strongest team in EMEA. That's Maru, Maori and Joker forming Reply Totem. They got fourth place in 2021 for the World Finals. They did not quite qualify for MSI and they won two monthly finals this year in the EMEA region. They do have some veterans with Maru and Maori that did get that fourth place last year. But Joker, uh, he doesn't quite have that level of experience and yet he is such an incredible talent that, I mean, a lot of people want him to be the best player of the year but for that he needs to help his team win worlds a lack of world finals experience you would never expect this seeing joker at just an eyes glancer even after several moments of observing them as soon as joker joined this team it's as if it revitalized them and directly pushed them right into the spotlight in emea going several months without suffering a single match defeat versus any of the other top teams as well. It is insane. It's never been done before in Brawl Stars. As of late, they haven't managed to continue the domination. It is sort of impossible to even make that happen. However, they might also be able to defeat the seemingly impossible of taking down Zeta Division 1. Once again, high expectations for both of these teams. I think higher expectations for Zeta Division 1 though. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, they are the current champions uh, when it comes to Brawl Stars. They have achieved nearly everything there is to achieve. The, the next level they can reach is going to be to win a, a, a second World Final. No team has ever done that. No team has ever been in two Grand Finals. Well, you know, this is still quite a, a bit away from now, but that will be decided today. And the first steps to make that happen is going to be taking down Reply Totem, which just by itself is already a challenge and a half. It's ridiculous. And they are out here to create Brawl Stars history in getting two World Finals victories in a row. It's going to be a tall task because Reply Totem is not the only team that will stand in their path. There are more to come throughout the day as well. But like you said, this might as well be a grand final because of the caliber of both of these teams. It has been an extremely stacked upper bracket uh, to speak specifically as well. And to see these two teams face off so early is a little mind boggling. Yeah, I mean, if you guys have been looking at social media in the last couple of weeks and saw some of the, the power rankings and tier lists uh, from everyone up there, it, it, it was always Totem and Zeta Division 1 in that S tier category. Sometimes Zeta Division 0 is also up there too. But looking at you guys at home, 61% of you all are gonna be voting for Zeta Division 1. 39 for Reply Totem. We'll see who gets it right as our bands are coming through here for double swoosh. We'll see Janet, Crow and Max banned out by Zeta as Totem take out Poco, Stu and, and, and Carl. First big bono from Reply Totem. That's an interesting way to go. And I think it's also a, a little bit uh, less unusual when you see that they've also gotten rid of Stu. Stu at land, he's very, very powerful and definitely a favorite for Reply Totem, but they didn't feel like going for him for the first pick, interestingly enough. Here are the picks from Zeta Division 1, though. They're going with Penny and B. And with B, you have to be breaking open these walls. Not as popular of a pick on double swoosh, in particular because you have to combine it with wall break. And I think it might be quite straightforward for Reply Totem to go ahead and pick those out, but this could be a trap laid in the draft so that Reply Totem is forced to run some of these short range and more wall breaky types and then Zeta Division 1 can counter it out with the final pick. They're gonna go Gene. I, I was kind of thinking whether they would dare to do so or, or not because Bo is a perfectly oh. fine gem carrier. But if, if you can double down and, and take the Gene and set play Bo on the lane, make it happen. And we'll see that Buster 
as a final pick, which is a brawl that is still a little bit of a question mark. It's rated quite highly as of now, but uh, to be fair, most teams haven't quite had the chance to, you know, see the full extent, the full potential of that brawler just yet. And he's going to rely, I think, a lot on those bushes. This is one where I might expect to see a Colonel Refs or something like that. It's definitely an East Asia favorite. It's also great at breaking open some walls. It comes down to, are you able to get those supers out fast enough? But of course, this has to be something that Reply Totem are aware of because they decided not to get it for themselves. And here's the Colette, actually. Where does the wall break come from? It's got to be Gene and it's got to be Bo. However, this could simply be a new approach to the map that we have not seen before. It's a very interesting draft on both sides, to be fair. But I think the, the ideas are just a little bit more traditional on the side of Reply Totem. Whereas for Zeta, uh, well, you'll have the Penny Gem Carrier more likely than not uh, be playing that left lane and Genji on the right. But there you go, quarterfinal. Number one between Zeta, Division 1, and Reply Totem has now officially started. And it's going to be the poking game early on. Try to get some early supers and put those vision gears at work. And they got to be very, very careful about this right side as well. Buster is a looming threat, but he just doesn't seem to be hanging out on that right side. And Zeta Division 1 certainly expect him to be more fighting the side of the left at the moment. Mari also being very, very cautious. Here comes Mario on the right side. He has that speed gear as well to get forward extremely quickly. A super for free. Shaitambo gets in close. Oh, oh, oh deletes oh, oh, him! Oh. What was that? I In a blink of an eye, he's gone! Wow, the Buster already shut down by the Tempo. Already has another super as well. So does Moya Goku. And right now they are dominant in the mid area. Ari has still yet to get a pull. Is going to unlock one now. Shizampo popped a gotcha. Ooh. And the pull connects onto Moya Goku. Going to open up the right side just a little bit. Kenji now on A champs. Uh, one for one trade on the left hand side, which is going to give some control to Reply Totem. The problem is that gem lead on the side of Zeta is just so massive. It's colossal, and they even have a turret down now, which is going to get them that much more control around mid. If Maori's position is revealed, it's going to start firing down on him. And he's going to be forced away from mid. Here come the mines from Joker. Kenji's going to need to bait these out. He also loses a lot of bushes, and down goes Moya Goku on the right side. Maori also picking up yet another gem. Shetampa having a lot of his shots reflected. Doesn't even have enough health to push in versus Maru as well. Vengeful Spirit's coming in as well, keeping Shetampa and Kenji low. And now they've been pushed all the way back into their own spawn, stacking up in what seems to be a death dot, but it could be coming to get them as reply to them continue to stuff them back in their own spawn. Yeah, the gems are still spawning. A pool connects from uh, the side of Totem as the tempo gets shut down. Moya Goku on the left side wants to clear things open. Maru oh. shuts him down and Shatempo still has a super, wants to clear him up, but is being very careful with this push. They are playing those wiggles. That's going to be a countdown secured by Reply Totem. But it's only a one gem difference. It does spawn on their side. A super from Shtetempo. He goes down, but Kenji is able to equalize. He's so low HP, but that's still going to be another countdown initiated by Reply Totem as they find gem 11. Mine's down on the left side, and Zeta 1 can't really bait these out as Joker is running tripwire. They have to be cautious about these. Also, another gem picked up, and the count is tied. Blue team now taking back this lead, but Reply Totem are just so close behind. Only one gem is what they need. It spawns right next to Maori. Perfect timing. Maori also denying the gotcha from Shtetampo on the right side. Shtetampo has none left. Oh! He's gonna have oh my god, and a huge pull! Reply Totem, they've taken it back, and the countdown begins! Incredible pull from Maori! He popped off just two days ago, and he's here again, providing for his team and securing game number one was just an absolutely mind-blowing pull. Look at that max range. Genji did not even realize what happened, that he was already pulled, and wow. Mari again, man, he's been popping off at these World Finals. That's what you need to make happen, especially versus such a powerhouse as Zeta Division 1. But after this game, it's too close to call. It looked so dominant at first for Zeta Division 1. Then Reply Totem, they reeled it back. They stuffed Z1 back into their spawn. And this time, Z1 have to flip the script. They have to do the same to Reply Totem. It's going to be very difficult with Buster looming in the bushes at all times. A big problem also for Zeta Division 1 was we repeatedly saw Shtetampo getting his gadgets denied by Mar Mario's not going to be fooling anyone with that super, though. Does manage to push in, and Joker also closes in to get a little bit more damage. Gotcha popped. Mario, though, stays alive. But Reply Totem have gotten away with a lot of gems. Yeah, good work there from Totem. A beautiful super from Shtetempo, but it's only a one-for-one -one trade. Gem lead still 
slightly in favor of Reply Totem. Trino in their advantage. Mari has a pull, Kenji needs to be careful, and that pull is gonna connect as well. A quick elimination as Maru secures the kill. And yet, Zeta Division 1 still have a decent bit of control, able to keep getting some gems in the mid, trying to catch up. I'm surprised to see some of these pulls hitting as well, because Z1, they're playing two gene counters here. As far as the pull game goes, Maru, though, on the right side, pops that super. He's also slowed down a little bit. Looks like he'll be safe and sound for a little bit longer. Moya Goku gets one shot, no slow. Shnitapo also trying to deal some damage on the back lines, but they have to deal with the buster on the right side. Maru finally falls. That's one kill for Zeta1. Two more along the way. They gotta oh. get these gems off Joker. Here it comes. All the gems topple onto the ground, and Maru picks up a couple of them. That's not good. Another kill as well for Shnitapo. Zeta Division 1, though, they're only one gym in the lead. Yeah, it's a very small lead, but control is looking much better for the Japanese side of the map. As they are getting to 9 now, one away from a countdown, but they do have a gene pull on Tomari. We saw what he did with it earlier. The turret is there to block any incoming pulls. We'll get deleted, so no longer have that safety net on the side of Zeta Division 1. The super from the tempo, but he gets shut down. A one gem difference now as Reply Totem are close and another pull onto Kenji. Beautiful stuff so far on these pulls. I don't think a single one has missed. For Maori, the guy is going crazy, but he still needs to stay alive. A little bump there on the mine from Shetampo. Joker also still looming on the left side. Here's a countdown for Zeta Division 1, but they're only one gym ahead, and it's quickly taken back by Reply Totem. Joker around the left continues to push things back. Another set of mines go onto the ground, and Shetampo does manage to avoid them, but so many bushes have been lost, and Reply Totem is just waiting oh, for Oh, what? What a use of the super! Zeta Division 1, they have to be pushed, and Someone has to go down for Reply Totem to take it back. He stole that gem with the Colette Super. Maori is in trouble as well. He gets shut down, and that is going to be game. Oh, for Zeta Division 1. That means what, just in this first set, how close does it even get here? Did you see the gem spawned right as the game oh, ended? He I missed picked it. it up. He picked it up, but it was too late. A millisecond too late. And Reply Totem, they did the math but it was just a little bit off, and it cost them the game. Wow, what an incredible first set already. But let's see who ends up taking it, as first gem was picked up by Moya down in the mid, and Joker gonna be matching that, as Maori will be playing his gene onto the lane so far, and with great results against Genji here, Gadget will be pumped, but the barrel will be dealt with quite easily by Maori, and Genji is left low HP and forced to fall back. Maru still on the right side. He's waiting for this next super inch. Tetampo's not biting, or never mind, he is. There is a super destruction on the right side. And he continues pushing up the right as he looks to close in Joker and Maru around the left side. Moe Goku also patiently waiting with the super. Maru, he's trying to stick close to his teammates, relatively so, so that he can get that super for free. Destruction of Tetampo on the right side. Now Moe Goku retreats to pick up a couple more gems. This has been domination on the gem count. Joker's gonna have to be the saving grace. Pushing up on the right, three-man destruction on a Kenji, but Tetampo's back. He's looking right for Maru, but Maru has a super now. It's not looking good as far as a Zeta Division 1 push in, as Reply Totem looked to work the same angles before. Great ball! No and way! Gems topple to the ground, and Zeta Division 1, they've lost every last one of them. Reply Totem are one gym away from taking it back. Maori has done it again with another game-changing pool, and that's gem number 10. They are split amongst all three players, so a bit of a weak countdown if Zeta Division 1 can find just a single kill things might get turned around, but a beautiful buster shield here to tank the left side. He knows as well that he can afford to take a couple of shots from Kenji. Is it gonna be enough? Oh! The tempo nearly shuts them down, but the reply totem, they get away with that first set. I need like a million instant replays from that entire last set <laughs> because you were completely correct. This is a grand finals in disguise. This has been so close off of just the first set. The clutch pulls hit. The gem spawning just at the last second in just a millisecond too late, costing Reply Totem one of those games. They bring it back. Not a single pull missed that entire time. And here it is. Shit, Tampo, once again up that right side. I mean, what we'll see Look just that exactly theory. how that went. That, that was just beautiful. That, that's picture perfect. Just textbook right there. Yeah, Maori has been absolutely on fire these World Finals. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna see the, the, the moment you were talking about, that final gem that would have tied things up. Look at that, <laughs> the tempo ceiling gem number 12, the one that would have tied things up. Reply Totem still managed to get to 11, and just a little bit too late, Joker Whoa. picks up gem number 12 that would have been the tie, but time is time as soon as the match is over. It's over.
has been so, so close every single game and even on the stats as well. But one team definitely does take the cake here. The superior stats belong to reply to it. I mean, more damage, more kills. Shetapo, though, I mean, we can't sleep on yeah. this guy. He's pretty much the MVP of his whole team right here, as well as on the damage overall. The Colette was putting in the work and had the game been just a half of a second longer there towards the end, he would have been able to clutch up that gem and get the interruption. That was an incredible opening set, and we got plenty more to go. Moving on to Hot Zone, it's going to be Ring of Fire for our second map and mode. My goodness, ready. I, 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 I oh. wasn't ready. Oh my god. Off the bat, we are going to see the loot picked up by Joker. On the side of Reply Dota, might get traded around in just a bit. Just to go through the bands real quick, we'll see Ruffs, Benny, and B banned out by Zeta, Totem banning out Griff, Otis, and Bell. Oh man, you don't know how happy it makes me to see Lou here. The NA vibes and full force, but th this is this is EMEA vibes now. It's very clear. It's very clear that Lou is good here. Well, okay. Well, we'll make it that much clearer, or rather, Reply Totem will if they are able to make this one pop off. Zeta Division One, though, they get the max and the Meg as well. This is a pick that I think has slept on a lot, but has been banned out more times than I think many people have expected in the World Finals so far, especially when it comes to Ring of Fire. Combine that with Max, really any East Asian team with a Max, they're gonna go crazy. Mag is an absolute trend. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen it really just resurge. I don't know if it was being kept, you know, hidden for a while, or if the, the, the slight uh, buff oh, that it had recently really motivated players to get back at it. But it's been doing really uh, wonderfully well lately. We'll see Buster and Gale to complete the comp from Applied Totem. And I like what I'm seeing. They seem to really want to utilize that Buster. Yeah, it definitely also looks like a max sort of counter comp, right? Let's try and slow things down. Lou as a first pick is going to be quite effective for that. You just have to make sure that you actually hit those shots. It's sort of hard to line them up sometimes if an enemy is dodging you really, really well. And of course, Max is going to be going really, really fast once she gets that super up, and Meg is going to be difficult to face. Here's a Crow as well. That's going to be good for diminishing some of the uh, health that Buster has to offer. It also can fire over his shield with the super, but I don't really know how much of a valuable strategy that's going to be. This one's a tough one to call because we don't often see Buster in competitive, and we don't often see Meg in competitive either. This is like a World Finals exclusive. Yeah, both teams, they are bringing out their wildest comps for this one because they know just how closely matched they are, how much of a threat they are to each other because both teams, they only have one thing in mind and that is going to be victory. Let's find out how Hot Zone goes down. So far, a couple early tanks from Kenji that were on point. A slow one to Joker could result in a kill, but some good body blocking will save the day as Maru comes through with a shield to secure some percentages for Reply Dota, but I just don't know how sustainable that Buster strategy really is. Wow! Evidently not very sustainable as Shetapo takes the lead and now firmly plants himself on the left side. Here comes a swing as well. No damage on a Joker or Maru as he's pushed away by the super of Joker. Another super popped by Maru, but he's all slowed down. He will be able to get onto the point, but not for long. Shetapo lays him to rest. Joker remains alive just by a smidge. But Shetapo, Kenji, despite being reduced to low health, remain alive. Kenji also goes in for a kill. Destroyed by Maru, but this one is so clear cut on the score so far. Zeta Division 1 are ahead by a massive margin. Yeah, this is going to be a complicated one. The tempo very aggressive there. Gets knocked back by Joker, but really, this is just such a significant lead for Zeta Division 1. I don't know if Reply Totem can recover. They are trying to get some more control. And Maru using uh, that star power to get his uh, shield back, but it's been a bit of a challenge so far for Totem. Not really able to find much uh, of their groove in this game. Well, now they do have that lose super down. It's going to be forcing people off the point, but they still got to deal with Kenji on the left side. Maru also he's produced a very low health. Really can't compete with the range of Shetapo. It's the final push in. It looks like Zeta Division 1. They have to stay alive here. One, two, destruction. Maru does get the kill, but he falls to the poison and the damage from Shetapo. It's a Zeta Division 1 victory with the Max Meg Strat. The Buster just was not it off the beginning of the game. They got almost no value off of that super. What a response yeah. from Zeta Division 1, and what a good draft as well. I, 
I, I'm not overly convinced by the Buster so far here on Ring of Fire. I, I think in double swoosh it was doing fantastic, but here it's been struggling a lot more. The shields are very useful for sure, but they only last for so long and you just don't really have the range to threaten your opponents besides that. That's why they are going for a wide flank on the right side, try to change the execution a little bit and, and find another game plan. Well, Maori, he was left high and dry on the top side, taken down in a 1v2. Down goes Joker as well. Maori's the last one surviving, tries to use that super, but you can't block a melee attack. Shetapo picks up the kill. And Reply Totem is still, they've only managed to make a scratch on that point. 1% taken so far. And now they'll try and freeze things up, make things slip around a bit. But Zeta Vision 1 are already preparing for the counter onslaught. Totem need a miracle to save this set. It's not a draft that seems to be going too well for them as Kenji jumps in, gets a lot of value, but does end up going down. That will feed a loose super, so freezing off the bottom side of the map. We see the wiggles from uh, Moya on the max. Yeah, we've got to love the Wiggles. That's an East Asia Max exclusive. Here comes a little pushback on a shit tempo. He stays alive. Yeah, must be spinning because that was a bit of a waste. He's also close to getting that super too. Here comes the damage. Moya Goku pops a speed as well. They're laying right into Reply Totem. No kills just yet, but you don't need kills. You just need the power of will and the power of will to stay alive at mid. Shit tempo, he's left high and dry. One, two kills for the guy. Needs another. There he goes, Joker. And he's now going to become a creature of the bushes on the left side, lurking here for as long as he can. The tempo on the max shuts down Reply Totem once again. It's a closer game, but it's still very much Zeta Division 1 with the lead. And Maori left in a 1v3, finds just a 1. And that is going to be Zeta Division 1 with a quickly secured set to tie things up. And the little shots from Shetapo there towards the end, that's confidence right there. When you can walk all over your enemies and slap them up with some attacks from Meg Super, that, yeah, that, that's fantastic. It's got to be a good feeling as well. And what a way to take things back after gym grab. Every single gene pull hit in set number one. And that can make you feel kind of amateur when you allow that to happen, especially when you're playing B and you're and you're playing Penny as well. Two brawlers that can block it out. Zeta Vision 1, it looks like they've gotten back in their group, but less specifically on the battlefield, but more in the draft. I think this was an outdraft by Zeta 1. Yeah, I, 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 I think there are some interesting ideas in what Totem brought to the table here on Ring oh, of yeah. Fire. Because, yes, the Buster is not really gonna get a whole lot of damage, right? Because he's just non-stop too far from the action. But those shields, they will help the Lou, for example, to, you know, come forward, get some free shots, and then get that super down, which will disable your opponents from getting in the zone. But Zeta just really didn't play into that. They gave them the space whenever the shield was up and then pushed back. And there was just not really enough utility on the side of uh, a totem to deal with that. But looking at the stats, Whoa. it's again the tempo that is highest both in damage and in kills. And that hurts on the side of Reply Totem. I mean, maybe we can turn a blind eye to it. Zero, two, three on the kill count. And while it is hot zone, it's not all about kills. You do need to play for control. And getting kills is a great way to, you know, get someone out of your way, send them back to the respawn, and make sure they are not contesting you on the objective. But it looks like in the draft, in the gameplay, on the stats as well, it's all clear cut for Zeta 1. However, we're moving right along. And into this mode right here, Zeta 1, Brawl Ball, it is their best mode. 74% win rate. Reply Totem not really much to speak of on their Brawl Ball win rate. Yeah, no, it's it's a night and day difference, but we'll see off the bat the max pick brought in by Reply Totem. A wise one, because, I mean, you don't want to leave it to Zeta. It escaped through the draft process here, but the following brawler, brawlers did not, as Griff, Gil, and Surge were banned out by Totem. Zeta banned out Rough Spenny and Buster. It's a good thing they banned out Buster. I think they just had a feeling that, yeah, it's definitely going to be picked by Reply Totem. And also, probably pretty wise here on Brawl Ball as well. There's a Crow as well, just the instant response to the max pick. Now, when it comes to Super Beach, how well is it going to do? He doesn't have a whole lot of health. He does have great mobility, though. And if they start to shape the map to their will, he might be able to do quite a bit better as well. But when you start off with a max pick, that's very, very bold. Because Max, she's pretty straightforward to counter. The counters are not really banned out either. And Zeta 1, it looks like they fully intend on countering out the max strategy. Yeah, Crow, I think, is definitely a valid option to, to, to do that, right? The slow is going to help out massively because there's a big push. If you can slow multiple people down, those three seconds are three seconds enough to uh, get a successful defense or a big pickup. The tempo going to be following up with an uh, Otis brought to his team. 
And I, I, I definitely like Otis here. I, I think on Super Beach, it's an absolutely viable pick. Uh, one of the more standard one here as well, a bit less original perhaps than the Crow, uh, but one that's very effective. A mute at the right timing will shut down an offense, shut down a defense, and give you a lot of win conditions. And Fast Splatter can be pretty good for getting some extra damage on enemies, controlling some lanes too, and also for destroying some turrets that could be otherwise pretty frustrating. Here's the Poco though, and that's going to be the Max Poco. It just doesn't appear that they really care that they are facing versus an Otis and a Crow. They must have thought that, yeah, we'll go for the Max first pick, first of all, because it's Zeta 1 that we're facing. We do not want them to have Max as a second or third pick. And second of all, they're just that confident that they can make the Max Poco work. Really, the only way for them to finish this off is going to have to be with a tank, and they might do so because look at the brawlers they banned out. It's very clear that they want to run a tank. Is it possible? There's a Carl. He's not the tankiest tank. He's not like the quintessential tank, but he does have a lot of health. He has great damage in close range with his super and good mobility with his gadget. Yeah, I, I, I somewhat disagree. I feel like uh, a, a call or maybe even a gene uh, were more likely to come true just because I, I, I think it's too dangerous. You, you can't against an Otis. Uh, uh, Crow is vulnerable to, to the tanker brawlers, but I think Crow is a very valid option because, you know, you played it at around mid-range, super high mobility, and his super basically makes him uh, a tank for just a couple of seconds. The final pick on the side of Zeta Division 1 is going to be Ems, and it's a great idea because as Max defines the pace of the game with her max speed, Ems slows it down in her own way with uh, her supers. So I, I think they have a decent uh, uh, amount of, of stuff to work with on the side of Zeta Division 1. Much more defensive, obviously, compared to Reply Totem, that is all about going in and uh, hit heavy. Well, you know what they say, sometimes the best offense is a good defense, and Zeta Division 1, they are certainly well equipped for a good offense if that is the case. Reply Totem, though, they're certainly wanting to play aggressive here, and it's going to be countered out as best as Zeta Division 1 can. Already, some damage dealt on both sides, more dealt to Reply Totem, big pinch on a Maru, and Maori around the left side tries to force things forward with Joker, but they're stranded. Kill by Shtetapo, Maori, he's surrounded in a 1v3, it's chalked in that matchup. Zeta Division 1 now have to push this forward. However, is their oh. health pool going to lend itself to success? Well, Maru, he has a super that he can use. He needs the right moment, though. Yeah, Maru actually dodged that super, but Tempo has oh, no. the ball now as well in a good position, but still going to be somewhat complicated. He goes for it, but oh my goodness, how did he just 1v2? I don't think he can score it. He's still going to attempt it. Joker doesn't quite fall for it and catches the ball mid-track, but... Wow, that was incredibly close. And another super from Shetempo finding the value. Maori goes for the super and elimination onto Kenji. Aggressive positioning from Maru. The pass, the oh. shot, and it goes in. Beautiful, beautiful plays and positioning from Reply Totem. It goes to show you don't need to win the mid fight in order to slot a ball in the goal. You just got to run it up one of those lanes and have your teammate in the optimal position. And Carl, he's equipped. Here comes the speed as well. Immediately denied by Shtetampo, but he's on very low health. A little jump in. Oh, then the ball no sneaks way. through. Maori's got the goal. And Reply Totem take game one. This is crazy. Zeta Division 1 just looks so much better in the beginning. Shtetempo was popping off. He nearly scored a 1v2, which was incredible by itself. But somehow, Reply Totem, they managed to turn things around and hit them hard with those two quick goals. Let's see if this next game is going to be similar, if the Division 1 can find a solution to what Reply Totem have been throwing at them. It's close call after close call with these guys. Reply Totem, they're really only getting these goals by a close call. However, Maru, he's in position to get this one again. Little kill, little technique there with the gadget as well. Joker slots it in, and this is a completely different narrative from what we've seen in game number one. So much more dominant for Reply Totem, and already a speed in. Joker, he's got some nasty ideas. He's going to be denied by Kenji and Shtetampo. Now it's a 3v1, but two very low brawlers on either side of Kenji. It's not going to be enough. A pass to the left side. It's a lightning fast game so far, and it's already tied up. Some hesitation from Maru whether he should catch it there or not, but in the end, that is going to be the goal for Zeta Division 1 that ties things up in this game. Joker, again, trying to see if a, a play is possible. Beautiful knockback from Shtetempo to secure that elimination as Joker gets jumped on, but still manages to find the kill either way. Moya Goku gets pinched by Joker as he struggles to close out that fight against Maori on the left-hand side, and things seem to even out for now.
Shetapo also, he can slow down one of those supers from Joker. If he pops a super at the right moment, here it comes. And they're not really intending to push Shetapo, but he is on very low health. They can sneak around the side. Not a whole lot of value gain there from Reply Totem off that super. Meanwhile, on the left side, Maori's getting good damage. Good stuff from Shetapo, too. Down goes Joker. We got to see the pass. Maori's trying to get it. No, it's enough. But here's a super up to Kenji from downtown. Wow. There's the goal. And Zeta Division 1 take game number two. Zeta Division 1 are ice cold. They still managed to turn things around and tie things up here in Brawl Ball, and now we are all even 1-1 one, one in sets and 1-1 one, one here for Super Beach. Where Goku is playing aggressive against Maori. Joker takes a lot of damage, still goes for the pass. Maru has an advanced position that could be the goal, but Kenji shuts him down. Joker still finds the kill, lines up the shot, and gets it deep into the net as Reply Totem. Again, 20 seconds to find a goal. Clean stuff for Reply Totem repeatedly. Though Joker, he's trying to replicate that. He knows that he can get this mobility in here. Here comes the super, a little gadget up by Maru. He's in position, little fumble there on the pass though. Moya Goku can silence things. Shetapo oh. and Moya Goku work together. Oh Maru gets a kill off the team wipe on both sides. And it's up to Kenji to establish the back line once more. He is gonna get that ball repositioned and try to slow things down while his teammates respawn. Maru going very aggressive with that super, not sure what the value there was. The tempo is going towards the ball, has a super of his own, but gets stacked up very heavily. Needs to be careful about how he proceeds here. Is able to heal back up a bit, wants to get that aggressive positioning. He moves forward and oh! It still goes in. What a shot from the tempo. Sneaky stuff there from Zeta-1. Cover up the path of the ball by using an M's attack right after. It's not something that we see very often. And maybe something that's not completely intentional, but still looking clean. Little kill there in close range as well as Maru falls. A 3v2, now a 3v1. It's up to Joker to clutch this one, or at least buy his team some time to respawn. And back comes Maru, but no gadgets left. He doesn't have the mobility that he needs so badly. Shitapo also has a super. Things are closing in. It's not looking good. Pass to the right. Joker clutches it, but Moya Goku picks it back up. And Zeta-1 take set three. What a turnaround. It seemed like that was it. Like, we're playing Totem. We're going to take that third set. But Zeta Division 1 out of nowhere. Reverse sweep. And, and what a way to do so as well. And can we just appreciate the phenomenal performance from Stadempo so far? He's been playing at a whole other level. Oh my my gosh, I, I just cannot wait for the stats. But look at this, I mean, just replay after replay. This was a sick one though by Maru. Sneaky around the left side. It's just a goal compilation here and every single one is just mind blowing here. Clean stuff from Joker as well. They're really using every trick in the book to get an elimination here. Wow, unbelievable series so far. And I, I have to admit, man, the tempo has done so much for his team in this set. Reply Totem played phenomenally as well. But I have a feeling, ready, that this one is going all the way. I have a feeling too. I mean, uh, given how close things came, just in set number three, even in set number one, it was a draft diff in, in set number two, right? We, we've gotten that out of the way. However, every other draft has been so impressive on both sides. It's been so, so close. And Reply Totem, I think they actually put up a very good effort versus Zeta Division 1 on Zeta's strongest mode. However, the stats, they tell a bit of a different story. Shitampa with a whole lot of damage and kills, but Moya Goku also has been stealing the spotlight a little today. Yeah, 10 kills on his side, absolutely phenomenal performance from him too. And, and overall, what a close set again. This is such an incredible series already, and this is just a quarterfinal match ready. Well, Pit Stop, every single time you and I have been together here on Pit Stop, it's been Anita picking. You know what? I'm I'm actually ready to count it out this time. I have a feeling that, oh, there it is. Reply Totem's counting it out. There's the Nita ban. It's, once again, I, I want to reiterate, it's good versus tanks. We just haven't seen Nita into tanks. Okay, explanation, ramble over. Here comes the rough from Zeta Division 1. They've also gotten rid of Penny, Bonnie, and Surge on their side. Yeah, the second pick now, or first for the side of Reply Totem. Try to deal with that roughs or go towards other ideas. You don't necessarily need to counter out the roughs very early on into the draft. One of the uh, better counters would have been called, but they banned it out on their side. There are plenty of, of, of ways to go. As you mentioned, you, you can bring tanks on this map. That's absolutely an option. Max 
is always an option. There's not really a single map where Max is not playable. I, I, I think throwers are still uh, uh, something to be considered as well, especially Barley. Uh, I think a pit stop can, can put in some solid work. They're going to go Rico, which is an idea I like. I mentioned it yesterday when they picked Ruffs uh, on, on this map. Uh, it's just a great way to not only deal with the Ruffs, but in general have a lot of nice angles, uh, whether it's on the safe or on your opponents. Just a lot of ways to deal damage to your opponents while they can't hit you. Well, the only thing on my mind right now is Barley, because Barley could be great versus Colonel Ruffs and his sandbags. It could be great as a last pick, and it's an option for Reply Totem. Zeta Division 1, they could go ahead and pick it up themselves and risk getting countered. They could also decide that they're going to counter it out themselves, because Colonel Ruffs, he can still break walls, right? We cannot forget that. Here's Yotus again, and they seem to love this Brawler playing into Max. It worked well in the last set, and it could work well again. He also gets very solid damage output on that high safe, too, and that's not something that you can ever count out. They have one more pick left left and not a whole lot of time to get there. What are they going to combine with the Colonel Ruffs? Where are they going to be placing? Oh, oh man. Wow. Probably not the buzz right off the bat there, but this is a super aggro pick. It's going to be giving Maru a lot of trouble. Taking a page out of Reply Totem's book, really. I mean, buzz on highs, that's all Totem. But they will be the ones facing it this time around as Zeta Division 1 bring it to the table. Let's see what this final pick is going to be from Reply Totem is they need something strong. Nope. And it is going to be Barley, which is a brawler we have very rarely seen recently. But this is the map to bring him out. Obviously, we'll need to play incredibly careful around the walls because if the buzz gets anywhere close enough to hit a pool, that is going to be a free kill. I believe a lot of it's going to come down to the early game because Colonel Ruffs, okay, you know, we've been over this a million times. He's great at breaking open walls with his super, and that's probably going to be the main counterplay to Barley. The faster he can get those supers out, the worse Barley is going to be. However, what do you do versus a Barley that has speed? That allows a much better mobility to get in versus your safe. Zay Division 1, though, already giving mid a solid shot, but taking serious damage, especially on the Kinji. Meanwhile, Shetapo, he goes for the super. No value. And here's a speed onto Barley. Maru and Maru plan on laying into this safe. Yeah, beautiful kill onto Shetapo from Maru and Maru playing it out together. Shetapo going in with a gadget this time around. Nearly falls, actually. is very low HP now. And Maru is not quite able to get the connection instead goes down, still a little bit of a lead in favor of Reply Totem. Joker was a super, finds some connections here and there, but nothing too substantial. As the pull from Shtetempo connects onto Maru, secures the elimination, and Maori is Ooh. next in line. Shtetempo takes him out, and he's low HP, but he's still alive, and that's pretty much the name of the game for Shtetempo. Maori, he's got the aggressive super in, clearing out some area. Shtetempo, though, has bad intentions around the right side. It's going to be denied for now. Some walls broken open. Good stuff from Shtetempo. Lots of damage on the safe. Kenji connects as well. A little pinch there versus Maori. Has nowhere to go, but he still sends Moya Goku to this early grave. Reply Totem, however, are operating at a heist safe damage deficit. And Shtetempo and Kenji are both forced back. Good connection of the silence on a Joker, and in fact, it's going to cause him to fall. The super, yeah, it's not going to give too much to Joker, though. However, Maori, he still gets some damage in, immediately denied by Shtetempo. No damage lead for Reply Totem as they now have to fall into defense. Yeah, a very small lead now still for D Zeta Division 1, but they got better positioning. Shtetempo has a super as well, and we saw earlier, over and over again, how much value he finds with them. Kenji could go for a mute too, that would single-handedly take someone out of the fight. Kenji connects to Mute, finds the kill on the other. Shtetempo gonna miss the save with that pool, but it should still be enough to cause a lot of damage, get it all the way down to 11%. But look at this, all of Reply Totem are near that blue save. This is their chance to get a massive amount of damage. They need to close it out right here, right now, because a pull on the save or anyone getting over aggressive and it's gonna get turned around and Zeta will secure the win. It looks like they will do just that with just a couple of seconds left. They need a miracle for a play totem. It's gonna come down to whether Maori can pump out a lot of damage, but it's looking quite unlikely. One, two, three shots on there. It's coming close, 16%. Not enough value though, a 5% differential there towards the end is going to give the victory to Zeta Division 1. And it's a match point in coming. My goodness. Reply Totem gonna be regretting some of those mistakes, whether it was the draft in Ring of Fire or in Brawl letting them just get out of their hands. Let's see now, as they face a match point, if they can make anything happen. Joker falls to the tempo. 
off the bat, and wow, a one-on-one -on -one trade in the mid is exactly what Zeta Division wanted as they still have the positioning. The tempo was able to get a good angle to get a super. Now immediately the walls opened up, but somehow it's not a single kill. He's the one going down. Here comes the speed in. Joker has to run it up mid. Not a whole lot of angles to shoot there. Kenji is avoiding a lot of damage along the way. Maori's trying to get something versus Shedampo. And on the right side, Maru falls. Maori's going to commit to this safe. He's got to get a lot of damage pumped out. Not a scratch on Reply Totem safe just yet. But a whole lot could be coming in. Moya Goku, Kenji, and Shedampo in tandem. All focused it down, largely ignoring Maru as well. Shedampo tanks a lot of damage and provides a lot of value. But meanwhile, on Zeta's safe, they're still taking a heavy, heavy beating. In fact, it's getting close. It might even be exact at some point on the percentage. Yeah, this is an incredibly close situation, but Mary Solo HP gets muted as well, and Kenji shuts him down. That's a lot of damage on safe. This could just be it, and they have done it! Zeta Division 1 are moving through to the semifinals. An insanely, insanely close skill matchup, but it still leads to a 3-1 victory in the end for Zeta Division 1. A solid victory for the guys and a seriously, seriously good approach by Reply Totem. Really only one set in there that had me scratching my head and asking questions. Everything else, insanely close. It did not pan out in the end for Reply Totem, unfortunately. Absolutely so. Uh, yeah, the, the hot zone was the big blunder, right? That was a free set, just a poor draft on the side of Totem, and one they will be regretting. Global was where also things got really, really they, they just went absolutely wrong for the side of Reply Totem because Zeta Division 1 by all means should have lost that one, but Totem choked and made some mistakes, gave away another set and there was no recovering from there on. Yeah, uh, really, really just a few blunders made that added up to be a whole lot and a whole lot for Shitampo as well. So much value for him. That's what happens when you, you know, kind of take the reply totem strategy and apply it for yourself. No buzz for you, Joker. It's mine now, says A Division 1, and they take it, they run with it. 10 kills as well. It might not be the objective, but when you're continuously eliminating the Barley, the Rico, the main damage dealers of the squad, it's a huge dent in the potential output that reply Totem had to offer. Yeah, th 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 this was nearly as close as it can get for 3-1, right? If you remove just that free set of Hot Zone, that was a phenomenal series. And I, I almost wish that we got to see the best of seven uh, between those two teams that we will have for the Grand Finals, because I, I feel like, you know, some different game modes, some, some different conditions here and there, it could have been a different story. I would have loved to see a best of seven too. I really wanted to see some more reply totem in Zeta Division 1 going head to head, but Zeta Division 1, they definitely have to be feeling pretty good here as well. And we got to decide an MVP. Of course, we, we asked yeah. you guys on event.baltars.com. <laughs> okay, it's Shit Tampa. It always is Shit Tampa. We, we don't need to tell them to vote. They, they know exactly who to vote for here already. It's Shit Tempo, no hesitation. He has highest skills, highest damage pretty much in every single set and by far. I mean, this is one of those instances where I say, there's, you know, a correct answer, right? Just like all the other questions on event.brawlstars.com, it's a multiple choice. Okay, you click Shetampo, you win, have your points, have your this and that, and, you know, get a little bit closer to that skin. Well, an awesome, awesome first match of the day for our quarterfinals. It has been exhilarating so far. And with that, Zeta Division 1, they head on to the semifinals. That places them one match away from what we consider inevitable. Zeta Division 1 in the finals. It's one of those things that we say, is inevitable about Brawl Stars. Yeah, well, giving a look at our bracket here, next up, we'll be watching STM Man versus Team Keizo, uh, an EMEA versus NA matchup, which we always love to watch. We will later on also have Tribe Gaming U versus uh, Zeta Division 1's sister team, Zeta Division 0, and then Tribe Gaming NA versus SK Gaming. I I'm gonna be honest, uh, with, with you already said, all of those matches are fantastic. Uh, it's really hard to tell which one I'm the most excited to watch out of the three. I, I, I think this is just a, an incredible set of quarterfinals, and it just says how much uh, promise and how much you guys can expect from our semifinals and grand finals later on today, too. No doubt in every single one of these matches, it's going to have to be extremely close, especially looking at the bottom side of the bracket. Tribe Gaming EU, Zeta Zero going head to head. Tribe Gaming versus SK Gaming as well is looking really spicy. That's a rematch after MSI, and one that got very contentious as well. A 
whole lot of yelling and some voices lost at the end, but uh, of course one winner came out on top and we have that to come, but still STMN versus Team Queso is coming up. Now, when we talk STMN, a lot of expectations, a lot of fans of this team in particular, and the exact same for Team Queso. However, their opponent on day one, it was not really as stacked as Zeta, or rather as STMN's opponent, right? STMN, they faced the number one seed in Latium South, AQM, took a handy victory as well with a 3-0. When it came to Team Queso, they also got a 3-0, but it was worth, uh, it was versus Stalwart Esports, which was frankly not as strong of a showing, unfortunately. No, it really wasn't. I, I feel like both teams are, are, are coming from incredibly different directions because STMN, it's kind of a miracle they're here in the first place. Yeah. They had to absolutely <laughs> pop off in the NA and let them north monthly finals, the, the, the final one, uh, which they ended up winning uh, as well. So uh, they they needed uh, to make it far there to even qualify here in the first place. A lot of people had their doubts, but on the side of Team Kezo, a lot of people had their doubts on them even, you know, getting through the round of 16 uh, this weekend. So uh, pretty different stories, but the expectations are different as well as SCMN should be coming here as a favorite. STMN, they're definitely a crowd favorite here. Bobby OGs are on the squad. Of course, we got a welcome to the stage. I cannot wait to see what they have to offer today. Damascus, take it away. Et oui, en effet, on est prêt. On allait voir la foule. Est-ce qu'on est chaud ici? C'est que le début de la journée. Le premier match était bon. On va lancer le deuxième match. Et un petit NA contre EU. On aime bien un peu la rivalité outre-Atlantique entre l'Amérique et l'Europe. Et on va commencer par accueillir les représentants américains. Un max de bruit, s'il vous plaît, pour STMN! STMN, do they really need any introduction? Bobby, OG, and Zar fade filling in for Sans. Unfortunately, he was not able to make it to this land, but definitely supporting them from home, both in chat and in spirit. These guys are just some of the powerhouses of North America, and it seems like they always come back at the last moment to clutch things up. We saw it in the Snapdragon Pro Series where they came back pretty much by a miracle on their own accord. It did not fare so well for the two teams that were not able to go to the land, which led to STMN making it there. But when STMN was there, they completely owned the competition, taking Tribe for a ride in that grand final and taking it all in the end. Yeah, STMN is a team that has always been somewhat in the middle of the pack, never really been able to be the top team, but also never uh, on the bottom. In the World Finals 2021, they made it to top eight. At MSI, they made it to top four. Now they are aiming for top one. We'll have to see if they have what it takes, but their opponents, Team Queso, are ready to join the stage. Leurs adversaires, évidemment. Ils sont européens, ils représentent l'Espagne. C'est les trois joueurs qui sont là pour faire voler leur drapeau le plus haut possible. Est-ce qu'ils vont être capables de gagner leur premier match de la journée Estiempo, Team Queso The old Spanish roster, Team Queso, that's Javi Navarro, Ali SSJ and Boss recently joining the roster as well as Rafa and Blacksy left just a couple of months ago. This team has been a big question mark through in and throughout the year. Some amazing results here and there as uh, we saw in the monthly finals of May in the MEA that they ended up winning pretty much out of nowhere. But then at MSI they plays pretty much dead last. They did not qualify last year for the World Finals, and they haven't really had any major achievements since then. And what most teams, most people rather know them for is the 0-7 they had in the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 2, where, well, they lost literally against every single top team in the EU. Including their former teammates as well, which had been released playing for FA Panafresh too, which can never be a great feeling for Team K. So when you've rearranged as well and brought on a new member, Boss though, this is a big story for him because he almost went to Worlds last year, I believe under Bunker ROG, and unfortunately, was dropped from the team just a few months prior to qualifying for Worlds and making it there. Now, he's finally on the stage. He's in the limelight and he's here to take a victory. Versus SCMN, it's gonna be a struggle because Team Queso, it's been a struggle for them. Likewise, just in general over the last several months, we always have to give credit where credit is due, right? A victory in the May monthly finals in EMEA is a big deal, but it's not the same Team Queso. Not even really by a, yeah, not, not even really by, I guess a, a third, right? They're missing two players, they bring on Boss, Maybe it's just growing pains. We have to see how they perform. It's good old-fashioned Brawl Stars to determine it. Yeah, this is a, a, a tough one to call, but 
I feel like most of uh, you guys at home will be signing with STMN. We'll see actually in just a little bit. But uh, on the casting desk, we, we were uh, pretty unanimous on, on, on this one. And uh, we all signed with STMN. Much love for Team K, so don't get me wrong. And they are a team with a lot of potential, some great mechanics and ideas, but they've still struggled a, a, a decent amount to uh, put them into proper execution and actually uh, uh, find a winning game plan for them. Team Queso, they're facing a very confident team, one that is known to simply pop off at lands. And I think really my focus here for STMN, it's gotta be OG. Usually he plays on, you know, but not the greatest of Wi-Fi, pretty uh, geographically distant as well, but at lands, you know, there, there's no delay and you're right next to your opponents and right next to your teammates as well. I want everyone to kind of focus down on OG and see how this guy plays at land. I think he might be the strongest land player on the STMN roster. He, he had a great performance uh, um, two days ago uh, here as well. So uh, I absolutely think you're right that there are, uh, you know, a lot of eyes that are going to be on him just because of how well his form has been and one of the uh, eldest players in yeah. the competitive scene. And I'm not saying that as in, you know, too old <laughs> to play, but he has a lot of experience and that is incredibly valuable to own that stage, have that confidence, reassure your teammates and, you know, make them feel like they're in a safe place because the nerves and the pressure always hits you on that stage. And you got to make sure that the boat stays afloat. Pretty much. And I mean, as you meant, they're all naturals up here on stage, Team K. So we, of course, need to see how they perform at LAN as well because we haven't gotten to see as much of them in a LAN environment. And as we've seen in previous days, sometimes that can be a huge, huge factor. Of course, the, you know, the matchup is always a big consideration, but simply being present at LAN, we saw from Raconic, it definitely comes into play. Are you experienced in this sort of venue? I, I, I'm not entirely sure here of uh, my sources, but I, I think there is a chance that Team Kezo has a 0% win rate in land. Because, yeah. I mean, their only land in the BSC was MSI, where they lost their first, in, in the first round. And SPS, that was the day after, where they, I believe, also <laughs> lost in the first round. So, yeah, it's not been too glorious in land for Team Kezo, but they've worked hard this entire year to get to this point. And, I'm sure they'll give it their all. 62% of you guys at home side with stamina for this matchup, and I don't blame you. Layer kick is where we kick things off, and we won't be seeing any Poco, Squeak, or Max as STMN bend them out. TQ band Gus, Bronk, and G. I was going to say no tick pick just yet, and here it is, the first pick from STMN. And this is always a pretty safe brawler to go for, especially as of late with the new gear that gives his super even more health than Tick has um, on a, you know, a normal day as well. Team Queso, now they need to respond to this, and they have the last pick, so they can counter it out with something like a Sprout, but STMN, they also are acutely aware that this is open and might opt to go for it themselves. They might even opt to try and counter it out. Here comes the Penny on the side of Team Queso, though, and in close range, she'll be able to do very well with the salty barrel if Estevan decided they want to get tricky with a Daryl or a Buzz or the like, which they're pretty well known to go for at times. Team Queso also pick up the Otis, so they are doubling down on the defense. Yeah, I like the ideas here on the side of Team Queso. I think there is definitely some potential, but Thick is an absolute threat at the moment. I mean, just that new gear, getting a, an extra 1,000 HP on your Thick heads is so much value. It takes so long to shut them down. There's pretty much just no Brawly that can one-shot it now, so wasting uh, always multiple ammo on it gives you quite a bit of control, and if it connects onto you, you are going down more likely than not, especially at a pro level. But their second pick is gonna be uh, Janet to take the action up in the air, but they do have two picks in a row here, so their final one for Stamina will be coming in just a second, and we'll lock in their comp. Likely no intentions of breaking open walls here, especially with Brock out of the mix. They could still pick up a Piper, which is a fairly popular pick for the STMN roster. However, they have to be very careful about breaking open the walls, right? They would be, con oh my God, NA bro, NA, here's the Ash. And how is he gonna make it into the enemy spawn? It's not like he really has like the wind at his back with Max or anything, but Team Queso, they must have known this was coming too, because they picked up two brawlers that are very good versus tanks, especially Boss. OG, maybe his plan is to always have that super at the ready when he decides he wants to push Boss in particular, but Ala SSJ will still be able to handily take out those rats with a lot of penetrating damage from his main attack. Javi on the Carl can never complain. 
course, that's going to be fantastic versus taking close range, but it all comes down to the aggro plays, and Bobby has switched onto the Ash. We really are in for a ride from the side of STMN, and Team Queso, they have to respond effectively. Well, let's jump in for our first game here, and off the bat, wow. Bobby already was first blown, and a two-star lead, actually one-star rather, as Team Queso picked up the blue one initially. Javi does somehow survive that engagement. Not exactly sure how he let him get away with it, but Bobby got upset, knows that Team Queso owe him a death, and he went to collect it in the mid. And already some walls broken open on that left side too. It's gonna force Zar maybe into a different area. A little uh, turret down from OG quickly responded to by the turret from Ala SSJ, which is gonna be out of reach for a good amount of time. Javi's also ready with a super. He could be taken down by Zar. He's completely cornered in here. The rats as well. Could be a team wipe if Boss doesn't stay alive. OG might have to go for it. Zar also needs to stay very safe. Almost a good kill onto Bobby, but he uses his last gadget. We're only a minute and a half in, and Bobby, he's already out of gadgets. Everyone who was so incredibly low HP on the side of stamina and yet no one went down nine stars now in favor of the north american roster bobby going aggressive has no more gadgets so can't quite heal up like he used to Navi wants to go in aggressive that is going to be the first skill for team Kato, they find another, and suddenly the gap is not quite as wide as it used to be. It's only five stars. Let's also observe the way that as is playing here, they're playing extremely defensively, but that also means that Team Queso pretty much always has them on the back foot. There is an extremely important differential here, though, which is that Team Queso, they're behind by five stars plus the blue star. They need to get a kill onto OG and someone else because simply Bobby and Zar won't cut it. And that turret's also going to be stuffing them into the back lines. 15 seconds to go. Bobby takes the aggro. He's determined to push the back line back, but he can't get to the in time. Javi's also very low on health. A little explosion there on the left side as Boss continues to be pushed back. Bobby also silenced. Javi goes down. LSSJ. Boss also try to get a push up the left side. It doesn't come through. And a convincing first game for STMN. A very strong showing off the bat on the side of Stamina Esports as so far they are looking strong. They are looking fierce. Let's say if they can double down and lock in that first set. Well, unlike the last game, STMN, they don't immediately go for mid, and it's going to give that early game lead to Team Queso. Now we get to see this game from a different perspective, with Team Queso primarily playing defense. Well, that didn't last for long. Okay, Al SSJ goes down. Bobby We're claims saying. a kill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little correction there from Bobby, too. STMN, though, they still have the lead. Boss on the left side, unfortunately not able to get that kill. OG on the right as well, now swapping lanes with Zar. And things are getting a little bit more stalematey as SCMN don't intend on falling back to the back lines, back to their respawn as quickly as in the last one. Yeah, here's the thing. Bombi keeps somehow getting into 1v1s, which there's pretty much no brawl here on the side of Team K, so that is going to win those. Bobby single-handedly just secured already eight stars for his team, and that's a problem. Team Kazo, they need to stop giving him those freebies and play together against him, play the team fights, and so far have been way too spread out and, and playing lonely. And, and Bobby off of this is going to go extremely aggro. He's still going to find himself on offense and actually gives a lot of stars to Team Kazo. Meanwhile, also, Javi is deeply in spawn, does get cleaned up by the guy with the broom in the trash can, but still, Team Kazo find themselves at a deficit. Four stars this time. They have the blue star on their side. They need to take down either one or the other, just two of these enemies in order to get the advantage. Bobby also pops a gadget just now. He still has one left to use. Zar also with a super on the right side, quickly taken down by Javi. A good kill onto Bobby and has Team Ender only leading by one star now, and they're still on defense with only 20 seconds left. There's only one star in it, and that could go quickly as Bobby is quite low HP now as well. Zara on the right-hand side pushing back Javi, but Javi deals with the thick head. This is the final push here from Team Kezo, and this could be a dangerous one for Estamina as Zara ends up going down, and that might just be enough as Javi is trying to heal back up. Team Kezo was a three-star lead, tie things up and even things up. Very, very cool, calm, collected gameplay from Team Queso this time. They, I think, picked up on the issue, which is that Bobby, he's allowed to get in these 1v1s repeatedly. I think we also saw Bobby go needlessly aggressive and feed a lot of stars to the enemy team. It had to be a little bit of confidence that s sort of got to his head because he went completely alone on the Ash. You cannot afford to make these kind of mistakes in a match of this caliber, and it's also led us to a tied up set for the first one. Well, let's see how things move forward from 
here on. Bobby trying to contest that mid area. The blue star again picked up by Boss. Quite easy if you have a call. Obviously, you just go for a gadget and you can just pick it up freely as you're the first one to arrive anywhere near that blue star. But the spawn trap is starting to be set up as Boss goes in to open the situation up. Boss finds wow. one. The other one was picked up by Javi. Boss finds a second. And now suddenly Team Keizo with a six-star lead. Brilliantly played here from Team Keizo as well. They knew exactly how to pair those abilities and get them timed perfectly. OG is going to try and close off Boss, though. Going towards the back lines, trying to drop that last bomb on the guy, but cannot land in a safe position. Here comes the Tick Super. Goes right for Ala SSJ's turret. Bobby also is getting kept back pretty effectively on the left side. Boss trying to eliminate the turret. Popped down by OG. As you they're at a serious deficit here. And Team Keizo, they lose Javi on the aggro. Still, he'll be responding in just a moment here to keep up the defense and he has a super at the ready to deny any possible aggression from Bobby. They're not looking to switch up the lanes though because they would have to forfeit a little bit of positioning here to do so. Here comes the tick super and baits a lot of shots out of the enemies but still not gonna bait out that super, not gonna bait out that silence from Javi. Only 20 seconds left to act for STMN. They're waiting for the last moment. They still only need three stars. Yeah that is actually quite a big ask because Boss is the only player that will provide them unless they get a double kill. Ali SSJ is low HP. He's still alive, though. Uh, v gets pushed but goes for the mute. Bobby's going to go down. Wow. And, wow. What a shutdown again. Team Queso take the first set. Complete momentum shift from game number one. Game number two, even for the most of the game, it looks so firmly locked in the hands of STMN. And then it's ripped back in control of Team Queso there towards the end, playing defense so effectively the entire time. As soon as Otis had super, there was no hope left in the world for Bobby to do anything on the Ash. Yeah, that was an incredible opening set from Team Queso. That first game was so dominant by STMN. It, it, it just seems like afterwards, Team Keizo really started to find their groove, find their uh, uh, team synergy as well with some good team plays and dealing much better with the aggression from Bobby in the first game and in the most part of the second one too. Bobby was just wandering around, getting kills left and right, doing a lot of work, but it took them a little bit of time for Team Keizo to adapt, adjust and overcome. And right now, they are going to be super happy. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look wow. at that. <laughs> Couldn't even keep the headset on. It started to fly off a little bit there. But I mean, pop off, right? Still, let's look at the stats. I mean, it was a pop off through and through, especially for Boss here, the newest member on the squad, his first World Finals ever. And he's already giving us a great show. On the side of STMN, though, some respectable kills and some respectable damage as well. Of course, it didn't lend itself to a victory on their side. The creative NA picks, they worked for a little bit. Team Queso, they figured out how to adapt to it and were ultimately able to pull it back. Yeah, the, the stats on the side of Sam are a bit inflated, right? Because of how one-sided that first game was. The next two were much closer, but Team Queso uh, played phenomenally. And, and this is not the start that STMN were hoping coming into this one. Uh, a lot of the community are expecting Stamina to take this match home. So set number two is going to be their chance to even things out. But they need to start by having a good draft. And of course, Crystal Arcade, one of the newer additions into the competitive map pool. Again, we've seen it a little bit early in the year. We took a break from it, and now it's back for the World Finals. And this map, it can be a little bit confusing at times, especially when we talk about the lanes. But mid, it's wide open. you got to get rid of some of those long-range dominant brawlers. Ruffs, a very early pick here from Team K. So he's going to be good for those side lanes, can reflect those shots. Uh, pretty much the objective here is to just chip away your enemy and get some of those power-ups onto your teammates, especially those at mid. And one good candidate for mid has already been and banned out by Team Queso as well. Gus, he's out of the picture, but STM in, being an NA team, I wouldn't put B past him just yet. Yeah, I think B is, is a viable option. Gene is also on the menu here as well. We saw earlier how much value it can bring to any sort of comp, but Griff also a phenomenal brawler that can open up walls, that can have a oh. lot of damage in that zone as well. OG going to be locking in the buster for SCM men. Uh, a bro that we've seen, well, actually successful at times, even very dominant, but also kind of, you know, with a lack of presence at other times. 
Yeah, unfortunate. I mean, he's one of the freshest faces in the game, and for a while he was just completely on the top of the meta, just nothing could beat him. And now that he's been nerfed quite a bit, it's hard to estimate exactly where he finds himself in this current meta because at times it's gone great, at other times it's gone terrible. Here's Ash, and that's basically the next best thing to what OG has to offer here, but it's not really that common of a pick on this map. I imagine the idea is going to be lock yourself in the enemy's back lines. As team in, they might even opt to just blow them up with Griff's gadget. Yeah, it seems like Team Queso just want to give uh, SCM a taste of their own medicine or maybe even just show them how uh, how it's done, you know, that they have the better Ash out of the two teams. We'll see how that goes down as B. It will be the final pick of Team Queso, probably just to remove the counter and also just, you know, to make sure they have enough DPS to deal with uh, the Buster and have the, the range over pretty much anyone else on the map. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty tough pick here for STM, and they do have the final counter pick, but they're getting countered pretty hard as is, both on range and also just on brawlers in general. Bow is going to be the last selection from them. Of course, you can get some good upsets on your enemies. You can also break open walls, but they're going to be completely outranged by the B. I don't see this going well for STM from a range standpoint, from just a brawler 1v1 standpoint either. It's going to have to come down to OG sticking close to his teammates, getting free supers as well, because once again, I don't really see him getting any supers off of the enemies as they can very effectively keep him at range with the exception of boss. Yeah, this is going to be a wild one. Let's find out how things go down as we we'll see a, a bit of a stack up on both lanes. In case of more heavily on the left, but Harvey adapts to join the fight against Bobby and OG that were on the right side. Bobby getting some good positioning and pretty much just securing the right lane for his team. As long as no wall break makes it over to that area, then he'll be doing just fine. And even if that's broken open, he can migrate over to the left side. But here comes the first super, and Ruffs is going to be looking for that wall break. So many bushes lost. Bobby can still get a pretty good avenue towards the back lines with a bit of a swish at the back line. Yeah, we got swishes in gym grab, even if it is Crystal Arcade after all. As Team In, however, they're looking just about the same as Team Queso on the gym count so far. Boss has been doing a phenomenal job on the left side, might I add. He's once again in very, very long range matchups, stayed alive for a very long time though, finally went down, but it doesn't lend itself to too much success on the left side as OG now starts to push in. Yeah, a good slow on to Zar, but not really any sort of follow-up. So far, gym lead is small, but in favor of Team Queso, and now Harvey is gonna be buffed up as well. OG needs to be extra careful in the mid area. Zar on the right side also trying to face versus Ala SSJ, who's all powered up. Javi also has a power up from Ala SSJ. He's going to be hitting 4K beasts. He's got to be careful. Oh. OG's going to fall victim to it. So much damage flying in. Ala SSJ gets the kill. Little kill there at the end as well as Bobby falls. And this one's a runaway victory for Team Queso unless STMN can somehow upset them on the back lines. Yeah, this is going to be a tough countdown to interrupt this. Bobby and OG are able to get a kill, but Bobby falls and the trade is solid. Team Queso, they are starting to really find their groove here in this quarterfinal match. It's three games in a row now and a single one separating them from picking up a second set. B has been an absolute powerhouse on this map, and I can only expect that to continue unless STMN are somehow able to hang on to those bushes for longer, but it's just an inevitability when you have Colonel Russ on the enemy team. Those walls, they're gonna be coming down. Bobby, he's not gonna double up with anyone on the right side this time. He's gonna be looking to push in versus Ala SSJ. He can peek around the walls pretty effectively, but already, wall break coming in. So many walls lost. Bobby trying to get some damage in. A victory also for Boss as he takes down Zar, and the left side is broken open too. It's gonna be a runaway for Javi if the wall breaks keep coming. Boss pushing forwards will get shut down this time around. I'm, I'm not sure if opening up those walls is something that is in favor of stamina. No. Because the B is just going to have such wide angles to shoot at. And so far, I mean, at least in the previous game, that was a massive advantage, I would say, for Team K. So now as well, OG low HP, but Still, they do manage to clear things up on the side of SCM and keep that man advantage, and OG falls back to heal up. There's a mine near that gem, and OG cannot really commit 
to pick that one up. Still a three gem lead in favor of Team Kezo as Zard does find a big pickup onto Boss on the left hand side. We're seeing some pretty good dodges also by STM in. I guess that's the counterplay to be when she has so much damage. There's a super thrown in as well. Zard though not going to be getting really anything off that. Some lane switch ups attempted on Team Kezo, but STM reacted just as well. Smangles found by Ala SSJ to Bobby. He has no shield left. Gets dominated on the left side by Javi. Boss likewise falls, but it's still really more or less just a tie on the gym count. Hobby, he's looking for a left side angle. It's not looking too successful so far. OG snatches that eighth gem and places some mines down as well. Now, Boss is going to look to bait these out as well. Zara around the right side looking to pinch in from the top side too. It's going to come down to whether Hobby can connect some of these bees, but it's just not coming out of here. Hobby. So incredibly low, but he's still alive, and that shield is big. Uh, Turnaround as well as he shuts down Ooh. on the SSJ, and Javi is just next in line. Boss falls to Zar and stamina tie things up in jam grab. One away from tying things up in sets. Not at all what I expected, but it's land. I guess you can just dodge out B when you have zero ping versus the other. And great baits as well from STMN. It all came down to counterplay. It all came down to counter mechanics because the draft, no, it did not convince me even a little bit from STMN. Wall break here, outrange here. B just existing, I guess. Yeah, it, it, but that, that's the genius, I think, of Team Kazo's comp, right? Uh, or, or at least their big plus side. Off the bat, though, a big kill from Zara on the left, Bombi dominating the right. But that's the thing. If Zara opens up the map, he kind of needs to against Boss, right? But then on the other end, uh, V on the B gets to have a, a, a better playing field too. So it's challenging to uh, find a bit of a compromise between the two and you need to be uh, very selective with uh, which walls and when you decide to take them down. Zara will open up the right side as Boss did transition over to that side of the map. And uh, v is able to find a nice pinch to take down Bobby. Zar should be falling to Boss here. and. He will fall to Harvey instead. It's a uh, two on two, but one that favors Team Kezo ever so slightly, just control-wise. Javi also waiting with his high-powered B. Not going to make sure to hit it, though. OG also trying to occupy mid. Some more gadgets coming in from Al SSJ. That was his last one to get a bit of area control. OG, though, is dodging out things very effectively. Going to try and avoid the slow. Bobby ends up falling victim to it. Javi, despite being just a shred of health left, still manages to escape, but Zar falls on the left side. He's got to feel the attacks from Boss. A little heal from Bobby is going to keep him in the game, too. However, Team Queso, they have pushed up so far into STM in spawn. It could be a gift, it could be a curse. Boss, he's trying to make the last use that he can out of this positioning. Last streak coming down. It's going to be picked up by Boss. No, never mind. Javi walked over, but he already has one. Gems toppled to the ground on the back lines as well. And Team Queso are just one gym away from running back with the countdown. Yeah, well, there it is. Countdown locked in. Bobby gets taken out by Ale SSJ, and this could be. 2-0 two, two, in sets, unless Zar and OG can do something about it. Can they shut down Javi Zar? Now in a 1v2 supply drop to wow. the face. And Team Queso lock in set number two. It looked promising after game number two. It looked like as team in, we're going to be getting that mechanic stiff, but did not pull through at all. Team Queso, they're doing what none of us expected, and a whole lot of you watching did not expect either. Two set victories in a row already, leading into set number three with a massive advantage for the underdog. This is unbelievable because, yes, all the odds are with Stamina. They are the favorite coming into this one. But I've been telling for a while as well that Team Queso, yes, they are inconsistent. Yes, they have terrible performances at times, but they do have that pop-off potential. And in the past, they have popped off at important moments. There is no more important moment than now. And they are absolutely popping off. Great lane play all around. I mean, I was seriously impressed by the mechanics on both teams. However, Team Queso, I think, really stole that sort of attention for me, especially when it came down to Colonel Ruffs, getting those early wall breaks, too. And we'll see how it comes to fruition with the stats. Ala SSJ, 314 damage per second and 10 kills as well. Pretty good stuff mm. on both sides, but one really takes the cake. Yeah, absolutely so. And it's good to see different players as well from one set to the other uh, pumping off on the side of Team Queso as they are a, a very united team and they are playing very well as a team so far today. Let's see how out in the open goes because Stamina, they need this one or, or, or it's the end of their journey for this year.
exactly in just one game really stands between them and a potential match point that they could be facing. Team Queso, they're one game away from going on to a match point for themselves and potentially locking in those semifinals. Ala SSJ starts us off with a Brock pick, and for out of the open, this is a pretty popular one. You're able to break open an avenue on the left lane. Also, Brock, he's simply really good right now. He was always run on this map for that specific purpose of breaking open walls, but with the reload gear, he pumps out tons and tons of damage, and we cannot forget about his star power, which has been reworked to give him more rockets on his super, which can get some unexpected kills, but this is an s -Man classic, Bobby Piper. We have to be seeing that. Yeah, I like the answer, you know, because yes, Brock is probably the best brawler on this map, let's be honest. But when it comes to duels, Piper is a great way to match that energy, if not even just uh, overtake it with just a little bit of uh, uh, an edge when it comes to those 1v1s and hitting that heavy burst damage. And once the map is getting opened up, I mean, it's definitely going to be shining as well. And Max is also, I think, a great addition to the side of SCMN because against a brawler like Brock or any sharpshooter, as a matter of fact, it's going to be a difficult brawler to deal with, one that gets to come up close incredibly quickly and jukes so well just because of the, the, the insane movement speed that it brings to the table, not just for herself, but for the entire team. And something that stands out to me as well is that Piper gets pretty hard countered by Max, and I think that this is a sort of, not, not like a double-edged sword sort of, uh, type of deal, but it definitely is multifaceted. Not only is it going to be good versus Brock, but it's going to be great for getting rid of a pick that would be valuable for the enemy. Otis is going to be the choice from Team Queso, however, and this is a strong one pretty much always. Fat Splatter is great for locking off a lane. He's going to be great for denying a potential aggressive brawler from a last pick for STMN. We see that Fang is not banned out, and he's a Pretty popular pick here in Knockout. Really anything aggressive. I mean, it's what we kind of expect to see from STMN. It's sort of what we have to expect uh, of a last pick as well. But also notice that we haven't seen any thrower bans yet either. Yeah, well, we won't see a thrower on the side of uh, Team Queso as we'll lock in the bell instead. So two sharpshooters as well as the Otis for Team Queso. Now STMN, they have some more options. They. I mean, they would have loved to be fair to go for Eugene, even though it was one of their own bands. But they, they, they have other ways that they can go around it. They could even go with something like Poco, uh, perhaps, or something tankier and more aggressive. You mentioned uh, Fang earlier, that could be on the menu, or a thrower that you also mentioned. Dick is going to be a phenomenal uh, one at that, although it's not necessarily the easiest map, I think, uh, to bring a thrower to. Yeah, especially when you're facing Brock as well, because he'll be breaking open those walls that you need so desperately to survive. So as long as Brock can be kept pretty well at range, he won't get additional stuff from his supers, but he still has his gadget. He still has rocket fuel to break it open for free. One of them's going to be used to, okay, get him through spawn and get a faster rollout and get mid faster. However, it's going to be valuable uh, versus tick, and it's also going to be good for locking down some kills at long range if they are really in a pinch here. Tick, just all around good, but we already see the wall break that's going to be eliminating some of the bushes that he needs to survive. All right, let's see. As we get some walls taken out of the picture by LASSJ, who wants this map to be wide open and wants to play duel. Zorn takes a bit of a beating early on, but needs to make sure that he stays in the mix and comes back to the action after a couple of seconds of healing. Zarn on the right lane also having a bit of trouble fielding these attacks. He's kept very effectively at range. However, he's bobbing and weaving and dodging these attacks. Could get tripped up at the end of things range. Javi also taking quite a bit of damage. There is a kill confirmation from Bobby as well. Now reduced to a 3v2. Zarn's thinking about using the super. Here it is onto both Bobby and OG. Ella SSJ is completely cornered on the right side. A little pop in there by Bobby. He dies of the poison. No, and now it's been reduced to a 1v1 between OG and Boss. This is going to be a difficult one, Boss can deal with that tick head and now they need to find up close OG needs a miracle and that last hurrah is not gonna do anything this is dangerous team queso on the verge of match point that looked like a surefire victory for STMN when they had a, a ally SSJ completely locked into that right corner but no ally SSJ clutched up and I think the bag was kind of fumbled there by STMN. We keep on seeing these blunders from the guys too, but they do start things off with a kill on the boss early on. Bobby is still marked up though. Can't afford to take too much damage, and Ala SSJ has his aim locked onto these back lines as there's not an easy way. Water super. There. Wow, beautiful from Ala SSJ, but perfect timing from Bobby. 
Yeah, he was left in a 1v3. Does find Barbie, actually, but Zar should be able to clean up, and he will do just that. STMN not out just yet. Have a max speed now to use as well. And against those sharpshooters, I already said how strong they can be. And a little way to start things off with Zar getting that speed, getting aggressive as well. Tries to close things in versus Ala SSJ, but Brock always is going to know on that matchup you have to keep your opponents at max range. Bobby also keeping things at range effectively versus Javi on the left side. Bobby's all out of gadgets as well, so he has to tap up these kills the good old-fashioned way. OG also looks to get some area control, but in spite of this, Team Queso are just trouncing the mid-fight. Yeah, Zarn will get tanked out by the bell, but isn't really in danger just yet. However, wow! Takes a huge burst of damage, but survives with 400 HP. He is marked up too, so this uh, late game is going to be compl complicated in this round. OG does have a thick head. Max speed is popped. Zarn trying to create a distraction, but it's not enough. Man advantage. Team Queso Bobby is next to full, and it's only OG left alive. Harvey going to the back line to take care of him, but the gas will do the job for him. Team Queso is hitting match point. Completely unexpected by any of us at the casting desk and largely unexpected by a lot of people in the audience. However, it's well-deserved. Team Queso, they're playing amazing. And STMN, they're making a whole lot of mistakes. They cannot let the pressure get to them like this if they want to push this beyond at set three. Otherwise, if Team Queso take it here, it is a 3-0 to lock themselves into the semifinals. Well, let's see if Stamina still have anything in them. Enough energy, enough will to keep the fight up. A homemade recipe from Bobby does connect, but not really any sort of follow-up. And even though it creates a little bit of space for a couple of seconds, that's about all they get from it. As Javi's in an awkward spot, Bobby really wants to go for it. The peak on the side does catch him, and he finds the double tap. That is going to be a big pickup as Zar is low HP as well. Boss finds one, nearly finds two, and Zar is still trying to survive on that right, left side. He gets shut down by Ali SSG. How do they turn those around on Team Kazo? OG falls one round away. From, these, for, for, from the semi-finals. The composure from Team Queso is off the charts. Here comes Bobby, though, with a little wall break. It's going to help them fall back quite a bit easier, and they're really going to need an early kill on the Javi with the homemade recipe, but Zar is still taking a whole lot of damage here. Has to fall back, has to look for the diffs. There is another kill on the boss as well. Ala SSJ is left all alone, looks for the super, needs to hit these shots, but is not able to do so. It's tied up. S team in, they're one round away from being defeated in the quarterfinals. They have to take it back now, otherwise it's a team case of victory. Yeah, they did bring three supers over to this final round, so they have everything they could dream of utility-wise. Boss gets tapped by Bobby as well, so he has to foil back and refocus his uh, energy elsewhere as Bobby still trying to find some connections on the left side. Not quite successful just yet. Zarn, rather low HP, also needs to address things carefully from here on. As we saw earlier, how dangerous Bobby can be on that pipe. Well, OG on the back right has that super ready to go. If he can get some shots baited out of enemies, he could throw, but it looks like he's saving it for the last second too. Zar also really needs this speed. Bobby with uh, really the only range to contend with the two oh, points on the left. Oh, oh man, that was nasty there from Bobby, but it's not over yet. We've seen how Boss and Ala SSJ can pop off in the final seconds. Here comes the Tick Super, take down onto Ala SSJ. Boss goes down, and we're going to yet another match point. SDMN are not done just yet. They'll be facing another match point, so they're far from being out of trouble so far, but they are still in it. And that's what counts. The dream is still up for Stamina. Let's see if this is going to be their final game of the BSC Season 22, or if they manage to at least claim a set in this series. OG on the right side once more, trying to back things up. It's much smaller of a choke point on that right side as well, and it's forcing Otis back quite effectively. Boss almost gets tapped up there by Bobby. Some damage traded out between Bobby and Zar as well from that reflected shot from Boss. Still, though, Zar having a lot of struggles in these long-range matchups. Here's one shot from Boss, a little bit of extra range on the Bobby. Still no kills just yet, though, and Javi has also managed to plant himself in these bushes. He's forced to back up, and he's, as he continues to get tapped by OG, still 
No supers yet this game. Zar is going to get the first one, but he's marked up. He's got to be careful. Yeah, he can't overextend a couple taps. Will be enough to take him out of the picture. Bobby does find a connection, but himself is very oh. low, and eventually Zar gets eliminated. Javi does fall as well, and Bobby is one shot. Oh! No! Bobby finds the double connection, the double kill in the round as well, and locks in that first round. That's only round number one, still one more to go. Team Queso, if they get two rounds in a row, they'll be heading on to the semifinals. No one is out of the woods just yet. OG, though, will help as Demon have a slight advantage in this round right here. He has that super that he can use for a whole lot of pressure. Bobby, though, is pushing up very, very aggressively. Could get punished if he's not very careful. Boss also has his super at the ready to mark up. Zar, nope, not gonna hit on a Bobby either. Here comes the speed. But Ala SSJ is laying down the incendiary shots to keep Bobby at bay. No kills just yet. However, Javi has fallen back quite far, and Boss and Ala SSJ might look top hill for a pinch. Connection from Boss onto Zar is quite low HP now as well. SSJ has a super, but don't know if he can do all that much with it right now. Zar is so low. He's still up though, and slowly but surely the gas is going to be coming in as Bobby takes down Javi. And now it's a 2v3, another connection from Bobby. And the follow-up, Ali SSJ goes for the super, but gets shut down either way. Stamina are still in this match. We are going to set four. From the brink of defeat, no room for errors for STM, and they're still in it. But they have to win the next two sets in a row, and there is no room for error. With Team Queso looking revitalized in a form that we have never, ever seen before at LAN. Yeah, this is a wild series as well. Our quarterfinals have been delivering so far as Team Queso, they are still in a fantastic position, right? But Stamina, they are not all that far behind anymore, just a single set, and we will go uh, to a fifth and final to decide who between those two teams make it to the semi-finals. In the meantime, Stamina need to be careful. Team Queso are not far away from the finish line. The pressure that has been relieved now is only temporary because a single game, and it's a match point straight back into Team Queso's hands. Exactly, only two games stand between Team Queso and Victory, and they have at minimum four opportunities to take those. It's gonna be extremely close. And Team Queso, they gotta be feeling proud as well about their performance in Knockout. While it wasn't a win, it was still very, very solid. But there's a clear MVP on the side of STMN, okay? It's Bobby, nine kills, a whole lot of DPS, nearly the most in the entire set. However, Boss, I think, takes that title on the side of Team Queso. 151 DPS, and we saw this guy go crazy on his matchups. Neither team here are slouches at all. Yeah, absolutely so, I mean, both players are doing what they can to secure the victory for their teams. We are going to be seeing some heist action. This is a mode that for Team Queso traditionally has been a bit of a disaster. In the BSC, they have a 25% win rate compared to SCMN 62. It's nothing like out of the ordinary for STMN on the win rate of heist. However, for Team Queso, it's the supreme outlier, right? Like you said, 25%, it doesn't look too great. However, safe zone, I think they have the right idea here. 8-bit, it's definitely a personal favorite of mine. It's definitely an uh, NA favorite as well, and I would not be shocked if SCMN thought that they would be able to draft that brawler for themselves. Now, it's on Team Queso's side. However, 8-bit, the counters are fairly straightforward. You simply have to outrange him and be able to fall back and get forward back up again very frequently. Also, wall break is gonna be totally instrumental. And it's a good thing that STMN did not ban out more than one wall breaker because they're gonna need it. 8-Bit needs those walls up in order to keep his super safe because really his super is the only thing that makes him good. Yeah, the thing with Griff is he's not gonna be able to take down those walls in the mid as easily. He, he, he can if he has the position for it, but the risk as well is that the damage booster is just placed down behind it and you never get the chance to get close enough to drop that piggy bank and open up that side of the map that you really wanna open up so the damage booster is exposed so that position can't be just a little stronghold for your opponents to sit and poke your safe at. They'll go Nani as their second pick, which 
I think is an interesting uh, direction. It's something we've seen in the past, but is not quite as popular at the moment, I would say, on Safe Zone. Yeah, not really that popular anymore, but we can't really knock it too much. It's still great for getting some long range kills, but it really relies on having wide open area because that shot, it needs to move very far out and then close in again on your target. Here comes the Colt, actually. And we've seen this before from Team Queso as far as wall break. It's not the most convincing, but I think it's quite slept on. It's one that only appears on this map because wall break, it's essential. Otherwise, you cannot play the right lane from your team's perspective, of course. There are not other options for them. They need the free wall break. Colt, it'll be. How well will they be able to go? Well, with Otis on their side, if they get pretty much one push in with Apit, they can completely melt that safe so ST men do not have any room for error on defense. Yeah, I think that's uh, very much the name of the game. Uh, Team Keizo, I, I think they know that Heist is one of their weaknesses, so they're willing to gamble on this draft to either take it with a lot of DPS on safe, or we will be seeing that fifth and final set, which is going to be uh, a 50-50 by all means. Final pick. Now for STMN, it's gonna be the call, and I think that's a strong one here. Yes, it's not necessarily gonna be the Brawler that gets the most damage on safe. Doesn't have unbelievable bursts uh, of damage on safe either, but he's gonna be a, a, a tremendous duelist, and utilizing the, the, the cover that is left up on the map uh, will be able to find a, a good bit of value. Really just a well-rounded brawler and a good solid pick for the end. He doesn't really get free kills in close range, but that's not what Carl is all about anymore. He still gets great mobility with his gadget and he can get in a great position. If he's left alone on top of that save, he pumps out massive DPS. Here comes the mid play though. It's gonna be OG on the nanny at mid. The wall breaks on their respective sides. Bobby now getting rid of that right side wall. And still being held back pretty effectively by Javi, who now migrates over to that left lane. And Boss is also taking a beating. He can't really dodge out the shots from OG and is gonna be taken down quite early on STMN continue to push forward but Javi will not really let up on this right side and Bobby's having a bit of trouble. Yeah it's the thing with Abit right it's gonna struggle to dodge those call shots from uh afar just because it's so slow without the damage boost. Oh OG was the TP gets the pickup on the left side and some nice connections on safe and wow that is a dominant way to kick off the four set as already stamina have a 50% lead. And Zara also got the takedown onto, uh, onto Brawler on the right side as well. Javi went down, and that's going to let him return to the fight more effectively and make it so that Estimate doesn't have to fall back as far. Already half of the save taken down as well, and it's not a great look for Team K. So with that turret being left out in the open, immediately disintegrated. Solid damage coming in from Al SSJ and Boss, but they have to sacrifice a lot of health to make it happen. Zara also pushing towards the enemy side. Opts not to get too close to that save. Instead, trying to fall back to that mid fight a little bit earlier on. An attempted block there from Boss on the tank, but OG still managed to slip some damage through. 35% remains for STM in to squeak out a victory here. Team Queso, they put forth a respectable effort, but the eight pin is just not what it needs to be. Yeah, OG is offering us one of his most fantastic performances ever on that uh, Nani pick. Just getting 3k hit after 3k hit at max range. Wow, what uh, uh, what, what, what a couple of plays from OG Whoa. and the rest of the squad is doing their work as well. Team Queso looking a little bit better here, starting to close the gap damage-wise and have some control and some merit to their pushes, but OG is going to go for the TP and that is going to be a nice pickup from Zara. Zavi is going to fall to Bombi on the right-hand side. Team Queso, they're really just trying to fling themselves to the safe here and hope that they can out DPS things. But Zara, he's locked himself in the back right corner. He's going to be ignored by Javi, or maybe not. He's sort of returning fire, but this looks like a clear victory for Zara unless Team Queso get crazy DPS. They haven't even touched the safe. Here comes the first bits of damage in. Bazaar takes it down, and STMN got the first game victory. One game away from pushing us to a fifth and final set. One game. That's all it takes for Stamina to bring things back to even things up as they struggled in this match, but they are starting to find their real face again. And off the bat, OG was a couple tanks down in the mid against Boss. He's been killing it. And th this is just a counter matchup that not a lot of people would think of, but works wonderfully well for SCMA. Javi on the right side, 
keeping Bobby back quite effectively. Bit of a different wall break approach taken by Bobby this time as well. Javi gets some solid damage on that save. Al SSJ also playing quite a few bullets into that save. 18% dealt already. Good kill as well by Bobby. Al SSJ pinched from all directions. Still managed to get a little bit more damage on that save and a very solid start for Team K. So in fact, 30% damage dealt already with what seemed to be not too much of an effort from Team K. So on that left side, Cole just pumps out so much damage when he's allowed to even get a few taps on the save. He absolutely does. Bobby gonna go for a super, gets the kill onto Bar, sticks down the healing station, and even though Bobby is left in a 1v2 against a very low HP Ali SSJ, he's not able to find either kills, and that enables Team Queso to find some more value. Zark going in and not quite gonna be going out as Bobby also falls, and Harvey has a chance to get some damage on save, so does Ali SSJ, and he's been juking like never before, but eventually a shot from OG catches him. Boss also throws down the turret in a place where he knows it's going to be relatively safe. It's going to come down to what OG can offer in order to get rid of it. He has so much speed and so much damage as he stands in the nexus of that, uh, rather, of that turret. Bobby now breaks down the right side. Here comes a super in from Zar. One, two kills. Al SSJ is the last one surviving. Good dodges from Bobby is going to keep him alive. Some damage trickles into that safe, but there's not much time left for STMN to offer an advantage over what Team Queso has contributed to their safe. And they're still pushed back to mid. Once again, really defensive positioning of that turret from Boss. Here comes the super in from OG. Not gonna be a kill onto Ala SSJ yet, just yet, but he has pushed things back. Here comes the damage and missed silence as well by Javi. But now OG is the last man standing. One kill, gotta see another on Javi. Oh! There it is, and he has a super ready to go, but he's determined to block things off at mid and keep the control. There's not a lot in it but they need more damage on the side of STMN. The super from Bobby finds a connection. Boss and Ali in the defense. Is it gonna be enough? It is. That is gonna be Stamina Esports bringing it back all the oh. way to a set five. So, so close there. Just 1% trickled in from Colt at the end. It was just a split second away from being a Team Queso tie or comeback. With that behind us though, such a close game! Amazing stuff from Stamina and such convincing things from Team Queso as well on the earlier stages. We could have a reverse sweep incoming if Stamina keeps up the momentum here. We have to acknowledge though that it was a respectable response from Team Queso in spite of them only having a 25% win rate on Heist in the BSC. That's very low. That is very, very low. They definitely didn't play it bad. I think they took a little bit too long to adjust and make the right decisions. And that first game was pretty much just offered to Stamina. And the second one, it, it was close. Those closing counters, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. But when you give a, a free game away at the beginning of the set, well, you don't get the chance to make up for it. Amazing stuff. Yeah, there's the reaction from OG as well. STMN definitely getting the crowd riled up in the background as well. Just fan favorites here. Whoa, 13 kills. Someone tell OG that it's about getting damage on the safe, not on your enemies. Yeah, well, he's been finding so much value on that Nani pick. I think that was a genius brawler to bring to the table on the side of Stamina just because of how you outrange the 8-bit and he can't dodge your shots at a, a far range. So you can poke him, you get big, fat 3k hits at a mid to close range and, and just so much utility across the board. Uh, a, a wonderful idea of a brawler to bring to the table in such a, a heated moment. But now, ready, we are all evened out. Two sets for each team and this fifth and final will decide who between Stamina Esports and Team Queso will be going to the semifinals. And it's gonna be Hot Zone dueling Beatles in a, definitely a contentious map. Hot Zone, what a way to finish things off too at all times. And this is when we sometimes see those 99% clutches at the last moment. First pick goes over to Stamina. They've banned out Stu, Lou, and Sprout. On the side of Team Queso, Grip, Penny, and Crow all out of the question. I don't see a Buster ban and I don't see a B ban either. So do we see the Poco mixed up with a tank? Not quite sure yet. It all comes down to how this pick phase goes and the first pick from the side of STMN, it's gonna be Otis. Yeah, what worries me a little bit here is that, well, 
obviously Stamina comes into this fifth set with a lot more, uh, just a lot more momentum, right? They just won two sets in a row. They are potentially about to reverse with Team Queso, but this is arguably Team Queso's best game on. At least yes. statistically this year, it's Hot Zone where they have found the best results. And I mean, it's, uh, you know, between t double and triple the win rates that they had in highs. We saw what they could do in highs. They could definitely do some damage here. Bell is going to be the answer to SCMN's Otis. I, I, I don't mind it. I think Bell is, is a very viable pick here. Not necessarily the flashiest, but one that can uh, have some uh, good value, whether you decide to go for some trick shots here and there, or will uh, place down some nest eggs for a bit more of a defensive stance around that mid zone. I, I, I think it's a safe brawler to bring in, and both teams are really trying hard not to get outdrafted. Yeah, well, to stop a double match point and, of course, not get into a sub opportune moment, then you have to pick something that you're comfortable with. And we've seen what Team Queso is capable of on that particular brawler. We've also seen just how nasty Javi can be with the B pretty much the entire year. This has been a favorite for him. It's comfort pick. And I mean, lucky for him, it's very, very meta right now. And this is also a brawler that I mentioned that came to mind because it's a very strong counter to any sort of Poco ideas. And we have not seen a tank pick just yet or really anything that's oriented in that direction when it can be a serious game changer on this map. Also got to be considering, wow, Brock, I I don't hate it, but Brock, he really does struggle in mid-range. Yeah, he kind of does. I think they want to uh, take some more control of which walls will be destroyed or not. Because uh, as of right now, de depending on what stamina would have uh, gone for, Team Kezo could have potentially just got the Brock as the final pick, open up the map with it, and then you have three sharpshooters on an open map, and that's more likely they're not gonna be GG's, right? If, especially if you have a B and a Bell that can also deal with the tanks. And this is a brawler that I feared Stamina would bring to the table because Buster in uh, Dueling Beatles, I think can be quite a threat and Team Queso better be prepared to deal with it. He's very frustrating to face versus even then. And you know, even if he doesn't end up working out, it's not gonna be a pleasant time for Team Queso even a little bit. Still, they have abundant options on how to deal with him. He might just be the strongest tank at the moment. However, got to be thinking of those tank counters. And I don't know if Gale's really the way to go because he struggles on the range matchup, but it typically is the most straightforward way to deal with it. Pam, I definitely love because if Buster pushes in versus her, then he is going to be taking a lot of damage and potentially having his ammo sucked away by Scrap Sucker. The boss needs to be careful because if his damage gets reflected back at him, every single one of those shots is going to get reflected by Buster Super. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of the, the, the Pam idea, at least not off the bat. Maybe uh, they uh, know something I don't, but what I do know is that this is our fifth and final set between Stamina Esports and Team Queso. Winner takes all. Czar on the right side is already getting it started versus Boss. A kill already flying across the screen. Ala SSJ falls and s -Men begins to set themselves up. And Bobby, he got slowed down by the Honeypot for just a moment. It is actually going to work out pretty well for Czar on the right side as well as he gets killed. Down goes Javi on the left side. A little silence on Ala SSJ. Czar looks for the final shot, but Brock, he struggles in mid-range. We already knew this. A little super to the backside to get some damage on Boss. He's just one hit away from getting taken down. Early rocket fuel popped as well, but where is he even going to place that? It looks like he was going for the kill and got a little trigger happy. He does go for just a normal shot there, but no more wall breaks are available for Zard for free. Here's a reflected shot from Bobby. Solid takedown as well, and a very convincing lead for STMN. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know what the idea was from Team Queso. Uh, I, I feel like if you go for those sharpshooters, you, you want to open up that map, especially if Buster is left open just not a chance here as bombi just blocks access to the mid has perfect range for that area and team queso to my eyes completely messed up that draft great pinch there from javi around the left side ala ssj and javi are both setting their sights on mid now as og could get taken down no denial from og czar continues to take down the right side there's no coming back for team k so right now this game it's done and dusted it's going to stmn and it's a match point on the way we had multiple match point opportunities for Team Queso. Heist nearly got there as well, but now at last, Stamina with a full on reverse sweep are getting a match 
point of their own. One game is all it takes to lock in their spot in the semifinals. We saw what happened last time. Essieman ran Buster, though, especially into a B, actually, and it didn't work out so well for them after some time as Team Queso got adapted. And already, Team Queso, they pushed up pretty far on the right side, dropping down a nest egg. Zara doesn't look like he's going to be venturing too close to there as he tries to get it done at long range. Little healing turret popped down by Ala SSJ. That's going to be a great early game value. Still, though, Team Queso, they're a little bit cautious about moving on to mid. Bobby getting some of his ammo sucked away as well. Ala SSJ definitely giving him a hard time. OG on the left side, managed to get the kill versus Javi, however. And Ala SSJ is forced to move back. Missed silence as well. Two bags fumbled in a row. Down goes Zara as well. And Team Queso now take back mid control. Yeah, opening up the left side so far seems to be favoring uh, Team Queso more than any Body else is they have an aggressive stance now with that healing station still doing work. Eventually, it's gonna get taken care of by Zara that gets a shot through the wall. A kill from OG on the left hand side. Ale SSJ should get shut down, and indeed, after a silence and some follow up shots, he will fall. And this is a chance for stamina to start catching up. Super popped by Bobby around the left side as well, reflecting some solid damage. Al SSJ tries to take him down. Bobby's on very low health. There's a heal over to OG, but he's still on super low health. He ends up getting tagged up around the corner by Boss. Al SSJ and Boss are relatively safe here, but OG and Zara are coming for him still. They make sure to stay in very close range versus Zara, pushing him off that point. Takedown onto OG as well. It's a 3v2. Zara has to stay alive. Good takedown from Bobby. Good reflections from the guy as well. Takedown onto Boss. Hobby has to get the slow. There's the kill, but he gets countered out. And STMN look to equalize the capture percentage on the point now. Huge plays from Stamina because now they're taking over the lead and we're getting so dangerously close to the finish line. A damage, uh, sorry, a healing station that gets shut down incredibly quickly. A kill from Zara on the left. Bobby takes down the mid player, gets the final kill and Stamina are going to the semi-finals. Semi-finals on the top side of the bracket, locked in Team Queso, despite being one game away from victory. Fully reverse swept a game victory in the first uh, game of set number three, and then fully taken back in a dominating game from STMN. What a comeback for STMN. In the end, I guess we got our predictions right, but this is the strongest ever showing that we have seen from Team Queso. Team Queso looked phenomenal, especially in the two first sets. Even afterwards, it's not like they got stomped in the three necks. They still were absolutely competitive, but Stamina, they just built up so much momentum and they were unstoppable. Three sets in a row for the full-on reverse sweep. That has got to be one of the biggest turnarounds in PSE history and by a large margin as well, because this was insane. Just never before seen stuff, and it looked a little bit grim at points for STMN, even after they started getting that momentum going following those first couple of sets. Just look at the reactions from the guys as well. Definitely crowd pleasers, these guys. Absolutely, I can even tell, you know, without hearing it, that there, there was some mouth swearing, potentially, <laughs> uh, with that celebration, but you can't blame them how happy they must be at this stage, and the stats are absolutely in favor of Stamina. Bobby on that buster at the end, phenomenal performance. But to my eyes, it's OG that really uh, showed his true colors today and came with a phenomenal show. We'll see if you guys agree. You guys go, Bobby. He still had a very good showing, too. I mean, whether it was the Piper earlier on or the buster towards the end, he was also absolutely fantastic today it, it was a team effort czar absolutely has his moments too and I, I think a special mention to boss from team Kesto that really had some games that he popped off and did a, a, a huge amount of work for his team this new addition to the roster makes me very optimistic for team Kesto in the next year because an addition to the team a huge roster swap and breakup towards the end of the year that's disastrous, right? That really downplays your team synergy. And to see them actually play so well on the world stage versus such a stacked roster as well is absolutely impressive. And I hope to see what these guys accomplish in the next year. With that said, though, STM and they've looked so impressive today. Now they're headed into the semifinals. Well, they'll be facing Zeta Division One. Yeah, that is true. That is going to be a challenging matchup. Totem couldn't quite do it. And most uh, people that thought, you know, that any team that could beat Zeta, it would be Totem. It wasn't this time around. Stamina, maybe later on today, we'll be able to make the, the dream happen.
I mean, we can only wait and see. We're only halfway through the quarterfinals. Uh, rather, yes, we're halfway through the quarterfinals with two matches out of the way and two stellar ones as well. We saw some upsets that we didn't necessarily expect. A really strong showing from both Zeta1 and Reply Totem, as well as STMN and Team K. So getting extremely close there. I have expected actually a double match point. Well, guys, we have someone very special here at the Brawl Stars World Finals. It is going to be our game lead, Frank Ark. Take it away. Thank you very much, Ruddy. And yes, I'm pleasured to be joined with the game lead of Brawl Stars. Frank is here. Frank, it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. Thank you, man. Let's get stuck in. Um, I've got to say, you know, it's been a phenomenal year for Brawl Esports and uh, maybe you can just describe for the viewers at home the atmosphere of the arena and uh, how you've been enjoying the uh, show so far. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, the audience has been amazing and loud and cheerful. Uh, yesterday was just perfect. Let's get stuck into predictions because I know that you are a competitive man. And I know that you keep up with everything Brawl Esports. How have you been getting on over at event.brawlstyles.com? Have you been getting them right? Have you got the Rage Quit Tara skin? And if it went wrong, where did you uh, lose out on your predictions? I've got one wrong so far. Just the one? Yes, uh, that was yesterday, of course. Uh, there was a 50-50 chance. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the year as a whole, as again, it has been the most competitive year for Brawl Esports. Which region has really shone for you? And has there been a particular player that has really stood out for you? Yeah, for me, it was EMEA. Um, just having seven monthly finals and four different teams winning. It's absolutely insane. For me, the team so far, even though they lost today, was Totem. Um, this redemption arc of having a bad start of the year and then showing up here, you know, it's awesome. And along those lines, there's definitely Joker as the new rookie of the year. Um, but for example, in the last monthly final in EMEA, we had Dockstar Lobster almost qualifying, which I think is absolutely insane. I, for one, fully agree. Just before we wrap up, recently we've seen a little bit of the Brawl Stars roadmap going into next year, but is there anything that I can squeeze out of you before you finalize things? Any sneak peeks for those watching at home? I personally have no sneak peeks for you, but if you're viewing this, you should stay tuned until the end. Well, that is an incentive to stick around if there ever was one. Well, Two quarterfinals down, two more still to come. You are not going to want to go anywhere. We will be right back after a quick break. People often ask, how can I do become a world championship winner? What must I do to get abs of steel and feast of fury? The answer, Gimnasio people! You will learn to summon strength, summon asteroids, and serve a spicy jalapeno knuckle sandwich to even the strongest of brothers. Fight with and break with your heart. It will not be easy, but as a primo once said, no pain, no gain, no glory. Gimnasio Primo. It's showtime. We could tell you all about Spike Air, our new brawling shoe with explosive technology and a podium perfect profile. We could tell you it's banned in 42 countries for unfair advantages in the Brawl Stars Championship. But we'll let Spike do the talking. Spike Air. Look sharp. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2022 Brawl Stars World Finals. Two quarterfinals down, two to go. I am Uber, joined here by Ark. And, mate, you weren't quite able to squeeze much out of Frank there in that interview, but I tell you what, there's plenty of goodness to get squeezed out of these next couple of uh, quarterfinals, man. What a matchup. Nothing better than a reverse sweep here, but we're far from done. 
we've really eliminated a lot of the expected one-sided matchups, I think, at this stage in the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where it really does all come down to. The matches are so exciting, so close to cool. And as you heard from Frank himself, not getting every prediction right. And I think that is going to be very much the story of today. We're going to see more upsets, no doubt about it. So we've just seen STMN take down Team Kazo in a hair racing reverse sweep. Now we get Tribe Gaming EU going up against Data Division Zero. Then after that, oh, it's a bit of a transatlantic El Clasico, I'd like to think. Yeah. Tribe NA and SK have a score to settle as always, one and one in tournament appearances as of late. That's going to be an incredible matchup as well. Let's talk about our prediction so far. Tough day to call, uh, indeed. Uh, so far, uh, you know, like a bit of a, a bit of a stumble for you there with that reply totem game. Myself and Ready Set though, clean as a whistle. Yeah, you're looking good, no doubt about it. Uh, it was going to be for a match for me that could have gone to the fifth and final set. It really, really could have done. But Zeta Division 1, you know, many people crossing in the corridor saying to me, what's going to happen with this team? Yeah. Who has what it takes to take them down? Yeah, you know, seeing that other game uh, just now, there's a question or STM and ready for that Zeta Division team, right? Of course, the sister team, Zeta Division 0, lurking in that lower bracket, also threatening to be quite dominant here. But Tribe Gaming EU, Looked incredible here. Big shout out to Ryan, of course, community manager at Supercell. Great to have him join us here in the crowd. An incredible nickname as well, just quietly. Perhaps the, uh, perhaps the, the new, uh, was it the Penny Skin? Yeah. Maybe named yeah. after him there. Love to see that. <laughs> Everyone getting extremely excited. Everyone taking their seats for this next match to come. And I think we should start talking about Tribe EU a little bit there because it was a 3-0. So on paper, the this, this series yesterday against Zest looked fairly good, but in every set, they dropped around to this Zest team who are plucky, who were just refusing to lay down. Tom, for me, a standout on this Tribe EU team. He, he had all the carries in the pocket yesterday, didn't he? He really excelled. And, you know, this is where I feel like Tribe would sometimes have faltered, actually. But they were able to pick themselves up, remind themselves that they had the advantage more often than not, and get the job done. I mean, uh, you're watching the Gus and Amber play, especially on Hot Zone, right? Seeing Tom just walk up there, play with confidence, play aggressively. It seems so crucial. I mean, again, I think Frank pointed it out here, right? It's four different teams winning monthly finals in the EMAA region. This team, Tribe EU, are forged for just an occasion. They've already come out of the baptism of fire in their own region now they're ready to take down the very best from east asia let's head to the stage let's get them out here Et on est de retour ici à Paris, au milieu de la foule cette fois, il fallait que j'aille au milieu des fans. Est-ce qu'on est chaud Ça c'est ce qu'on aime. Et comme on s'est jeté au milieu des fans de Tribe, on va la faire en anglais les gars. We're gonna switch to English real quick because we're doing every language out there. Two matches were out there. Everyone's super happy. And I mean, you know, you know when I'm here, right? You guys know where I'm here, right? You know it. Drive for the win! Drive getting you! They were once tea drinkers, but today, looking to take a sip from a cup of gold. Drage, Tom, Lanan, and Yoshi came in to the world finals of the back of a big monthly final win in October and have continued to assert themselves yesterday against Zest in a three-set sweep. Tom, of course, listed, lifted the BSE trophy in 2019 and is looking to add another to his cabinet. With five grand final appearances and two grand final wins, they have been the most consistent team in the EMEA region this year. Lenard's a superstar player in Europe. They brought him in from STMN halfway through the year because they knew he was what they needed to take it to the top. They are your number one seed coming out from the EMAA region. A proud history this region has. They expect glory. Let's see if they can get it from their opponents about to come. Évidemment, il faut bien deux équipes pour faire un match. Il faut un adversaire. You need an opponent to make a game. And of course, we're here for the competition. Make some noise for Zeta Division Zero! Zeta Division Zero know firsthand just what it takes to achieve greatness. Tensai and Achapi are the reigning world champions, with Kuru this year being the icing on the cake for one of the tastiest rosters in all of Brawl. With five grand final appearances and five grand final wins this year, they are ready to leave those they face in the dust. 
yesterday. Chaz White Gaming put them to the test, but Zeta prevailed and no doubt have plenty more left saved in the tank. This team had to sit on the sidelines at the mid-season Invitational as their sister team went on to represent their region and ultimately win the tournament. And Zeta Division Zero were barely barely just behind that one team, right? They had three monthly finals of their own. These two teams split the region. You know, I'm sure you love to see your teammates go and succeed, but I'm sure a big part of them wanted to be on a stage like this. And now they're making the most of it. It was an extremely close game against Chasmac Gaming BR. They got put to the absolute test and they almost got put to the sword. Today, they're gonna hope to be a little bit more stable as they look to secure a semi-final berth. Exactly. Many teams have told me that they feel like Zeta Division Zero has been the stronger of the teams between the Zetas this year. But yesterday we saw a couple of cracks, and that is something that I'm sure Tribe Gaming EU looking from the sidelines are looking to exploit. Ultimately, for me, it's still Zeta. They've still dominated the East Asia region this year. And for Tribe, I know for a fact that Drage is one of the most intriguing players actually on the Tribe Gaming EU roster for the simple reason that he likes to network a lot within that region. I mean, I saw him hanging out with Tutampo the other day. Uh, you know, for a guy, obviously, there's a language barrier to conquer in that regard. Drace throws himself into that challenge and he uh, made fantastic friends with so many of these guys. Again, he's pretty close to them. So he's probably starting to de develop an understanding about how these guys think maybe what the mindset is uh, from this region. And look on that stage. One of the biggest notable differences for me is that there is not a fourth person standing behind that Zeta Division Zero team. They do not have a coach. They do not think they need a coach. These drafts, these strategies, they come from the players themselves. Very self-sufficient. I wonder if that makes any difference here. Maybe the extra help, maybe another pair of eyes can go a long way. Tribe Gaming, you are going to hope that's the case. Yeah, I mean, for Zeta Division Zero, sometimes it does help to just be there left on your own devices, you know, able to have a bit more, you know, team speak and have things a bit clearer and a bit more concise. They are a very well-rounded team in the way that they just approach in a very disciplined manner every single moment that they have. And again, yesterday, I think many of us were surprised to see them just struggling a little bit. But what we remembered was the fact that they endured it and turned it around towards the end. Yeah, I think the, the fact of the matter is it's much more likely that we underestimated what Chasmat Gaming Brazil would be able to bring. But these are exhausting games. These five set series really take it out of you. So this team's gonna have to hope that they've had a chance to rest and recoup because the guys that played their first uh, their first round of 16 matches right on that day one, they had a whole day to sit, to watch, to strategize, to prep. For, for these guys, for the Zeta Division Zero team, they, they come in now and say, right, well, we've had the one night, that's all the time we're gonna have. Uh, and they're gonna have to make a count out here on the stage. And Tribe Gaming EU is one of the most frightening teams in the entire world, let alone on this side of the bracket. We've just seen an incredible matchup. We thoroughly expect this one to be just as close, Ark. We're about to jump right into game. It's gonna be Canal Grande. It's time for Bounty. Let's see as the teams get themselves prepared. Look at that poll. 52%. Love that. For Tribe Gaming EU, 48%. Just shy for Zeta Division Zero. It's gonna be one of those maps that getting that early high ground is going to be so important and Carl is available. I wouldn't be surprised if Zeta Division Zero pick it first or if they don't, Tribe surely going to want to snap that one up. Right, now it's not just Zeta Division One that we've seen really coveting that particular brawl or a lot of teams are getting a ton of value out of it. Whether or not it's paired up with something like a Gus, Carl is still a force to be reckoned with and he's locked in first. Well, I'm not surprised, <laughs> but again, Tribe with now a chance to respond and Obtaining that blue star, obviously, such a crucial moment, especially in a map like Canal Grande. And they have found out Eve themselves, and that would have given them a bit more space to maneuver yeah. here on this particular map. But Gene going to come in, Tribe, and I do love that particular Brawler. So rounded, isn't it, really? Having the healing be there when you most need it, and Otis is just there to come in as well and apply that aggressive. I mean, I always saw Mari earlier today on that Gene. You know, really, especially on gem grab, able to break the deadlock and give his team the win when it really counted. The magic hand is so scary, and we, we are starting to see a couple of these genes pick up that gear, get a little bit of extra length on that magic hand. People underestimate, I guess, how much, like what it was, a quarter, a third of a tile can mean, but it can mean all the difference in those situations where it is win or die. Janet gonna get locked in here by Zeta Division Zero. 
who we saw earlier today reply to some really utilizing that talk to the hand gear. I mean, that was a moment where if they were not running it, they would not have got that all important pull against Zeta Division 1. Yeah. Janet going to come in now, and again, a great thing to have, ultimately to scout the bushes, to be able to feed back information to your team. and. That's where the battle for me is always won, actually, in Canal Grande. If you can have that mid-ground, then more often than not, you can just try to hold it until the very end. And often overlooked about Janet is that, uh, you know, drop the base is really frustrating. Of course, it's in like rude sands in the way that it will reveal people within its area of effect, and that includes those in bushes. Kuru now going to be the last pick, of course. The Rafts gets brought in by Zeta Division Zero. Really well-rounded composition here. They've got access to wall break. They've got a lot of survivability. They've got Tensai. If he does end up being the gem carrier, can get out of trouble. Now, we saw Zeta Division 1 really use their Carl as a blunt object, send him forward, uh, send him in there with a the tailspin to uh, el eliminate opponents, of course, on bounty and get those key stars. Squeak careful enough. That's an interesting one. It's going to be a tough one, but not if they keep that control. But over time, as those you know, sticky syrup gadgets then take their toll on the map, it's it's going to be something where you can't always lock down that lane. You've got to have a really early, good game in that respect. As time goes on, you've got to keep that control, and that's going to be a tough thing if they lose control. As expected, flying hook means a Charpy gets to snatch up the blue star to start us off here. Tom trying to apply as much pressure as he can on the squeak. Can he have as much of an impact as he did yesterday on his Gus and his Amber and such? Definitely a question to be answered. Drage likely has the vision gear here, as if he had to reveal Tensai's position for a little longer after connecting. Tensai is keeping at arm's length, and when he comes to Charpy, protected pirouette. Looks good. Starts getting his change here, but it's going to be Zeta Division Zero with a comfortable lead, and Lanar needs to be careful here. Wow! Lanar survives by Charpy very quick to the uptake there. He had to be, but interesting stuff because Carl has been Tom. a real issue oh! all the time. For teams that Zeta Division Zero face, but they are starting to shut it down. But look at this lead 11 stars and the blue star now with Zeta Division Zero. That's like a free elimination there from Tensai as he flies over the map, able to drop one down on Tom. Pretty punishing here. Tom still has some of those gadgets left, so that sort of really high peak of Squeak's efficiency and effectiveness in the early part of these rounds is still available to Tribe. And now we'll see the map split, which is not great. For Tribe, they need to find a way to cross the divide and the range limitation of Squeak here might make this a bit more challenging. Drage hoping for another magic hand. Great residue from Tom Kuru is caught off guard now. Can they get the takedown? He's half HP and Lanan coming now in. Oh, but he's managed to avoid that super in such a beautiful way and Tribe is struggling to get these kills finalized. Lanan almost overextending there and he does. Tensai might get muted but he's still able to find the shot. Achapi playing up close and personal here. He's got to respect the damage from Drage but Kuru is there to assist. Achapi backs away. Had a package for Kuru there, but they split, so no extra damage. And 13 seconds left in the round, Tribe had to make the play. Yeah, Drage needs a pull, but he already wasted one previously to this, and it's going to be a very tough thing to retake Tensai, though. It's going to come down here, and that'll be three stars Kuru as well, potentially He's here. Mad. But the blue star is still in favor of State Division Zero, and they will take the first game. That's mad from Tensai. You see, very low health. Comes across the map where that super actually drops down in front, but he knows I've only got two stars to my name. If I can pose a distraction, if I can get in the way, it's going to take Tribe longer to find our main star carrier. Once again, a Achapi straight into the middle, blue star in hand. That's flat up there for the Nun and keeping Tensai just a little bit back there. Achapi as well, so he'll be a bit cautious in this position. It does go down, actually. Blue star with Tribe, but now straight back into the hands of State Division Zero as Tensai there with the pickup keeps them with a healthy lead of two stars. Trey's getting some healthy poke, but he's not ready for Kuru to come in from the bush here. Tribe definitely looking a little maladroit right now. A little unstable through this middle part of the map. What do you make of this squeak pick here? Of course, residue is so important when it comes to collecting these important eliminations, but it's not been enough so far. Far better when you've got the lead and having your opposition coming in off the spawns to just delay the onset, really. But Tribe need to retake here, and they've struggled a little bit in this mid area where, again, many of the battles are lost and won. Chappie has super now as well, and a flying hook in, and back out again. He could get easily a double here. Drage is low, but actually not even needed. He could go in to finish the Nano if he wants the patience. You've got to admire it from Zeta Division Zero, because sometimes they've got the utility, and they don't even need to display it. It's mad, isn't it, that a Chappie can sit back here. Zeta Division Zero are so far ahead. This map is excellent for both teams. In fact, it's Tribe EU's best game type in general. But they are significantly behind the eight ball here. And Zeta Division Zero, a look in a pocket. 
Dre's Magic Hand available. Tensai, the one with the blue star here. He'd love to line it up, but he's a little bit too low. Kuru, Tensai able to pick Dre's off. It's going from bad to worse here, Ark. Let's not sugarcoat it. Yeah, we need to see more connections with the Magic Hand, because that really can be such a huge game turner. Kuru here low, but utilizing the sandbags wonderfully so there. And look at this, Dre's not able to do a thing there as Kuru and Tensai close in. 20 stars to two. This is a massacre. Oh, it's not with the roar that Tribe you go down in this first map, but a whimper absolutely dominated by Zeta Division Zero. Any echoes of the close game they had yesterday well and truly dissipated. What a display of dominance. Zeta Division Zero now very reserved as we've come to expect from them over the years. But inside, surely a fire growing and that is always the perfect start on the world stage. So what do you make of the, the draft here for Tribe Gaming EU? Because they really seem like they have troubles answering the Carl. And also the, the, the roughs, the constant presence of pressure from the roughs here. Even Lenar uh, on that Otis is not able to collapse onto these side lanes. And there was a moment just here where Tribe had the lead, but a Charpy just comes out of nowhere and equalizes. This from Tensai is <laughs> so scary. Yeah, we didn't see, again, more magic hands. We didn't really get any of that with Drage. And I feel like Tribe probably should have banned the Carl, just simply given how much we know Zeta Division as a you know, complete org are really utilizing that brawler. On a map like Canal Grande, it's really commonplace to go in to grab that blue star with the flying hook. So I would like to have seen that just banned out by Tribe a little bit. Probably hoping on the uh, lamp blowout on the gene to be able to cancel it. But, you know, clearly it's just something that Zeta Division Zero are thriving off the back of. I mean, look at these stats. I mean, we mentioned about Tom yesterday just being such a crucial component in the Tribe Gaming EU organism, but at this moment in time, not a single kill. Ten takedowns for Tensai. Five for Chubby, five for Kuru. That is very strong stuff. Tom is a player, pretty reserved, right? Fairly collected. Don't normally see him just sort of overreact or sort of maybe get too excited here. So in this sort of, uh, I, I don't know, a low energy state, he needs to find a way to surpass his limits or at least what we saw in that round so far. Gold Arm Gulch is up next. Knockout on the menu. The arena is electric. I don't know whether you can hear at home, but we can sure hear from the casting desk. It's such a great thing to have that kind of energy behind them, and uh, maybe this will be the thing that Tribe need to get back in the game. Look, they're not just a Tribe in name. They brought everybody. They brought their brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, cousins, everybody here. <laughs> There's a huge Tribe contingent in the crowd, and make no mistake, the players can absolutely hear this. They've got noise-canceling headphones, of course, but just the energy in the arena will still find its way in. Tom snaps up that Eve here first. Well, they banned it out last time. First pick this time, and no coal bound, though, just to point that one out. Um, it is a great thing to have down in the bottom layer of the map. You get so much more space to maneuver with that lakey area and some control there, some potential to push others up the map as well. And Janet coming in again for Zeta Division Zero. We saw this from SK Gaming, right? They had Semantic, I think, sort of towards the top of the map on that Eve while they used Nani on that diagonal. So that is available here, of course. Still Nani not picked up quite yet. It's going to be the Gene pick here from Zeta Zero to follow up the Janet. Well, healing is always a great thing to have in knockouts. Longevity, ultimately getting towards those later stages and not doubling down too early on the early game. You've got to be able to have a bit of both there in your arsenal as Tribe Gaming you look to pick up something more to add to this Eve. There's a snowball element to this as well, because if Zeta Division win, do win that first round comfortably, Tensai maybe doesn't have to use Super. Coming into a round with Gene Super available completely changes the texture of that round, right? Your opponents are going to be extra careful uh, of going up against you. And here comes the Gus. And again, this was such a key pick for Tom yesterday. He's going to look to maybe get some value out of it here. Yeah, they turned, you know, take a you know, knockout around because of that Gus and the Spooky Popper Gadget as well. Beautifully timed plays we saw. We could see potentially another sharpshooter to join the mix here. Buster, though, could have come in, and that's going to be an aggressive thing and a big statement now that Zeta Division Zero have got to respond to. So, tons of durability. That's definitely uh, something to, to note here on the side of Tribe EU. Obviously, Eve Super can have uh, some sort of niche value here, but really, uh, her utility across the top side of the map is going to be what the Tribe Gaming crew are looking for most. Who is the, I guess, who is the real aggressor here? I feel like. Zeta Division Zero probably have a chance to pick something else with a decent amount of range. There's a lot of sharpshooters still on the board, I think, like you sort of pointed out here. But yeah, it's always a question of how you answer Buster. I've seen Ash do really well against Buster, but it's very map dependent, right? Whether that pick is going to make any sense or not. 
Yep, Antler as well. And it, it could just be simply a, an idea for Zeta to be able to try to utilize the gene when Buster doesn't have that shield ready available to hand. And I think as well, we saw their Otis potentially coming in. It was Otis, as yeah. well. So having the fat splatter to lay it down in the bushy areas to then try to seek out and destroy those coming the other way. Tribe just very slow to make sure they got the count ready, but they've failed to notice that the right hand side and Zeta are all in the mid now. So this is where the magic puffs are going to come in really handy on the side of Kuro. Since I knew exactly where he'd find Tom, it's beelines to the bottom part of the map, forces a gadget use out of that Eve there as well. Drop the base, comes out, but is removed pretty quickly. Dre is still a little bit worse aware in the back line, and that was a fat splatter to prevent Lenar from going over the top of the map. He's picked off now. Not a great start for Tribe EU. Dre's and Tom, they've lost the lion's share of their durability. How do they find the way out of this one? Kuru doesn't need to use their magic hand now. He can build towards it. This is very scary from Zeta Zero. Yeah, the perfect start. Really, and Tom can only just go to the gas oh. now to try to not feed into more. Deny the supercharge. Exactly that. The utility is so important in those early stages, as you rightly mentioned earlier. So by trying to deny that, it gives them the best possible chance. Strange has his super, Lanan has his, but they've already got to start to bring this back with the momentum. Could get on top of them. Tom gets his hatchlings. They're going to head straight in 10 size direction. In a couple shots, but really doing very little to furrow the brow of this Zeta Division Zero roster. Dre still maintains that Super Lenar needs to be very judicious about how he makes use of Montage here. It could be make or break in this round. Yeah, especially because Tribe need to wait this game out as well. Buster is going to struggle in these early moments, and Zeta know it. They're coming in now, and just like, I love that. The bait there from Kuru, just trying to the ruffle super. the feathers of yep. Tribe Gaming, and they're not falling for it just yet, though. Dre just got shield now, passing over to Lan. Great use of that as well. Be able to push everything back. But what is going to be the response? I like a fast splatter on the ground, though. It means that Tribe can't advance any further here. They use Montage, but for what? How do they capitalize on the extra control they've got on the map? They shield Lenar, they want to send him oh. forward, and they catch a Charpy! That can't have been expected at all! Magic Hand comes out, but Lenar says, talk to my head! The Fates don't want to listen. What a piece here on Knockout. Fantastic stuff. And so many in the crowd there just erupted. That is what they needed, but can they secure this game? Ultimately, it comes down to this round as to who takes the first one. Tensai has got that escape route there on the side of Janet, and look at them on the top. We're seeing Lanan having to just consider his position there as a Charpy closing in, but now thinking better of it. No fat splatters left for a Charpy here. So no real way to put that extra pressure on Lanar, maybe force him downward. Tensai, though, of course, has Crescendo again. Kuru flashing that super again and again. A constantly looming threat, but last round, it didn't get the value Zeta were looking for. Tom has got the egg as well. The hatchlings could be coming into play. A beautiful spooky popper there. Tensai to the front of it. No one HP, but the magic puff's coming in now. Lanar with the shield. Trying to find a position, but Shabby's behind. behind! What's he doing? He gets oh. the mute on Lanar! Can Lanar get away? Drace tries to body block for the Crescendo. Takes Tensai over the top. Zeta Division Zero explode off the flank from the Otis. And it will clinch that first round. The explosivity of this squad, you know, it's just like it, they come out of nowhere. And then as soon as they are in position, everyone just does what they need to get done. And blink and you miss it stuff. Tribe have got to get back into this game. They've had some moments here, which is more than we could say. First set, but still just a bit of a struggle to round these things off. Get a shield on Lanar, take space with that montage, get value out of the rest of your brawlers longer range damage. Okay, immediately drop the base, gets removed. Zeta really hoping to try and put the squeeze on Tribe early into the round. That still might be the case. Utility belt going to be used by Lanar, but he has to back away at Charpy, threatening. Tom has to use the gadget, but Tensai locks him up. Rage is so low, but this is where Lanan is trying to help him out. He does need to stop shooting and start healing, honestly, because it is a three versus two. You cannot forget that. Zeta are closing in. Everyone low. What a wipeout. Rough start to the round there. Again, it's going to be pretty tough in the early rounds against Zeta when they have those gadgets up, right? Like Fat Splatter, uh, a drop the base. All these are very annoying, and they take space away from you. You're a team that wants to group up as Tribe, so you're already naturally giving up a lot of ground. That is not what you want to see. Drage gets picked off there by Tensai, and this has gone all wrong for Tribe. Hatchling's up here for Tom. He wants to push up, but Tensai just knocks them aside. Two versus two here as Lenar has the durability. Oh, Zai's okay. low. Now Tribe have the advantage. A Charpy will be allowed to breathe, but for how much longer? Well, Lenar and Tom can take their time here. They'd like to get some utility ready for this next round, but also not feed in to the mute. 
such a strong mechanic for Rotus and can really make a big difference. I feel like it should still be trying to take this one, but we've seen crazy things occur in Knockout. You cannot count this one out. There is still the Fat Splatter also, and as they're bunched together, it could be some value there to be had. A Charpy can create a virtual one versus one, even in a 1v2 with that nuke here, so allowing him to build that up would be devastating. Duke as much as you can, a Charpy's caught in the gas. Yeah, he knows it's over. I think he's just gonna suck some of that down and move on to the next round. Now we come to a very crucial moment, because this round could determine a game for Tribe or a set for Zeta. And Tribe going on the right-hand side, but a bit of an early shield because they didn't quite anticipate that Zeta would do exactly what Tribe did in the previous round. Tribe went to the right last round, and Zeta clocked it. Now it's reversed rolls, and that was a bit of an investment that just didn't quite pay off for Tribe. Yeah. Tribe thought that they had the read on Zeta Division Zero. They couldn't have been more wrong. Now they're going to suffer for it. Dre's low. Hatchlings will not be coming out. Tom now wants to try and play the diagonal here, but he's going to be outranged to some degree. Lenart, shield plus super, pushing up Ooh. Ted's side. He's seen better days. Here it comes, the pinch on towards Zeta Division oh. Zero, and they get Kuru. Tensai, what's going to be left of his team when he drops back down to the ground? He's able to get Lenart, make the trade, but it's still a 1v2 as Tensai has it all to do. Beautiful pinch there between Drage and Tom, and the perfect moment to do so now. Tensai low, and it's looking good. But when he gets super, not going to happen. Drage. We'll get the final blow and Tribe starts to find themselves once more. A little bit of a blooper at the start of that round, right? Lenar tries to make a cool shot with that montage. Says, I reckon I know where they're going to be coming from. Maybe we can get some free damage and catch someone out. They have to play fair in the end, and it still works out. Even that use of uh, Janet Super, of course, crescendo across the map. Really not enough for Tensai. It all comes down to a final round here. Tom is really starting to get some really nice connections there. Getting that early start and just positioning moving forward. So, oh, look, an early takedown there. Tensai was the victim. It's a three versus two tribe yet yeah, coming back, just regrouping up and just, yeah, you've got to take these moments slow. You've got yourselves that early lead. Don't lose it. Definitely not expecting, I think, Lenar to be sending shots his way amongst those bushes. Underestimating the amount of damage that was bound to be coming his way. Kuru building a magic hand could be huge here. He and a Sharpie can quickly collapse, but it would absolutely precipitate an all-in from Tribe if they tried. Tribe are not likely to try and give up this early advantage that they have. Playing it safe though. Lenar around the corner, a Sharpie. He'll trade with, but Sharpie tries to take a fight. He cannot win. And Lenar punishes. And again, just stay clear from Kuru. Don't give him the magic hand before the next round. Just try to get that takedown there as Gas takes its toll. Now we are in for a real treat because Tribe, with the help of the crowd behind them, are already starting to make this work a lot, lot better. They cannot afford to drop this set. Again to the right-hand side for Tribe this time. No premonition from them. Tensai able to avoid a bit of that poke in the middle part of the map here. Kuru wary of Lenar, who is encroaching rapidly across that top side of the map. And Tom's getting full value, of course, out of that extra Eve utility. There's a lot on the line here for Tribe. They'd love to even up the series now after a difficult first set. Both these teams unwilling to give an inch. Kuru now with the magic hand, just off the back of that shot there. Oh, but a lovely spooky popper yet again for Tribe, and the takedown is swift. Three versus two, and Tom now just going to heal as well. But one pull from Kuru, and it's all level. Lenar gets a uh, barrier here. They're looking to go forward. Drake's got caught. Montage gets thrown out, but they can't trade. Try to find themselves in a 2v2 and they weren't able to get any value back in that exchange. A tough spot, a really tough one for Tribe, but it's... Oh, now the gas comes in though, and Dangerous. Lenan can then go to the right, but the magic hand comes in, the Malan blow as well, the heals. Oh, but the mute Tom has got to take the forefront of this. Oh, Kuru! Beautiful stuff! Say to Division Zero, turn it around into their favor against all odds. The Gene in the 1v2, that is absolutely stupendous. As Ada Division Zero now give themselves a real shot at taking a second straight series away. Tribe have to recover from this and quickly get their ducks in a row, otherwise this one's gonna slip through their fingers. Well, uh, look at this on the top of Chappy, yeah. Just starting to creep round Fast Splatter as well, looking everyone down. Lenan coming in with a shield, and I think that is the perfect time for it, but Magic Hand is available there as well. We can't 
He's going to count that one out. Ten silos got to be a bit cautious. He's been getting a bit low. The hatch is coming in soon for Tribe. They're going for Drage. He might be caught in the corner of the map here. Kuru has Magic Hand up as well. They'll be able to read Drage's position. Kuru's flashing it. He's in trouble. He gets sucked in. They're not trying to follow up though. It's not going to be enough. At three versus two. And it's all gone wrong for Tribe. Tom, the 2019 champion. Tom, the veteran. Now in a one versus three for the set. And a one versus two in terms of world champs, isn't it? Terrible predicament for Tribe, and there goes the set. State to Division Zero will take it. And now, two sets up. Will they secure it in a sweep? Or will Tribe start to fight this one back? Because Time Uber is running out. There can be no denying that Tribe have absolutely improved over the course of this series, but they're going to have to improve to the point where a reverse sweep is a must. That is not something you want to have to deal with. SCMN are able to do it, sure, but it takes a lot out of you. It's a long day for all of these teams. And my God, Kuru in that 1v2, that for me, that's the backbreaker. It's, a, it's such a terrible thing to have to look back on later when you can just see how close you really came to it, isn't it? But again, Zeta Division Zero, oh, that calculated squad with such discipline, such reserved characteristics that don't require big, boisterous body actions and loud shouting to make their stand. They just do it all through themselves and their thumbs and their skill. It just speaks for itself. Theta Division Zero looking across at the bracket of their sister team having already advanced. Here's that moment. The mute, of course, the posthumous mute coming out from Zeta Zero as it was a Charpy to connect that one is what allows Kuru to get the 1v2. Stunning stuff. Here are the stats as they stand. Both teams really competitive. I thought Drage looked very, very good on the Gus right? It's very hard to predict just how much burst you risk taking. If you're about to get hit by that fourth shot, Kooky Popper comes in, all of a sudden you're taking twice the damage you thought you'd be. Yeah, it's a brawler which we've seen a lot in the East Asia region, and Drage really just showing us how much value you can obtain from it. It's, it's you know, been a staple diet almost for Zeta, so I think it was smart as well for Tribe to pick that one up, and you know, it's a tough thing now for Tribe because they were so close, so close to making this all evened out. Now with two sets down, they will have to rekindle some magic. Often this year, they've been the victim of a lot of reverse sweeps themselves by being in the lead and then having their opposition turn it around. Well, today, it's looking closer, like they're going to have to start to learn how to do that more so themselves if this one keeps going the way it seems. This team, you thought, I mean, Tribe EU, they finally shaken the monkey off their back, right? They dispatched Na'Vi, who were the ones that knocked them out, uh, you know, last year, of course, a really disappointing end to their, their campaign. Getting a chance to go up against a team like Zayla Vision Zero, something that I'm, of course, equally excited about and also pretty scared of. This team brought the consistency in that EMEA region. Three monthly finals wins, three second place appearances. It's kind of the team that has everything in Europe, but everything may not be enough. Let's see now as we head into Sneaky Fields. It's a very aggressive game mode, as we know, and Sneaky Fields just seems to bring even more of that out of the mix with so many options in terms of brawlers and metas to consider and Tribe are not taking any chances. Banning out the Nita, not the first time we've seen that today. Banning out Surge and Max as well. Quite like those ideas because Surge ultimately could just gain so much you know, power yep. off the back of the assassination from the bush. Speaking of assassinations, Crow being banned out as Data Division Zero as well as the Otis and the Buster. Yeah, Surge also is extra frightening now because it's not just a matter of randomly like blinking forward. Obviously, Power Shield makes him excellent, really durable, a great 1v1 brawler. I like the M's lock in here, of course. It's going to be very, very important to try and keep tabs on where your opponents are. Of course, the Charisma will light up Zeta Division Zero if they're standing within that area of effect. Information is everything on Sneaky Fields. Yeah, exactly, and it's a great way to try to suppress as well. Especially if you can get the ball towards those goal-scoring opportunities. Lock them in their goal. Exactly. Yeah, really just lock everyone down and try to secure it when you've got the chance. So it's now coming in with something of their own. I like Carl here myself. What do you think about Gene with a vision gear on this map? It's a, it's a bit of a tricky one because it's, it's definitely definitely characteristically of them to do so. Sure. Um, it can just struggle a bit if you're aggressed, you know, but it can also deflate those moments. It can be a great thing to have in terms of goal scoring opportunities as well. Janet, yeah, and we've seen it in every set so far. And if it ain't broke, you know, why try and fix it? Uh, but then combining it with the Carl, I just don't know whether it's just simply a case that Tribe Gaming EU are not banning out some of these really heavy hitters that Zeta are, are just so dominant with. 
Yeah, Carl is obviously going to be a problem here. We've not really seen that many teams have a great answer to it. Teams have tried Daryl, teams have tried Ash, teams have tried highly durable, sort of uh, good close range damage brawlers to deal with it. But it's less about the Carl. And, and it's okay, so if you counter the Carl, quite likely you put yourself in a bad position against the rest of their brawlers, right? Because you're often dealing with long range or, you know, sharpshooter esque type brawlers. You have the answer to Carl, you often don't have it against your opponent. So the Gale here, decent answer to that tailspin all in. Yeah, I, I feel like Gale here is a great thing in Brawl to have. Ultimately, you know, in those moments where you are under pressure, you have got the ability to place the ball in the back pocket, put the twister on top of that ball as well. And, you know, if they were able to lock that into play, then it can deprive Zeta Division Zero of a goal and Ash. I love that here. We, we've seen already today, you know, with STMN just demonstrating the push potential of this brawler going and able just to you know, go head first into your opposition. There's very little you can do about that. This is an incredibly short range composition from Tribe Gaming EU. They really want to take advantage of the bushes as much as humanly possible. And Ash is a great answer to Kyle. Can absolutely stand up under that sort of 1v1 kind of pressure. And again, this is a team that, oh my goodness, the Bali. Okay, coming in against a, a, a team that doesn't really have the mechanisms to close the gap on him effectively. We had a little cheer as well from, <laughs> I, I assume, the Zays Division crew as, as the brawler came out. And I, I don't know, it's going to be a bit of a first for me, actually, to see a brawler like Barley in Sneaky Fields, in all honesty. But I quite like it. I mean, the Sticky Syrup Mix could be the gadget of choice yeah. with the Ash. So Trey will have to be cautious of that. I'm but so frustrated. Look at him. <laughs> oh, my. A lot of damage already on Ash. And OK, drop the base, going to make that even more annoying. Drage wants to try and move up here. Brief heal from him, but it's just not enough. He's going to be brought down. Last call thrown out by Kuru, and Lenar gets snared up. This pass is coming through for Kuru. Betray's just about getting off the line there. Tom, very low and does quickly go down. It is Zeta Division Zero now pushing forwards and starting to lock down Tribe into their own spawn. Betray's is just feeding into Kuru as well. It's just actually working out fantastically well as a pick. Considering to go for the ball, thinking better of it, this getting Tom taken down, but Zeta are locking everything down. Tribe aren't ready for this. They were not ready for this last pick barley. Even with Chill Pill, Drace does not have the healing to keep him up. There's no way that he's actually safe from Kuru. And in the inverse situation, Kuru backs up. Sticky Syrup Mixer, if that's what he has available, some help from Tensai, you name it. Zeta Division Zero have it. The ball's stuck in that corner for the time being, but a Achapi doesn't mind. He takes down Tom throughout, costing Charisma. A Achapi not quite healthy enough to convert the goal here, and Drace needs to pocket it. Yeah, they've got to slow this one down, haven't they? Tribe are just trying to get out of the spawn, but they've got to start to work better as a unit to do so. It's, it's interesting, isn't it, how we look across regions, you know, North America and Latin North would choose a Lu to counter the Ash. In East Asia, the Barley, and it is working, but if Trage can just start to push through and try to get a takedown, it, it's a struggle. It really is a struggle for him to do much about this situation. Tom, now the one suffering the pressure from Kuru. He's been an absolute nightmare. Tensai giving a bit of space here, and that's all Zeta Division Zero need to do. Back up a little bit, play it slow. They know they're going to have their opportunity. It's centered around Drage being off the map. That needs to happen here. The are obviously threatening Gale Force at the moment. Sharpie expecting it, but durable enough to deal with it if he's the only target affected. Drop the base again means that Drage cannot sneak up through that bush. They're always keeping tabs on this Ash. But it must feel like playing with one hand behind your back. Uh, he just hasn't been able to get into the position where he can start to thrive. Zeta Division Zero know that if they were to do that, they'd leave an open door that Tribe would surely be walking through. But I think it's a wise call just to leave the ball for now. They've just got to survive this one, get into an overtime scenario and try to make something of it there. Not a terrible move. Try first, want to try and clear the way. Double Gale Force connection from Lenar. A second super use there, but he's caught in the corner. Overtime comes up at an opportune moment as Lenar's able to pick himself up and walk on away. Tom recovers the ball here. Tensai definitely able to stay out of the range of that gas. But there it is, Lenar's able to pressure him down. Drage wants to move up the map here. A Chappie and Kuru into defense. Drage is healthy, he wants to try and oh! the He slots it in the bottom left. What a finish. Imagine that. You're pretty much absent for the entire game, and then you come in to score the most important moment. What a time to capitalize for Tribe. And against all odds, I didn't see that one coming. There's no margin of error here for Tribe Gaming. They have to win this set. There's no more freebies left. And the strategy was perfect. Wait it out, suffer the punishment, the pain, and then deliver it tenfold.
Gonna have to make a repeat of that, and now Zeta Division Zero. They're wise to these shenanigans. Maybe they push a bit harder now. Chappy has got the flying hook, remember, as well, and everyone's starting to line up. We would surely get a lot of value for it. Didn't choose to go for it. Tensai takes the skies now to just try to get everyone whittled down a little bit lower. Kuru Little alone juking around this wonderfully there. As Tom's trying to find him out. Oh, Sticky Syrup Mix are coming down as well. He's still going! Kuru can't be stopped. Another last call available here. Dre's trying to use that speed gear as well as possible through these bushes. Still going to get pressure down. A Chappy keeping tabs on him. He's gone as well. Twister using that corner to make it so Zeta cannot capitalize on their map control yet, but try by getting taken down one by one out of sport. I can't wait to see some of the stats of this game because the amount of damage output for this one as Zeta just continue to cycle in all the time, raining down damage, and just whittling away at the Rage. HP. Drace, yeah, going to take away down to 519 HP and somehow still going there, but... How, how much longer can Tribe keep this up? If they're going to go with the same strategies the last game, they've got to take this to overtime again. Yes, it's going to be exhausting. It's going to be another minute straight of dodging and weaving, ducking, diving, and dodging. <laughs> That's a lot of these. Back to back, Tribe have been coming in. They need a W. They've, they've got to start to get some aggression. They've got to get their utility ready if it is the overtime play which they need. It's more if they're not, it's just Zeta all over. Raining it down. Drage in a good spot now, but again, just keep the ball back. No sticky syrup mixes left for Kuru now. Drage has a window and opportunity to start to close the gap. Not on this life, though, as Kuru just serves him one up in person. That's nasty stuff. And now going to be forced to back away again. Remember, that ball has not left the back corner. That's part of the plan here for Tribe. Lenan going down there. He does need to be in the mix for a twister. They've got 20 seconds to utilize it. You can get that bang on top of the ball, but it is a much harder thing to do. Now in 15 seconds, this was the moment the Tribe sprung into action last time. Are they going to start to spring into action this time? They're getting some good positioning power, but the ball is still back. Nice double stun! What an opener there from Lenar! And yes, Achampi tries to move up. This will at least guarantee Tribe a chance to get the ball and start to move it up the map here. The big question is, does Lightning strike twice? Can Tribe get away with this again? Well, Tenzai now will be healing, as he'd love to be able to Really help his team with this range and also going into the Chappy. Beautiful takedown. Drage keeping his HP juking wonderfully. If he closes in enough for a shot, no. He went for the super and pulled better of it. Yeah, gets taken down there. Little help is not getting any value either. Gale Force here for Lanar, but there's no architecture to knock people into. 30 seconds left here. Caustic Charisma, an option for Tom, but he's going to be outranged at every turn. 24 seconds left in the round. The tension starting to reach fever pitch. It's only Drage now against three. Is Bali still pressuring him out in the open? Nanar thinking about recovering the ball here. Gale forced to buy himself a little bit of room. There's 12 seconds left in the round and he's lost the ball. Here comes the Chappy. Oh! oh! Super shot, no connection. Kuru gets it there though. How has he got that in? And this time around, Tribe's bag of tricks ends up being empty. How do Zeta find these angles? It's just like they're building up blocks where there aren't any. It's like, it, it's <laughs> incredible stuff. And you can just see there, you know, Nat from Tribe and John as well, and everyone on the edge of their seats. But it is dwindling. This will come down to this next game. Tribe for a set, Zeta Division Zero for it all. Tribe have been counterpicked. There's no two ways about it. So now they need to hope their mechanics, their game sense can carry them through, but that is a big ask. And Kuru, it's a special delivery! One serving of goal for Zeta Division Zero. They are moments away from moving up to the semis. Maximum pressure now, and it's a big mountain to climb. The four of us, we banned the goals on top of it. The tribe are going to need to stay alive this year. Or well, they'll be going home. Drage clears up the left-hand side. This is the best approach we've seen so far in the game for Tribe pushing forwards. Tom with some great connections, but Shappy is the last man standing. Oh! Drage there, ready to receive. Three versus one. Kuru going to be forced back into goal, and Tom slots it. This one ain't over yet. What a response. It took a while to get there, but now Tribe realizes that they just cannot sit back any longer. They've got to start to play Zeta Division Zero at their own game. What? Caustic, beautiful value for Tom. And Chappy, oh, the friend zone as well, knocks him back. Drake's still going. Drake is healthy enough, took a chill pill now, looking to move up, but drop the base could be an issue. Lenar! It's Lenar to keep Tribe alive. Two sets to one in the European hope. Let's to fight another set.
The reactions of the crowd are just something else, aren't they? You can see it in their eyes and how much it means to them. But on the stage, nothing less than composure as they realize it's starting to gain some momentum here for them. But, you know, Zeta Division Zero are keeping them under such scrutiny. It, it really is a question of survival. This was a great moment from Drage. Two versus one, and he just slots it right into the perfect moment there in that corner pocket. Well, this is an oft overlooked part of Brawl Stars here, especially with the pick and ban phase now. That if you lose that phase, if you get counted, you still need to try to find a way to win. You don't get to just switch up your composition. Yeah, painful goal there from Kuru. You can see Tribe really on the edge of their seats here. Just an incredible finish. This one was a walk-in. This is when we thought it might all be over. The equalizer was huge. Finally, Tribe showing some of that aggression, showing they actually had the damage. <laughs> needed to win it. See us, we're very much involved as well. Look at the gale force to knock Kuru back to make it impossible for him to save it. These stats are disgusting. Tribe had zero business winning this set. <laughs> I mean, I did say that coming into that game, I really was looking forward to seeing how this was going to fare. 21 takedowns for Tenso, 11 for Kuru. I mean, put everything that Tribe fished out together and compare it. It, it just is mind boggling they were able to get that win. Whew. A chance to breathe here, of course, and for Tribe to try and reconvene around their next draft. They survived Brawl Ball, yes, but only barely. And there's much more series to be played. Zeta Division Zero are still poised to make their way into the semi-finals. Tribe are gonna have to dig deep. I've got to say as well, looking back at the replay, that, that beautiful pass through, it just like got the perfect pass angle off the back of the wall to their teammate on the side of Zeta. It was just wonderful stuff. But as we go now into Hard Rock Mine, the pressure is not off of Tribe at all. They've got to win this set. There is nothing left to say. If they lose this set, they are out. Tom of the early draft coming in with Stu. The bands were Squeak, Buzz and Crow on the side of State Division Zero, banning out the Otis, the Ruffs, and the Buster. Tribe Gaming now looking definitely to their coaching staff to give them smooth sailing through this pick and ban phase. Hard Rock Mine, an absolute classic, ladies and gentlemen. What a game to potentially take us either to match point or see Zeta Division Zero advance. Stu here for Tom. But pretty annoying to get rid of that speed zone based on the architecture of the map, but Max brings some acceleration of her own. So 8-bit ban and Tribe do love to play it in mid here. I've got to feel like that one should be coming up. Rico's open. Yeah, Rico lane as well. I mean, that would be the icing on the cake, really, wouldn't it, for Tribe? And it is going to be the 8-bit. I wonder, I wonder whether it be the Rico too. We know that Zeta Division Zero would love to. Yeah, I mean, love this. Yeah, I really do. So all these deployables are going to be really hard to destroy, just based on the way the map's structured. Zeta Division 2 have to really push aggressively to sort of get rid of the damage and get rid of the speed zone. So those will uh, be helping Tribe in a big way. We know just how scary Rico is in the side lane. Bouncy Castle gives him the sustain. And of course, the trick shots are very, very frightening to deal with. But the Poco, always a threat here. Very different composition, very different approaches from these two teams here. Everyone always sleeps on Poco, but Zeta Division do not. I've seen them play in scrims a great, great deal. And we've seen just the effectiveness, haven't we, of Max in Gem Grab. I mean, it was Chasmac Gaming EU that just demonstrated how much you can just turn a game that's completely against you on this side and you know, gain those gems and speed out. There's literally nothing you can do. So I feel like for Tribe, they're going to be very, very cautious to not fall into that trap. Protective Tunes has been huge, right? That invulnerability window is very important for anyone benefiting from that Poco gadget. And then Screeching Solo can really nail you through some of these walls. I wonder what Lena. All right, looking to set up on this left-hand side, maybe yeah, get some value out of the damage. Amplify Kuru is low, Tom's trying to punish him. And he goes down, Ten side picks up that free gem. Now looking to walk on away. Everyone running that speed gear, except for Tom. He's running the vision gear as well. One singular Rico bounce, and that's gonna really help him out a lot. Dre's just thinking about shooting and Gonna take a little bit of a screeching solo there as well. Chappie's getting to a dangerous position here. Drake's gonna have to be very, very cautious. Placing pressure on the Tensai as well. Kuru goes down. Tom now able to advance onto him, and he's got a super ready. Bouncy cast for healing, but you know, Tensai's in a tough spot there. Absolutely. Keep an eye on Lenar, by the way. He has breakthrough, not speed zone here. So when he wants to go aggressive, he can crash through these walls and try and 
wrest the gems away from someone like Tensai if they're not ready for it. Here comes Kuru pushing up. Tensai also going to be there. Drage has to use the cheat card. Rodin just gets out alive. Fighting for Tom, pretty scary prospect. He had the bouncy castle up. That forced Zeta Division Zero away. But Tensai eventually gets rid of him. Lenan, Drage pushed back, couldn't do anything about it. Breakthrough attempted to be used there, but a Chompy stays him off with the salty barrel. Connection there from Tom wasn't really there. He would like to have got far more of it. And Kuru with the pickup is going to leave Drage and Lenan alone to push this. And Drage is such a slow and sluggish brawl without that damage booster down. It's realistically only going to be Lenan for a reset here. And He's nowhere near the situation with two way. versus one. It's just simply not going to happen. Face it for days and ten sides, safe and sound. Save Division Zero. Move on to match points. Tom could not get himself out of the bottom left part of the map to help with that retake. And frankly, Tensai was untouched for the majority of that round. He was forced back for a time by Tom on the right hand side. Lenar needs to be able to connect with this too. He needs to be able to get to his targets. He's not called an assassin for nothing. It's now or never. Here we go. A much better start. Lana already owning that right hand side lane and putting immediate pressure onto the left as Trajan Tom just working to get that pinch, but Trajan would need to get that damage booster down. He's going to have any chance of being able to contest the mid and cheat cartridge out if needed. Good taps there from him. Lana waiting his timer. Tommy's here we go. A little bit more here. Good pressure on Kuru. Screeching solo used there. Lana able to withstand for the time being. Let's go for Tensai, it's going to send Kuro Karini on a collision course with Drage, who tries to use the cheat card just to get away. They're coming for him! Drage can't get back, Kuru finds his mark! Tom will try and ward him away, but Kuru seems largely unperturbed. He'll drop his gems in enemy territory, though. Lenar wants to go aggressive, but he can't catch Tensai, and Achapi playing a great bodyguard here. I love that from Tom, taking no chances and leaving the gems for Drage to pick back up. And now, look at the positioning power that Drive have been able to establish here. Bouncy Castle again, one more gadget, I believe, left still for Tom. Trying to get the angle between himself and Drage. Six gems now for Tribe. Kuru takes Tom down. Lenan has got to push forwards, but he can't. He's too scrutinized, too low on HP. And the truly ball coming in from Kuru, keeping to keep, keep Tensai going in the mid. Let's go, ready for Zeta. Six to six in gems. A couple more spawning in the middle, but Tensai doesn't need to worry about them for the time being. Lenar gets cut down by Kuru. Tom trying to dodge away from these turret shots. And Drage has to shed up a very defensive damage booster. Lenar goes in, pressure on Kuru. He has the crescendo up, and of course going to go for a gadget pop. Drake oh! doesn't expect it. Kuru sends him flying, and Tom has to look on. Tom's just trying to race Tensai to the other end of the map. Tensai realizes he can't hide any spawn. Ten seconds remain. Try and have to do something now. Drake goes down. It's just Lenan and Tom, and it's going to be a takedown. Tensai have nothing left. Three seconds. All. It's not going to be enough for Tribe Gaming EU as they to Division Zero move on to the semi-finals. Heartbreak for Tribe EU. Dre's with his head in his hands for a moment there. His first sort of full year, I guess, on a professional Brawl Stars roster, and he'd hoped for so much more. Such a valiant fight against Zeta Zero. This team have looked frightening every match they've played so far, and they almost had this over in three. The heroics of Tribe kept them in it, but heroics just aren't going to cut it against a team of this kind of calibre. That's two for two on Zeta Division rosters in the semis. I mean, every month this year, it's come down to Zeta Division Zero and Zeta Division One. It would be fitting for it to happen on the world stage as well. I'm just gonna throw that one out there early, but maybe getting ahead of ourselves, but this is the first step forwards and a big leap for Zeta Division Zero as again yesterday, arguably looking a bit weaker today, finding out some of those issues and looking very, very dominant. We're running low on European hopes here. Ark, it's been a tough day at the office for the EMEA region. And here are your stats at the end of Gem Grab. You see Lenar on that stew, really trying to do what he could to pressure down a Charpy. Tensai, rather, of course. On that max, just a little bit too hard to catch. And Kuru was the blunt object, the Poco running it down mid. More often than not, able to put this pressure on Drage, pressure on Tom, make it impossible for Tribe to get any map control to build off of. Wow, it's, it, it's dominant, isn't it? Kuru had such a great game. He really did. Eight takedowns and Dre struggling a bit to really like finalize the kills, hoping for the aggressiveness of Tom and Lenan to come in and pick up uh, 
when they were on low HP. But you know, like you said, you know, EU hope is dwindling so so quickly. I mean, there's a very big possibility that we'll have an entirely East Asia and North America <laughs> semi-finals. And let's not, let's not discount the possibility earlier, though, it is that we have an all East Asia final as well, if no one can figure out how to answer any of these Zeta Division teams. Take a breath, ladies and gentlemen. Tough one, of course. Tough pill to swallow for Europe. But they still have a hope left in the game. And Tribe, as it happens, also still have something left to work with. Before we move on and talk about our next match here, the question is, what team? can stop either of these Zeta Division Zero teams. Is it too much to expect for even one of these Zeta teams to be brought down now? STMN have the tough job in that first semi-final, and now we're about to find out who has it in the second. Well, Tribe giving an A, SK Gaming. Uh -huh. I mean, this is deja vu a little bit here. Two of the Titans. It's such an enjoyable one to watch every time. Tell us about this rivalry a bit more. We get to flesh this out because when I looked at Zulan, Zulan had this intense stare on his face all day. He's like, man, we are not, we cannot, we will not lose this game. Yeah, he, he was asking us what our predictions were and we were honest, but at the same time, you know, go back to 2021 in that World Finals, the first round, it was Tribe Gaming NA versus SK Gaming. Okay, to be fair, a slightly different roster back yes. then. It was Semantic with uh, their Jetton Jet as well and Skyrex. Skyrex. So we've got to bear that in mind, but it was one of the biggest upsets. It was the first match and no one could believe it. But now this year with MSI, you know, we saw it, didn't we? It was such an emotional roller coaster for both teams. And Tribe, you know, had to try to muster something up in the fifth and final set, which they couldn't, which meant that SK Gaming went in to the grand finals to face Zeta Division 1. That's right. And now, of course, let's have a look at the journey so far from Tribe, because I think we really want to set the stage here. Again, it's a rivalry being renewed. SK uh, striking the most uh, recent blow, I guess you could say. Uh, we saw Tribe go up against the Na'Vi. They did look themselves. I think that's like the safest way to put it. MMA, obviously, uh, showing up there. Uh, well, we've previously been seeing a slightly different look at that roster. Still a lot of energy for Tribe because it was uh, important for them to sort of you know, get rid of this Na'Vi team who looked threatening on paper. Yeah, they, they looked very, very strong. There's no doubt about it. And many teams were saying just how strong Na'Vi were looking and how much expectations they had of that particular team. But Tribe Gaming NA just made it look very straightforward, very composed, very cautious, but some smart drafts I did love this Sprout draft in Dueling Beetles. There was just no wall break on the side of Navi, and in that respect, they just maybe overestimated their draft a little bit. It was such a close one. Yeah, I mean, Navi not really able to do anything to approach. So MMA on that Crow pick, we knew what the idea he was going for, but he never had sidelines. Let's move across and talk about Tribe's opponents in this matchup, SK Gaming. Look, I think they draw probably, you know, on paper the weakest team here at the Brawl Stars World Finals. Look, I don't think that's being insulting. Reconic had so many issues in order to just even be here in the first place, right? So it was great to see them representing here. Uh, SK didn't really go easy on them uh, at all. Yeah, not at all. We just saw the same aggressiveness on stage that SK Gaming is so known for. Again, louder than the, sta than the arena, more than not. But um, the question for me is, like, were they tested enough? You know, because we saw Tribe against a team that had a great reputation in the EMEA region. So coming into this one, they're going to have to really go back and remind themselves that this is Tribe Gaming NA that they are facing. Yeah, it's a question, right, for SK. Like, how much of a warm-up did that matchup sort of function as? Yes, they can get acclimated to being on stage and sort of, you know, Semantic was still, sc still screeching his head off, by the way, at one player on the other side uh, of the field. But again, that's him, that's his energy. You know, don't take anything away from him. But for Tribe here, I know, there's a lot on the line. There's a score to be settled, a grudge, and they'd love to be the one that could take a tilt at Zeta Division in that semi-final. I can't wait to bring them out here. The energy is really starting to fill the room, so let's not waste any time. Let's go meet our first team in this match. And we're there. There's a lot of noise on the scene. Is it always hot? It doesn't stop. We're still there. Another one. Match de ce premier round avant d'avancer dans les demi-finales et je crois qu'on va la faire comme tout à l'heure parce qu'il y a beaucoup de supporters en anglais. On va la faire en anglais celle-là encore une fois. One tribe fell, one tribe remain. Are we ready for the second one? Tribe Gaming and Tribe looked phenomenal on day two as breaking the will of Navi is no easy feat, but it was convincing. Zulan as Livy, Tyrant and Corey 
have excelled themselves this year, but this matchup doesn't come without its fair share of history and raw emotion. At MSI earlier this year, we saw SK Gaming prevail in this very matchup, but that's exactly why for Tribe this is personal. They now have the chance, a fresh slate, to take back control of their destiny. This is their big shot at redemption. And this Tribe team brings Ezlivy in as that young gun, that real talent. Corey now moves into more of a coaching, more of a sort of analytical role on this team. Tribe now have an incredible back of house staff. Let us now bring out their opponents in this rivalry match. Et les adversaires, évidemment, je suis un peu pris en otage, je suis exactement là où les supporters sont là. On va la refaire en anglais aussi. We know what's the next team, right? We see all of them. We ready? SK Gaming! For SK Gaming, this matchup is their ultimate rivalry. Semantic, Guille, Ikeos and Pedro won't be underestimating their opposition, but they do have the luxury of being able to reflect back to MSI where they secured the win over Tribe to make those grand finals. Historically, the world finals haven't been kind to SK, but today they are looking to step out of that trend and show the whole world why they deserve to go all the way. SK Gaming is a name steeped in tradition, history, pride, and legend. So many incredible names have been under this banner flying, and this time it was semantic to brandish it in front of the crowd and their foes. This SK Gaming squad have unmatched land experience as far as the rest of their region goes, but out here, it's all to be settled. They absolutely wanted to go up against a team like Tribe. He wanted to serve them up two consecutive L's. And don't forget, this SK Gaming team is a super team, right? You bring together the best teams in Europe, the SK Gaming of the day, AC Milan Clash. You say, we want to create not just a Europe beater, we want to create a world beater. And across the Atlantic, their rivals pop up now, Tribe Gaming. This match has got everything. Yeah, this is the grudge match that we all wanted to see on the world stage. At MSI, it was SK Gaming that prevailed, but in this scenario, it's a, like I said, it's a clean sheet for Tribe to bring it around and remind us that they've still got exactly what it takes to go all the way here. So much history between these two teams and you know, again, with the amount of energy on the side of Tribe Gaming NA, combining that with the energy of SK Gaming, it's gonna be nothing short of fireworks. SK Gaming are the last EMEA team remaining in the composition. The last hope of that European region. So proud. A big region for Brawl Stars. The biggest, in fact. And this is it. They fly the flag for that entire continent now against this tribe team. Remember, SK Gaming are also looking ahead at this game. They're looking at Zeta Division 1 saying, we want that rematch too. We want all the rematches. That MSI lost that five set series. We want to run that back in seven this time around. So it's crazy to say that SK Gaming aren't even looking at the top of the mountain across the stage. They're only halfway up, baby. <laughs> but it would be, you know, it would be reminiscent of what we saw at MSI if that were the case. And I, for one, can kind of see it. I mean, Tribe Gaming NA's, you know, performance towards the end of the season, it did start to dwindle. You know, it did start to close down just a little bit with some poor performances. You know, September was a loss in the semi-finals. To Vatra. To Vatra, yeah. October in the quarters. Yeah. To Obey Alliance of all teams, who, who they've said sort of, hey, we actually have trouble with Obey Alliance. I mean, the team obviously not representing here, but one you should definitely check out if you if you want to look closer at the NA and LATAM North region. Here it is, Tribe Gaming NA versus SK Gaming. We've said it multiple times. It's a grudge match. There's a lot of history here, and we're about to watch that all simmer to the surface. Well, the poll was slightly in favor there of SK Gaming, but we saw it be in favor of Tribe Gaming EU in the previous series against Zeta Division Zero, and we know how that one turned out. So the bands are in, and Zeta, uh, sorry, Tribe Gaming NA bringing in, or battling out the Janet, the Sprout, and the Buster for SK Gaming, battling out the Carl, which I think is a, a wise choice there, Penny, and the Piper. To the best map type for Tribe NA, they love their bounty. 
They like to play it slow, steady. They're methodical in their approach to this map. But SK Gaming have been often accused of the same thing. And Bounty is their second best game type. But a 61% win rate. The Tick, no surprise to see him. An absolute staple. The kind of brawler you're not willing to use a band slot on, but you'll more than happily scoop up if you get first pick. It could, though, encourage some aggression on the side of Tribe Gaming and a something to try to overthrow it. it. It's great when you've got control and when you have your opposition on the ropes, but ultimately, if you're the one being pushed against that back wall, it's pretty tough to get out of it. Tribe going to bring in Gene. The healing, of course. And the magic hand is such a game turner, especially, especially in Bounty. It's a, a case of just choose the stars that you want to add to your collection, isn't it? To combine it, though, definitely some lane aggression is going to be needed. But that's why I feel like Tribe battling out the, the Sprout is quite, quite important here. They, really a bit out of position. They don't want to take the risk to have it played against them in the scenario, but I think range is going to be quite key. Brox, Bells, Hyvis banned out here, so Ruff's going to come in as well for some early support. I just want to point out that Gina Zulan's most played brawler this season. He's 8-2 and two on it, uh, so really favours coming into sets like this one and snapping up that Gene straight away. You can see why many plays have been made by many teams with that exact brawler. And the Ruffs is just incredible. <laughs> this is very, very powerful. Uh, again, uh, really imp important to have some sort of wall break if you have a composition that wants to sort of take advantage of that. So that might inform the next pick here for Tribe Gaming NA. Ruffs just incredibly well-rounded brawler. SK are gonna get to lock in two, one after another, and yeah, no surprise here. This Otis pick really favored by them. Gear loves that. Maybe Bonnie here as well, because SK would love to have something to really go into those moments of weakness. It's a big favorite pick, and with the roughs on the side. It's a good gear pick as well. Yeah. He wants to go there. Yeah. With the roughs as well, they can't really go in with the B that they would normally like to take in. The sandbags, Rico. I mean, you know, it's SK. It's like chaos. It, I mean, if anyone can make that brawler work the right. hardest on leg cake, it's going to be him. All I think is Lola Penny Rico for this guy. Absolutely devastating brawler selection, so. No shock to see Chaos pick that up on stage. You can see very reserved he is. He knows uh, what kind of mountain they're going to be looking to climb. So this now makes sense, right? Maybe now we understand why there's some wall break uh, getting used. It also is going to reduce the effectiveness of Chaos on that side lanes as we get later and later into the round. So I'm really interested to see how the wall break abilities are going to be used in general. When they come out, obviously, as Livy has the option to use that as part of Gadget, whereas for Ruffs, it's baked into the super. And having everything opened up for Zulan just to be able to really get his super back as quickly as possible. Absolutely. And land it. Got to land those supers. Quick early break from his leaving on the left-hand side. And here we go. The crowd is screaming in the background as they be breaking up the mids there with the rocket fuel. That's the second one he's used just to allow some visibility there. I don't think Tribe are going to have trouble getting Zulan charged up here because SK Gaming are trotting across the field right now. Blue Star in the hands of Semantic. Gear making it hard to advance. Is Livy getting pressure down heavily? Fat Splatter there as well to put the Brock out of commission for the time being. Tyra needs to be wary now as Semantic starts to encroach. They are getting pushed back just a little bit too much for my liking. And oh, that's good to have some Semantic. Ultimately, he is a real issue if he gets into that close proximity in the spawn side area. But Ikeos has Super as well. Tickhead coming out, taking down very, very quickly. Tribe know just how much that gear. Thickhead coming into play. They've got to be really communicative around that situation. SK back up almost to avoid trying to give Zulan too much charge, but he does have the hand now. This is such a classic way for this to play out. We're in under a minute. There's only one star to SK's name. And it's the only one that matters right now. That's oh, the hand. That's the blue star. Semantic sent back packing. You got one chance. You've got to make it count. And Zulan got the connection. The spawn was there, but the time is now on the side of SK and the momentum push towards the spawn. One singular takedown is all it will take. And I chaos, no more utility left on the gadgets. In fact, there's only just the one left or a couple of GA, but that is it. 20 seconds now. They've got to make a push. Magic Puffs keeping the top up good. Zulan has yet another magic hand. Tickhead's going to be taken down as it approaches. As Livy ah! starting to threat towards the middle. Semantic again gets taken down. Uncharacteristic. Gia just dodges the hand. But it doesn't matter. Tribe Gaming have the lead they were looking for. They'll take the first round. Yes. <laughs> the amount of overwhelming support here for Tribe Gaming NA.
But nonetheless, it is the first one. They've got to keep that level of consistency as we know that SK are a team that when they are pushed into a corner, they really do bite back. An early fast splatter there for Semantic. Moving forwards then for the Blue Star and having that high ground, so important to have. So I absolutely understand why SK wants to really establish that early control. And we know that SK like to slow the game down, right? That's always been their trademark. But that's a real problem when you give Gene time to build up that magic hand and you aren't in position to try and get a trade or make up for that loss of stars. Zulan again, posturing aggressively here. Oh. He can't be far away from that. Look how low SK are. This is about to get ugly. Avert your eyes if you're squeamish, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the connection as well to Zulan on the magic hand. Follows things up as well. I just felt that's going to be an absolute team wide, but I think actually SK Gaming got off a little bit scot-free, but it wasn't... Yeah, lucky. Yeah, yeah. Just the three stars there really now separating these two teams. But this control has all been with Tribe Gaming. They've been dominating that side of this game, and SK have got to take some of this back, remove some of that control, and start to confirm some of these kills. Semantic's already gone through all of his fat splatters now, so forget about those. Chaos, though, obviously has a little bit of that healing available via Bouncy Castle. Rocket Rain again is going to force that Otis back in the mid. Gear dancing around those incendiary fields. As Livy giving him the hot foot now, but it's going to be Chaos going down. Semantic's in trouble as well. He might not realize it, but he bloody well should. Pressure from Tyrant here. Poke damage gets the job done. Eight to one, and SK have almost no way of getting back outside of a full team wipe, and that doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon. It's happening again, isn't it? Tribe giving an A are just looking so, so good. I mean, how often do we ever see SK Gaming with one star in Bounty with 15 seconds remaining? Have they even got a chance to bring this back? There's a lot of stars in the map, but they, they've got no time now to push this. Unless Chaos can get a lovely lineup here, it's possible. Puffs, magic Not puffs. now, not now. This That's is it. all Tribe Gaming in A. What a first set. What a statement. Not even within the same postcode, RSK Gaming right now. <laughs> Tribe NA <laughs> looking clean as a whistle. A great opener, and again, they're happy for the pace of play to be slowed down. Like we said, they've, they've got that gene semantic. Just walking into a couple of traps one too many times. Chaos, we got excited about his Rico. It does not deliver. Yeah, it was a, a pick which is absolutely characteristic of SK Gaming, but didn't quite get the value which they were looking for. It was funny as we were sort of passing Tribe in the corridor, I said to them, you know, you know, SK are one of those teams where you can either choose to play passively like they do and give yourself a chance that way, or you just go super aggressive. It just feels like Tribe giving an A went for the latter here today, and so far it's working out. Well, SK are stirred on the stage. They're not looking themselves. We know SK could bark. They were doing it yesterday against a single opponent. But where's the bite? They come out with absolutely no stars over the entirety of that bounty set. I mean, Tribe Gaming, it's not even close, it's a steamroll. This is one of the very best teams in the world, the team that stands against Tribe NA more often than not. You see the looks on, <laughs> on I Chaos's face. These guys have got to get into the game. They're going to do it quick. This is only a best of five. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what you had for lunch, Uber, but SK have got a lot of donuts if you're hungry. <laughs> Semantic, Key, and I Chaos all with nothing to show for themselves. It was entirely Tribe, that whole entire set. And this is the kind of thing that can really throw you off before you even start to get going. SK have got to find a way to get into this game or they might be left behind. I feel like they had some good early pressure, SK Gaming. There was one point where they forced Tribe Gaming back into their own spawn. But Tribe always threatened Magic Hand. And they also said, well, if you don't pressure now, we'll just top ourselves back up, Magic Puffs and that natural healing, and then we'll come straight at you. Gem grab here, double swoosh coming up. Get a couple of picks. Uh, that could be really devastating on this map. We've already seen Buster try it uh, you know, on this one in the past. Amber, definitely one that teams have gone for. Obviously, uh, you have the option to go for stuff that's a little bit longer range. So Amber, yeah, looks like she got banned away there pretty much straight away, as did Buster and Pan. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, for me, Tribe Gaming and A in the North America and Latin North region really do understand just how much value Amber can get on this particular map, but it's going to leave things open a lot for Oh, still some aggressive brawlers, but I think B here is a shout. I mean, they've got a you know, really draft in Gene here for SK, I feel. I mean, they would be the ones to normally go for Bo. They banned it out. It's screaming out to me, especially off the back of what we just witnessed in the first set, but they're going to go with Penny. I mean, it is what they would tend to go with here, but it's going to leave the door so wide open for Tribe to draft in a Gene. And again, we know that Zulan just loves to do that. 
He's 9 in 2 now on Gene in sets if you want to count that last match. <laughs> Outside of what we've already seen from them as well in this tournament. And again, uh, Penny's one of uh, Ikaos's most played brawlers this season. Definitely likes to go in that direction. We know why she's powerful. Uh, she's really much more versatile now with Salty Barrel. Versatility's fine. I just want to see SK Gaming show a little bit of, I don't know, lethality. Maybe sharpen those teeth a little bit. Max coming in, such an aggressive play to have available in the back pocket. Coming in at the, just the right time, stash the gems away, take away all that momentum in one single play. But surely, surely they've got to back this up with Gene now. And Max and Gene, as we know, is like such a wonderful pairing to have. It's There's almost nothing you can do about it when uh, you know, Gene gets speed boosted at you with that magic hand. Yeah. Just, just forget about it. It's cake and ice cream, isn't it? It's, yeah. a, you know, it's not a healthy snack, but they go with Janet. Okay, I don't mind it. The leaving things are yeah, So why do you think that they are sort of waiting for this last pick? Do you think they might be trying to anticipate something weird and wacky from SK and maybe if they don't get that, they, they add the genie? But seeing Gene pick last would be bizarre. Unless the plan for SK is to have a penny lane, you know, but could could work. Salty Barrel especially, you know, can really get those quick interactions if you're running into someone that you don't expect. Maybe they just want to see whether SK's strategy is going to evolve to be that brawler. It could be a weaker idea. Carl, they're going to come in and that's... It's, it's Max or Janet for a lot of teams, right? They take like a really safe, like really decent mid to longish range mid that has evasion, yeah. right? A uh, super Ooh. that allows them to get out of trouble. Crow here for SK Gaming. My goodness. Maybe they're looking at what they've seen so far and going like, you know, slowing Toxin might be huge. It really sets us up for gear to go in, engage with Flying Hook, Tailspin. They can get just one tick of that poison onto a gem carrier. That can ruin Tribe's day. I feel like it's, it's I don't want to say it's got to be a gene, because <laughs> ultimately, Tribe giving an A might yeah, bring something out of the source, yeah. yeah, I mean, they, this is exactly where you want to bring in those ideas into the world stage and keep everyone guessing. Can you just outrange this, perhaps? Okay, okay. Yeah, the, don't mind it. the opposite of maybe what I expected to see there. All right, so why do you think Poco comes in here and? And how does this sort of interact with the composition from SK? Well, with the Crow on the other side of things, you know, protective tunes can cancel out that slowing toxin. Absolutely. It just stops it in its tracks and just eradicates the gadget's use. I, I feel like as well, survivability is going to be key for keeping aggressive brawlers like the Max on their side and the Janet in the mix, screeching solo as well. You know, it, it's going to be a tough one here for SK. SK Gaming got a lot of work to do to bounce back after that first set showing. Chaos nips himself out there, grabs himself the gem. And we'll see that side lane. Gear versus Zulan. Tyrant versus Semantic on the Crow. That was Levy trying to creep forwards to get that unfavorable spawn. But it does go into the pocket of Chaos as Gear comes in, does get the help that he needs, but as Levy could not quite connect every shot on it. And he will lose positioning for it. Yeah, not a not a huge kill in the grand scheme of the round. It means that Chaos has a bit more mid control. Zulan wants to push up though, try and continue to be annoying, be aggressive. He actually just lights Gear and Chaos up there uh, with that screeching solo. Gear takes a ton of damage this time. So before he even gets to Zulan, he's scattered out and he's taken out. Yeah, now Zulan can push forwards as well and get into a really aggressive position. Start to try to gain that early information. The Ooh. flying hook there is there for Gia, but he won't Love come out. That. Samantha with a jump though, and the pickup very quickly observed there from this Livy. Not hesitating to come in, secure that left hand side lane, and have his teammates come back now. Yeah, Zulan holding onto the super there just when he thought he'd go down. He's actually able to hold his ground against Gear and that tailspin. The turret puts a wrinkle in things now, it's a bit more annoying. Salty Barrel being removed there, Chaos not able to really do anything with it. Tyrant looks like slowed up a little bit here. Semantic not opting to try and capitalize. Gear here is in a great spot. Honestly, if he fly hooks in, this Livy is low, and they got him so, 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 so careful here. Gear coming in, does get the takedown of Zulan. As Livy though, able to follow it up. Tyrant, he's going for chaos. Why? As Livy's out of the fight right now. Tyrant also going to abscond after dropping a couple of bombs here. So still no change of hands with gems. Gear able to deal with Tyrant though. Zulan went for a bit of a lane swap. As Livy's going to need a lot of support right now. As SK look to start to tighten their grip. It's balancing on a live set, isn't it? For Tribe Gaming and A, but that's a nice gem spawn. A Chaos though will know it with the Salty Barrel coming down as Livy just gets out. Beautiful dash, really was. 
As now, Tyre takes the skies oh. and tries to break. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the gems are dropped. SK have got nothing in the pocket. Yeah, Tyrant was in the air. He probably would have liked to drop down on the gems, but as Livy's keeping that 10 safe. So as long as there can be some map control here oh. for Tribe, this is dangerous now, 12 to 10. There has to be an answer for Tribe. There's seven seconds left in the round. They're going to start to encroach here. Zulai comes forward. It's going to be the tailspin from Gear. And Semantic is safe behind the barrier. SK get on the board. It's never too late to start the turnaround. And SK needed that. They really did. It's never too late to get kills in Brawl Stars. <laughs> Doesn't happen in the first set. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what a burn. <laughs> Well, it's true. It is true. Has been a bit of a slow one so far for SK, a bit uncharacteristically of them. But now that was a great way to start their turnaround potential. Yeah. Look, Zulan can't really win this side lane matchup without A, help, or B, his super. If he doesn't have those and Gear's able to close the gap, look how quickly he's built up that tailspin. It's very, very bad for the Puerto Rican on this right side. You've got to remember as well that every time these two teams face off, it goes to the fifth and final set. Now we're starting to believe that that is truly possible, as it wasn't really the case in the previous one. As Livy, be a bit cautious here on his HP and trying to keep himself well out of the range. Gia too has still got gadgets to go in and cause a problem on Zulan, who wants to keep the heals coming in for his Livy. So if they can start to really eradicate him from the mix, they can start to really dominate even more. The early round here going to be predicated by the gem spawns. These teams just trading them, picking them up, up one after a time. Oh, oh, nice from Tyrant. Okay, Semantic tries to swoop on him, but Tyrant is ready to receive him as he lands. This allows his Livy actually to get that two gem lead, which is not insignificant. Now, if they trade gems one after another, it'll favor Tribe. They'll win the round as a result. As Livy, he's in oh! trouble. Yeah, Steam rolls him. He is forced apart with the gems right now, but Chaos can come back in and scoop them up. Tyrant is going in. It might be a suicide mission or a Hail Mary. We're about to find out. Semantic slow. Oh, oh, in, oh, oh, oh. The landing. It's a perfect 10 from the judges. As SK Gaming get to saunter off with 12 gems. This is the SK that we all know and love. Starting to bite back, and I don't know whether there's enough time for this one, honestly, but S. Livy is going to give it his best. He does get the reset. The gems are dropped. In spawn though, so Chaos was able to just spawn in and pick those straight up. Tyrant's forced away, Semantic wants to dive, he's low. Tyrant, it's a strafing run with the bombs. It's gonna be tough for him to get to Chaos's position and he's a one shot. Chaos definitely dispatches his foe and Zulan can't get around this barrier. SK Gaming, even up the series. And just like that, the arena and Semantic start the shout off. <laughs> Smiles all round and what a difference a set makes. Looking like a completely different team. I will say though, the same mindset, same, same approach as we saw in the first map. So both teams played pretty conservatively till towards the end of the round, right? That's when the risks start to be taken. Semantic doing well to collapse on towards that Janet a couple times, really get value out of the slowing Toxin here. And again, Gear always a threat. As soon as you catch it, Livy without the face shift for available, those gems are getting spilt on the ground. <laughs> Semantic almost breaking the desk. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Gear just timed those Carl runs absolutely perfectly. I mean, and you've got to play in Carl. It's not just a good and aggressive brawler that can get a great deal of kills and map maneuverability, but just being able to come out with the goods. And that reset was there, but again, there's no finer place than leaving the gems in your spawn, especially when you've got that many in the pocket. What a game for Gie! I mean, look, the Poco is great, but that's the last pick. That's the pick you really want to be the difference maker. The thing that really characterizes your team comp. Instead, you spend most of the round getting absolutely flattened by gear every time he steps up. Zulan had a really difficult job. He has to find a way to counter Carl. There are brawlers that can do that. Most of the, most of the time, the ones with stuns and the like. Yes, Poco is scary. Very much so in a 1v1 sense, but he didn't quite have enough to sort of give him at least a 50, if you get at least a 50-50 in that lane is what you're looking for. And he couldn't even get that. You really want to have something a bit more aggressive. You know, that's the thing. I can understand the strategy here, but obviously it's going to be very different going into Knockout now. And Bells Rock bans surely coming in to follow. Tribe Gaming and A banning out the Rico. And I don't see why that is ever a bad thing. And the Bonnie. I think they've read this really well, actually. 
They already have banning the Gene as well. The Tick, the Brock, and the Piper banned for SK. But Buster could come in here. I don't mind it, but it has got a bit of a risk. If you break open too much of the map, then you know you are a bit of a sitting duck. And Brawlers like Bell are going to absolutely thrive here. And again, Buster really would struggle if there's any collapse on a side lane or able to use the horizontal as well as those vertical lanes to pressure with sharpshooters. The Sprout comes in here for Tribe NA first. This is SK Gaming's far and away best map type. They have an 86% win rate on knockout yeah. over the course of this year. It is unequivocally their specialty. It's a bold move though to bring in Sprout as your first pick. Not really a third pick, but we saw yesterday, didn't we, just in dueling Beatles against Navi, how much Tribe Gaming NA can make that brawler work. The value is Livy gain from it. Yeah. It's Otis. Great at shutting down these tight lanes, and Transpire is actually really troll uh, on this kind of map because you can sort of shut down one lane and then shut down shut down the next one basically straight away once that brawler sort of rotates. So it's really good at actually giving you an isolated 3v2 situation. And the bell here, the reload gear, it's just going to have such a good time, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, especially those <laughs> it's later rounds. Round, basically, <laughs> come on. I hope Tribe got a good response for this, honestly, because Sprout would be great for control, but even with that, you've, you've got to combine it with some aggressive, some about range. B? Does that work for you here? I feel it would, yeah. I mean, B packs a sting, no pun intended. It genuinely does. Gus, though, for the shield. and You know, maybe if you didn't say packs a sting, I wouldn't have thought you intended the pun, but I'm convinced you did. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't believe you are. Don't trust this man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've heard your jokes, though. So. <laughs> uh, fair play, moving right along. <laughs> Now, obviously, we know how scary uh, this Gus has been. Kooky Popper it brings yep. this level of burst damage that you just don't expect a sort of support-oriented brawler to be able to produce. It catches you by surprise because you don't know what the fourth shot is. As the yep. opposing brawler, you can't tell necessarily. Unless you're, no one's counting this stuff, but there's that B that we sort of foreshadowed that, oh, yeah, well, I just picked the one sharpshooter that wasn't banned. So, you know, <laughs> you, know you don't need to follow me on Twitter at Ubershouts or anything for that. That's not necessary. <laughs> That's self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Third and final pick for SK. And to be honest, I mean, it's, it's going to have to have something which is lacking right now, which is a bit of control for me. But Fang is a staple diet here. Surely that's the aggressor they're going to go with. Grom, though, an, under, an underrated one. A very underrated one. Actually, much the sort of thing that I'd expect to see in North America and Latam North, actually. It's like they've kind of moved away from their own meta, actually. We're going to talk about this. Yeah. First Grom pick, yeah. I'm pretty sure, of this entire World Finals. You said control, so that often means that maybe there's a thrower that, you know, you know could be good at filling that role. Why Why Grom here? Again, for the controlling element, you know, you've got the Sprout on the other side of things, which, you know, is going to have a, a great deal of side lane control or mid. Looks like they're going to be going mid for it. There's a lot of crisscross on this map, so it actually suits the way that his projectiles uh, expand out from that center bomb really effectively. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it's going to be a little annoying for Ezlivia to deal with here. <laughs> Krom can have a bad reputation uh, amongst some circles, but he's definitely uh, a legitimate contender here. And the Renu check gadget as well, as I'm sure it's going to be being ran. It just can catch you off guard. It can just secure those takedowns that you need in the later parts of the game. Let's see, though. Sudan. Here it is. One, the two, three. Shot. Yeah, but juked perfectly from Tribe. They've read that really well. And again, obviously playing outside of the cardinal direction, so trying to play diagonally from that center bud is really important. But you have to predict where the bud's going to hit, and sometimes based on the skin, it can actually be a little bit hard to tell to get yourself in position early. But Eslivia looks like he's done this before. So again, here you go. You are shutting down a good portion of the map. Oh! oh! Guess someone's been lacking their vegetables in their diet. <laughs> Eslivia just force-fed them a handful of space carrots and SK Gaming. Well, they're not going to have scurvy, but they're definitely looking a bit woozy. <laughs> they need to pick me up, don't they? <laughs> Try and make that look so, so good. Locking the whole thing down, and as soon as the weaknesses of the crack started to show, finalizing it beautifully so. I mean, again, funneling your opponents into a small space with just one hedge is kind of what this map lets you do on that sprout. It's so scary. Denial. Again, and I think Eslivy picks that up. He actually, so he transplants that bush out here. Doesn't fancy it. Maybe Tyrant wanted the sight line. Either way, he'll have another super available. And in a pitch, they just want to catch someone out and then pull the bush out if they have to. Well, he has got the wall again. And slow on the right hand side there from Zulan. Wall leaves Semantic in a bit of a precarious spot now, but coming back in and starting to close the gap. And 
does return some very healthy fire there onto Zulan. Good connections as well from Gie, and maybe this is starting to hitch a little bit to more in favor of SK, just playing it slow, waiting for that gas to start to come in. Yeah, absolutely. Also, no one wants to get caught, though, between a hedge and the gas, so keep an eye on Chaos. Here. Chaos is struggling. It's oh, oh, what is he doing? Oh, as Livy traps himself inside the bush. Incomprehensible. Oh, oh. for Tribe. What a bizarre round for Tribe. And they avoid getting punished for that moment from Eslivi. The Grand Bomb with a knockback in, so the gas was actually lovely from SK, but I've got to ask how Tribe were able to come out of that one on top. I wasn't sure it was going to happen. It looks like Eslivi didn't either. Maybe trying to protect it. It looks very unclear what, what the point was behind that hedge there. Benefit of the doubt, though, we're going to give that to him. He obviously isn't pleased either way with the outcome of that round, but Tribe still get it. So here we go again. Good jukes. Again, yeah, Eslivi making sure he's on the diagonal every time one of these buds gets thrown in. Pretty hard to hit. I mean, Chaos is trying, but Eslivi, he's able to get some progress now, moving up. Because he's not taking any damage. That super is now online. And we have a lane swap here, so Semantics actually uh, wanted to try and go here in towards Tyrant, but Zulan also swaps to medium. Good connections there for my Chaos. Eslivi is going to be forced back here, but now the transplant will come in. and Good connection shots. Beautifully done. Almost all three there. Almost a disastrous situation for Bright Chaos. Through life. Seen better days there. Semantic really started to put on the pressure. Here comes the gas arc, and Tyrant is down. Everyone low there on the side of Tribe. This is the last shot to finalize it. SK Gaming bring back around. There's still some fight left in them in this set. That was pretty close there. Chaos and Eslivi struggle to really interact with each other at length here. Okay. Triple check here coming out from Chaos. Reslivy. Oh, 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 Gets absolutely nuked. But Chaos now has a chance just to recover that health. Tyrant is waiting for the hedge to disappear now. He's in a tight corridor, so it's actually a little bit harder to dodge those Grom bombs. So far, not so bad though. They want to collapse on Turkey and they get the 2v2. Tyrant shields himself. Can he walk? Oh, oh great taps. Beautiful by Chaos. Too sharp. And even the Gust Shield, not enough to get him out. SK Gaming on the precipice here of evening things up. They're going to take their time now. Azulan trying not to feed anything over to them. That'll be it. What a way to end it. I mean, they had both rounds, so why not end on a Grom Bomb, you know, just to reinforce it. That was the thing that really was a struggle for Tribe. That time round, as Spike House started to warm himself up to it. Again, it's a bro which I'm not really seen SK Gaming playing too much. Normally it's a fine pick, but they are really starting to make this from give the best run for his money against the Sprout. Semantic again has to go against Zulan. Doesn't love being here. Honey Molasses is going to be thrown down by Zulan. It was, of course, a fat splatter sent in by Semantic. Tyrant mostly trying to avoid these shots from Gear, who definitely has a more comfortable time. I like the reverse polarity shot. My god, nice little angle there. No connection, but look damn good. Find out the DVD logo trying to bounce into the corner of your screen. That's right, cheering for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's a, that's a 2000s meme. Sorry. We are but humble boomers, Uber. <laughs> but I, I gotta say, though, I do prefer Nest Egg. I do. I mean, it's definitely great for flair and it does serve a purpose as well. I mean, your CGA is connecting with it, keeping Tyrant low. Slow, though, does not quite land the Zulan. The Chaos doesn't connect either with the radio check. Both teams really reading each other so, so well here. All right, Tyrant gets a, a bit of a breather there as Eslivy cuts off that lane by the hedge. Oh, there it is. What a gadget use from Chaos. Tyrant's going to be caught in the gas here, and that's going to be that. SK Gaming, one round away from going up two to one here. Knockout favoring them solidly. A night and day difference when you think back to that first set where they had zero kills on every player. But now, it just feels like the momentum shift is starting to get the better of try potentially here. Zulan just looking to get the amplified shot to connect with Semantic. He has to, making him work for He it. really has to pressure this lane. Like Zulan needs to turn this like objective advantage into some other map presence. He has to materialize an advantage for Tribe outside of just him having the better lane assignment. So that means pushing Semantic so far back that he can't have an impact or just eliminating him. He's being so cautious. Rightly so. Shift to hand. 
doesn't connect it. And land those amplified shots. They try really to make this a three versus two, realistically. But they're going down too late towards the end. The great slow there from Zulan again, but not able to finalize it. That's where Tribe is struggling. Uh, but, but the problem is, is Livy can't just cut the Grom out of his lane. The Grom can still do whatever he wants, even if there's a hedge in the way, like this. Chaos can still fire, as Livy still needs to respect, and here comes the gas, but Tyrant's gonna win that battle against Gear. What a huge oh, winning stuff! Getting rid of the bell, as Gus on that lane assignment, no easy feat. Tribe really overcoming some fundamental issues to even it up. One round to decide it all in this set. We wouldn't want it any other way. Zulan got a heal here, but again, reading the Grom like a book, and Gage is pushing down their tyrant towards the lower end. <laughs> Matthew with the mute ready at hand as well. We've got to be very cautious around him, and you best to connect that. Yeah, this wall break really changing the lay of the land here. Is Livy and Chaos still preferring to play on the more untouched side of the map? Semantic Flash is super there, he doesn't connect it, Zulan. Able to breathe a sigh of relief as he wants to continue to pressure the Otis away. One shot, no empowered connection there. He had a second chance, still no good. Iron Hive now coming out. Semantic is dodging all of it. Man, this guy's got light feet. It's been great all time, but the Cookie Popper almost oh, caught him off guard. He's still alive. But he has to back up. He yeah. needs to heal. That's going to give Tribe and Divider to start to move up the map just a little bit more. Chaos in that back left corner of the hedge is a problem, and the gas chokes him out. Here comes Tribe getting in a gear, the last one left. And North America takes another step towards a semi-final berth. Everyone on their feet and in our ears right now. The support that is there behind this squad is enormous. It's unusual, isn't it? We see SK, which is always constantly reminded as to how loud they are. But this is what I love so much, bringing the crowd in for 2022. This is the best of all. Remember what we said at the start of that round? Zulan being in you know, a quote-unquote winning lane against an Otis has to turn that into something for the rest of his team. And it's actually Tyrant that gets involved with the Kooky Popper there, sets up the kill, and then they collapse on the rest of the map. I love the hedge, as Livy has a fantastic very first round with the hedge, right? He gets a, a nasty double kill, and finally he gets value with it, catching Eye Chaos between it and the gas. So much patience from as Livy, but that's what gives him the win in the end. Really impressive mental fortitude from Tribe Gaming NA to take away that set. It, you, you said it, it doesn't get any better than this. I feel like Cody is going to cry <laughs> if, it, if, if a Tribe get this win. Every time it just feels like he's got tears brewing. But the stats say it all for me, don't they? You know, Tyrant with a fantastic game, but DPS was pretty low, actually. When you consider yes. things, it was... A lot of poking, right? A lot of, yeah. like, I take a hit here, I back up and heal up. But, I mean, you can see, like, the Semantic versus Zulan matchup, right? That, that's, again, what a winning, quote-unquote, winning lane gives you. Uh, there's much more to Brawl Stars than just sort of, you know, beating a 1v1 opponent. So I'm really glad we got to see how you manifest an advantage on a side lane or a middle lane, as it was in that case. Turn it into a win for your team. But no time to, you know, enjoy this exquisite Brawl Stars. We're moving on to Brawl Ball already. Now, this is, of all the game modes, an SK gaming mode, isn't it? It really is. So in terms of the draft, I hope that Tribe Gaming NA do ban out some of the... They haven't. They haven't banned them out. What should they be banning here? Should we be banning Gale? No. That, that is how SK slow down the game. Or they're feeling so confident to face Gale, they don't care. Or they draft it first themselves. It's one of the two, I feel. But bans were Ash, Buster, Max on the side of SK, on the side of Tribe Gaming NA. Barley, Squeak, Surge, I mean... You can also, I've seen SK combining the Gale with the bow so many times over because you place mines on the ball, you place the twister on the ball, and you just basically lock the ball down into the corner. Shout Janet though coming to come in first for Tribe Gaming NA. And again, we saw the Barley Band. Uh, we realized that things have probably been working on this in scrims, right? We actually got to see it from Zeta Division uh, in that previous game, right? Just how uh, terrible it was for, you know, Ash to deal with that primarily. SK banned that Ash away, but obviously maybe concerned about something that could counter their Carl if they opt to go that way. The kind of brawler that really, there are very few maps and game types that he's not going to be sort of valued quite highly on. Penny here for SK Gaming, an absolute classic choice from them. Yeah, the, the uh, Penny turret, you know, the mortar can just help out so much. You don't have to you know, rush your attempt on goal then. You can just place down the turret and let your opposition just slowly you know, crumble in that spawn side and then 
pick up the ball and just score it very quickly or bring it back from the corner if you're SK. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, at the end of the round, you know what I mean? Just wait it out and then uh, pick up the ball once all the architecture disappears and go for it. Otis here again for SK. We saw that from Semantic. He had a tough time dealing with B. This time, SK won't have to worry too much about a skewed lane assignment. This map much less linear than the previous. It's interesting though. I've got to say, you know, SK have been so much more aggressive in this World Finals. We saw it yesterday, we're seeing it again today. Maybe they're going to be playing less passive. Maybe they feel like people are starting to read them a bit too easily. So they're trying to mix up their strategy or they'll bring, you know, Gale to the last pick. Tribe Gaming though, now, going to bring a Stu. And that was what I was thinking in terms of aggression. They do need to have those side lanes having a bit more going on there. The Janet as well, especially going to you know, complement it quite nicely with the drop of the base as well. Maybe the speed zone as well on the side of the Stu. Yeah. Round on this cop now. Yeah, less less things blocking you to sort of break through uh, with that gadget. I will say that there's no easy assassination target for the Stu yet. Penny maybe once upon a time. Salty Barrel makes that much less of a straightforward prospect. And if you get me to bug gear, uh, you can kiss your bum goodbye. That ain't going to work out. So. Yeah. B gets picked up again here for Tribe. Looked really good. Uh, look, I was really impressed with Zulan on that on that brawler in the last map. We got applause from the crowd after seeing that particular pick. So not just me that's excited to see how that plays out. Yeah, the crowd really do seem to like the draft so far for Tribe. I didn't mind it, but the penalty turret is going to lock on to a lot of the utility. So, you know, it's been a, a long time since realistically we've seen Rattle Hive on the side of B, but they might be considering it now. Maybe it's breakthrough in that because Ultimately, that can really start to you know, connect and lock on to that utility, get it yeah. eradicated. Spike, we always tend to see as the third and final pick on Brawl Ball. It's not the strongest of Brawlers in terms of the meta, but it is a safe pair of hands. Kerbal can get those angles and you know, also, you know, it does hold its own better than most. Yeah, I think we saw it once so far at this World Finals, uh, and it was on a heist there. So, uh, you know, got a good example, of course, of the utility you bring. Life plan is also great if someone is in your face. All you're worried about be, you know, double tapping you, right? Finding you with that second shot. Incredible bit of utility now available to Spike. Let's see how it plays out now, ladies and gentlemen. Brawl Ball for set number four. Tribe with an opportunity to end the series here. The crowd behind Tribe massively so at the moment. You can just feel it. The electricity in the air. You can taste it. They are behind at the moment. Oh my goodness, Tyrant. Beautiful All right, stuff. does have breakthrough, right? So we kind of jukes out the super there from Gear. And now it collapses on Chaos. <laughs> and Gear can't do anything. He's still sat back in that corner waiting to heal up. Oh, this is devastating for Tribe. Fancy full work, but no super to hand. As Livy tries to pass the ball, wouldn't have been able to get the shot off. Taking it slow and steady as Livy now with a beautiful angle. I don't know how he even connected that tap, but he did. Now another breakthrough there. Salty Barrel though to the face as Ikea starts to stand his ground, and now the curveball as well, as Livy is forced back. Yeah, no clear shot there, no super available. Zulan, looking to rattle the cage a little bit here as he returns now to the left-hand lane. Tyrant now looking to maybe clear up the other side of the map with a couple more of those breakthrough activations, but he's hit by the mute. Semantic was hoping to try and capitalize, but Tyrant is left alive with 60, having to dodge a shot coming in from that Penny Tyrant, but he does so with finesse. And he's back in the game. I love the way that Samantha just placed the ball there perfectly. One shot from Chaos if he gets a super and Tribe out of position, they could get a nice snatch on the goal. But Tyrant not really able to do much on this right hand side. Now the turret pushing him away as well, and Zulan very, very low. This is exactly where SK like to be. Just able to shut things down once the penny turret is rolling in and just squeeze the life out of their opposition. Yeah, Ace Levy dealing with a lot of AoE damage on the ground here, whether it's from, uh, you know, Fat Splatter or, of course, that Penny Turret, which is a real pain in the neck right now for Tribe Gaming to deal with. Uh, Honey Molasses got thrown down, was instantly destroyed by that. Sort of, and you mentioned Tyrant possibly playing Breakthrough. We know that's the case now. He's got no, no charges of that left, though. So Semantic's going to be safe behind a lot of that architecture for the rest of the round. Yeah, they just like to demoralize their opposition, don't they? Just keep throwing everything at them including the kitchen sink. Zulan now oh, has to take to the skies just yeah. in time. And Kie might go down here as Livy does connect. A great time for Tribe to start to push their way forwards, going in to overtime. By Chaos, unaffected by Ironhive there is Livy with a bit of a dissatisfying miss on that one and not able to connect with Semantic either. Tyrant though, manages to get up in his face and find the elimination now. 3v2 for the time being. Tyrant wants to surge forward here, but Chaos is rather durable for a long range brawler. Again, super use. Chaos is struggling to keep up with Tyrant as he moves across the map. Tyrant thrown down. 
removed instantly now with nothing else to protect it. Yeah, it's, it's leaving SK already quite vulnerable here. They're going to have to go for the corner, yep. And try to avoid these shots because this Livy is so dangerous. Life plant goes down, it will keep them running just for a little bit longer. But as a slow connects as well, the taps the follow are on point for us, Livy. Everyone on the side try pretty low though, and that might go against them now. Pretty nice shot there, Ola pick up, pick up as Livy. Looking scary on the beat here. Playing back from Semantic now as Chaos goes awfully low. 15 seconds are left in the round. Tyrant not healthy enough to make the play. Trying to dodge the curveball here, and that's the last life plant expended for gear. Zulan wants to push up on Semantic and he gets the kill. He's trying to fly in. Chaos slowed down, and Zulan can he get there? He doesn't have his super available, and by the time he touches down, time is run out. What a tense one. <laughs> but you've got to hand it to Tribe. I mean, for the majority of the time, they were the ones on the ropes, and towards the end, just really started to make the most out of overtime, couldn't quite get the ball from the corner. But as we've got to see that SK mean business here today so far. They'll be quite happy to take that as a draw. Look at that, Tyrant's for Semantic out of position already. Getting with the outplay there. And now Tyrant, just a breakthrough to remove some of that architecture. Probably hoping to get that bottom part of the fence as well, but he'll have to use another gadget to get that. It's going to be a trade on the right side. Chaos would like to get that turret rolling. He's probably a couple of taps away now. And ultimately, it will start to just help out a lot when it locks on to the drop of the base and everything else. Slevy with the amplified shot, just being patient with it, but now we'll have to earn it again. Semantic creeping forwards. He would love to get the meat off on turret, and he does. That's oh, his window. but the response from Slevy was absolutely on point, and that boy knows it. Oh, he's hitting him with the pin. Semantic not going to be happy with that one. That was Semantic's window to win that fight against Tyrant, right? Hit him with that super. Not expecting one to run into a face full of bees. And he's well and truly rattled the hive now as Tyrant tries to back up on that right-hand side. Chaos gets the better of him. Dropped the base used by Zulam, but Gia now starting to really ease into that roll on that left. This is where Tribe had to survive last time, but will they survive this time? Throwing everything down, they've got to get the takedown. They do. Semantic, oh, they might get a goal. Oh, S. Levy off to the line, but he's the last man standing. Beautifully done, but is it enough? No. Gear gets the pass to cut the cast, and that is SK Gaming off the mark. Yeah, that was looking dangerous as soon as Gear's able to come in there and you stick around on that left hand side, cutting off half of the goal for Tribe. They have to filter out the right hand side. Semantic's happy to trade himself for a double. And it's game over from there on out. Now Tribe need to go more aggressively. They've been happy to sort of bide their time in the early parts of the round, but overtime is currently not on the menu. They need to find a way to even the score here. As Libby finding it pretty difficult to line Chaos up here. He's been very cagey hiding behind those three boxes. Tyrant doesn't have any breakthrough uses left, but they get the turret. Here goes Zulan. It's the moment that Tribe have got to make count. The mute though is there for Tyrant. the pass. Can't be made. Zulan goes in. Oh, the super shot is there. It. It's off the line, but Zulan is there to pick it up. And Tribe, tie it up. Yeah, nice to see that Tribe can switch into uh, a more aggressive gear after falling behind in score. Now the question is, how well can they maintain that as overtime is upon us? Chaos sends them all downfield here. Tyrant busy dealing with gear, so opts not to pick it up. As Livy has a charged shot there, but he's not able to connect it either. Zulan a little bit low as Semantic starting to turn up the heat. Tyrant in Gear's face. Oh! Tyrant with the win. As oh! Livy down, but he passes off just before he falls from the grave. He keeps his team in it. What an incredible defense. It really was. Tribe were in such a vulnerable spot, but they survived. And that's what matters. They're going to have to regroup on the side of SK. Get his bit work working. Mute there. Lovely down from Semantic. This is still a goal-scoring opportunity. Zulan needs to heal. He's firing. I don't know why. Maybe trying to keep Semantic away, but he's at 120 right now. Semantic firing back in his direction. Ed's Olivia also needs to take a break, but there's 15 seconds left in the round. Semantic, one shot away from death. He hangs on. Tyrant does have super. He can start to close the gap, and he does. Tyrant! Tyrant. No life flight available. He gets oh. the super, but here comes the super oh. shot. Ed's <laughs> Livy has done it. A tribe gaming are on the precipice of a semi-finals berth. What a way to end the round. What a goal. What a finish for Tribe. And ultimately, I was thinking that both teams surely thinking that a draw here would be nice yet again. Not for Tribe. They want to get straight back in it, straight back into the thick of things and tie this one up. Imagine 
Imagine the history all being tied up into a neat bow. It was Tribe Gaming sent home by SK in that MSI. They've been stewing on it all year, and now they have their chance to reclaim the crown and have a shot at the semis. The question is now, who wants it more? It's the last team left in the EMEA region at this stage of the competition. And SK have got to hold on for dear life. Guille goes down like chaos though, looking to earn another turret for safety. Everyone on Tribe just starting to move around a bit more to heal up accordingly to then get back into the thick of things. But more or less, everyone trying to earn that utility, trying to give themselves the edge as we approach the 1 minute 20 mark. Like that from Ezlip, he hits the first shot, it's not the empowered one, but he goes for the Iron Hive straight after to try and guarantee the second. Chaos has to use Salty Barrel there. Boy in the corner, I think that's wise. Tribe do need to buy some time. But the Penny Turret is where now they have the problem. Down goes Tyrant as well. That's going to put even more pressure onto the backs of Ezlip and Zulan, and they've just got to hang on buy some time, get the momentum back, and then try to take it to overtime. They got the B in overtime. Yes. That's a great matchup for them. Tribe just need to make sure they don't give up complete map control, and that's why Tyrant keeps peeking this corner here. Oh, great jukes. Yeah, just sturdy. Look at the guy. <laughs> Untouchable. He's letting them know it, too. Penny Tyrant locking him on, and he's still just not dropping a single HP. Now the breakthrough, now the aggression. Oh, beautifully juggled in time, but now punished. A semantic does get the pickup and finalizes things out. But SK are still not going for that goal scoring opportunity. But taking it a bit, a bit cautious, a bit overly so. The breakthrough opens up the right side of the map. So for Semantic to risk coming to get the ball exposes him to Ezlivi, especially. To Tyrant there, you might thought that's a bit strange. I mean, he's shorter range than Semantic. Why would he take those boxes down? That's likely the reason why. Definitely securing overtime, Art Tribe. This one is going down to the wire. It's not a very good spot, though, for Tribe in this position, as SK have just got a really secure one singular kill to have it be enough to start moving forward. But here we go. Slip is the first to take the front, but tries to fire back and just missing three consecutive shots down to IKS. The fourth now connecting. Tara goes down. Now the ball will start to come in and make its way forwards a little bit here. They can start to juke more of these shots though as they need to. <laughs> Otherwise, SK are going to be a perfect opportunity. Tyrant gets caught amongst the maelstrom of fired shots though, and Slip is a little bit low, trying to ward Semantic oh! away. Oh, the star power! The second chance allows him to get the kill. Another pin from Slip, and a huge way to relieve some of the pressure here but we're running out of time. 27 seconds are left, and this ball now is starting to get moving. The hopes of two continents on the line. Tyrant has super as well. Amplified shot for his levy, but doesn't quite connect here. Second either as well. The mute missed everyone. Just struggling to connect as the tension is getting to them. Tyrant though, can get a pass of potential. All go for the glory himself here. Zulu comes down to land. He's taking his sweet time. Oh, his levy goes down though. Will Tyrant get it? The shot is saved on the line, and that is going to be a rematch, a draw, and a saving grace still for SK. SK just hold them on there. It looks like Ezlivi just found himself a little bit out of position in those last few moments. When he's the brawler that you're trying to play around for the late game, losing him there is an absolute devastating turn of events. Tribe still wanted the threaten, but Zulan was busy in the air. You don't get to the side when you come down there. You stay up until that super is over. So Zulan could only look on as the ball fell out of their hands. It's great stuff, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Both teams really making each other work for this, and you've got to. You're on the world stage. This is your shining moment of glory. That's two salty barrels already used by Chaos. The pressure's starting to mount now. Tribe are frustrated. They want to try and get the win, and they might just have it. The goal is going to be good. Zulan walks it on in. It's an opening statement and a half, and now the pressure really is all with SK. No more second chances. They've got to land this mark here. They've got to score. They can't leave the scoreline now the same way it is and has been for the majority of the matches. They've got to go on the aggressive, get back to their roots, stay alive in the competition. The last salty barrel isn't enough to save Chaos's life there. The turret's still a concern. And again, this is Tribe. They have the lead. They're not even playing for overtime. They're playing for the win. They've done the hard work. It's up to SK Gaming to answer the call. And so far, they are coming up short. If this ball stays in that corner, how poetic would that be? As that's the place where SK have had the ball for the majority of this year. Not like this, SK, not like this. 
They need to get that ball out. They need to get a pass through. They need to equalize this or it is over. And that is a great tap from Miss Libby on to Guille. And that's perfect. Two big eliminations there for Tribe. The ball stays where it was left. Like you mentioned, this was a common approach for SK Gaming. Get an early lead and then play safe, play solid. Even if SK somehow able to take the ball out of the bottom right, it'd still be a draw in that case. Semantic struggling to keep up a tyrant, call him fleet of foot. This guy is twinkle toes everywhere. 32 seconds left in the round. The crowd is starting to feel it. Tribe are on the approach. Yeah, they can feel it, we can feel it, but SK has still got time. 25 seconds on the clock again now, gonna bring the ball out. Chaos has got super as well, but the ball goes to nowhere. It goes straight to Tyrant. That's not what you wanna do. 15 seconds and surely this is it. Surely this is all Tribe. Tribe Gaming, disappointed in the mid-season invitational, frustrated in the last two months of their region, but now Tribe Gaming have vanquished Europe. They will advance. What a result! What a day for the boys in red! And that is what we are waiting for. The emotions, nothing but sheer roll, sweat, and tears. And for Reds Libby, this is a unique feeling coming out of this team, knowing the kind of shoes he had to fill, the kind of attention, the kind of scrutiny that would be on this team. He knew what he was signing up for, but I don't know if he knew how it would feel now to beat your arch rivals, to give yourself the matchup against Zeta Division in the semi-finals. And like I had mentioned, with STML on the other side of the bracket, Zeta Division 1, Europe is done. It's only an A, it's only East Asia. I don't know whether I should uh, stay around or should I go home? I mean, is this like a, a sign? I mean, I'll bring it back to the conversation we had, yes. the Tri Boys in the locker room, and uh, we, we got some stick from them, didn't we? They said, like, who are you predicting? And we said, you know, we were going to go with SK. But I said, prove me wrong. I would love for nothing more than for you to go out and explain to me exactly why we were in the wrong. And that is exactly what they did. What a day, what a result. Yeah, I mean, I could begin this. This set could have gone on for quite some time, right? Both these teams, their compositions meant that when there were windows, small windows that were trying to take advantage of them, right? Especially with the stew. Uh, if you can see someone out of position, you go and dive on them. Chaos, I mean, look, you really need to step him to step up and be a centerpiece on that penny. And he falls short. I mean, it says here, a lot of damage being done by all these players. Obviously, S. Livy having difficulties there connecting on the same level. But I mean, for Chaos, He's really not able to get those eliminations, really not able to set up those power plays for Reske to push in, take advantage of another round. I think it was a, a semantic or maybe Gia on that Otis. Another Otis pick that does not pan out either. And again, you know, it's such a testament to Tribe because dodging those penny shots is not easy, you know? And, it, and you can see on the other side of things exactly where they're going to be leading. Tyrant there picking up the MVP and I for one agree. I mean, he's been so aggressive and he's been a bit more, you know, refined this year. He's not getting overconfident too soon. Yeah. He's just taking it calm and slow and making it play through the plays, you know? Yeah, his, his mechanics have been actually insane. Yeah. Incredible stuff on the stew in that last map, setting up those crucial pinches on semantic or chaos quite often on the right lane or in the middle to give them the power play. I mean, they broke their script. They sort of, you know, broke their sort of normal streak of sitting and waiting, Tribe did at the start of that last round. They just pushed up the middle. They knew they had a brawler advantage and they just brute forced their way into the goal, putting SK in a position basically you'd be unable to come back from. I think this game really delivered. I think, you know, SK definitely was suffering a lot of scrutiny early. They managed to bring it back. But now I guess the title, uh, you know, the NAEU rivalry, it definitely is over in the NA direction. There's much more to be decided here at the Brawl Stars World Finals, so ladies and gentlemen, two semi-finals to come. So don't go anywhere. This is the 2022 Brawl Stars World Finals, and we are just getting started.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Brawl Stars World Finals, where we've just gotten all of our quarterfinals complete. Two semifinals matches locked in, and ahead of that, the grand finals. Wow, so much has happened today, and in the last couple of days, to be fair, but those semifinals finals were so exciting. No more EMEA teams in the competition. I am heartbroken. I predicted with my heart uh, this year, and uh, it has not paid off. <laughs> Look, it's been a good day to be a guy from NA. Let's check out the it bracket is. and see how things have progressed along as well. NA teams in the semifinals, as well as the two East Asian teams in those semifinals. Our first semifinal coming up, Zeta Division 1 versus STMN. Then Zeta Division 0 versus Tribe Gaming NA. These two matches surely will not disappoint. Once again, it's a culmination of a year-long effort to get here. Yeah, this is gonna be crazy. Who out of SMN or Tribe Gaming NA might take down a Zeta Division team to secure their spot in the finals? I think we're gonna go check out our predictions, e even though it didn't really go too well uh, for me so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, today wasn't a great day for EMEA, but it, it was better on your end. It was a little bit better on my end. I'm not sure what happened exactly there where I, you know, I, maybe I gave it a peer pressure. I wasn't feeling the NA vibes today, but I certainly am now with the Tribe Gaming in a victory. And of course, we have some differing opinions as well on how these next two semifinals are going to go. I'm really feeling the NA vibes, okay? We've seen good stuff from NA all day. I'm going with STMN, but it looks like you and the rest of the casters also went with Zeta Division One, actually. Yeah, I, I feel like with Stetempo's performance today, I don't know who will stop him, honestly. Yeah. If he if he performs like he did uh, for, for the rest of the weekend uh, in both the semis and the grand finals, uh, for me, he's going to be the first 
two-time crowned uh, world champion ever, and actually the only uh, uh, one because, you know, his teammates weren't uh, on the Zayday last year. So, uh, so much is on the line, so much crazy, so much history uh, writing itself here at the Pro Stars World Finals. No doubt, STMN in Zay Division 1, it's coming up very, very soon here, but of course we have to get prepared as well and also discuss how exactly this one is going to go down because, you know, I, I, I can't... You know, I can't blame the other guys for going with Zeta Division 1 here. First of all, you know, I, I, li I really do feel the NA vibes flowing today. Second of all, they went to the final set versus a team that not a whole lot of people expected to do so well from the EMEA region. Yeah, no, certainly so. I mean, uh, Z Zeta are looking very, very strong at the moment. And on the side of STMN, I mean, l l let's be honest, they popped off at the end of that match against Team Queso. But on the way there, it was a little messy. They lost the two first set, nearly uh, ended up going down because they had to face some match points, and that would have been uh, quite unheard of, to be honest. But either way, let's get our teams on the stage. Semi-final number one. De retour pour les demi-finales. Encore beaucoup de matchs. Est-ce qu'on est chaud pour les demi-finales? On est chaud, on est présent, il y a eu beaucoup de Brawl Stars tout le week-end, mais encore quatre équipes en liste, une seule évidemment pourra le remporter. Il est temps d'accueillir la première, ils font partie des favoris, il y a deux équipes japonaises, la première équipe japonaise toujours en course, un max de bruit pour Zeta Division 1 Zeta Division 1, they have swept through their bracket in the previous days, and today as well, very convincing games versus Reply to them, an extremely strong team in EMEA, and eliminating the second to last representative from the EMEA region. Now, they're here to knock out one of the NA teams as well, and what a showing it's been. You brought up Shitampo, I mean, he's been an absolute powerhouse today. Oh, yeah, I mean, the world champion is delivering again. There were some questions, you know, coming into uh, this year's World Finals, if he would have the same uh, uh, caliber uh, uh, of performance that he did in 2021 and uh, to me he surpassed it so I can't wait to see how he performs here against SCMN talking of them they are going to be joining them on the stage right now Et leurs adversaires pour une place en grande finale ils représentent évidemment l'Amérique du Nord trois joueurs qui ont un super parcours pour l'instant mais un gros client en demi-finale un max de bruit pour STMN Stamina Esports, that's Bobby, OG, Czar, and Sans sitting on the bench, rather probably on the couch at home uh, right now as he couldn't quite make it here to the World Finals. They got top eight last year. They just come off some big wins. Team Queso, that was a very close match, but a full-on reverse sweep. If any team is, you know, as ice cold in the veins as Zeta Division 1, it might just be SCMN. I mean, just imagine the amount of pressure that they must have been feeling after the first several games and leading up to a match point where they fought their way through two match points in a row to get that ball rolling and get that reverse sweep headed in. It is unimaginable. And yeah, that's really the only thing that can contest versus Zeta Division 1. But we've heard people talk about how Zeta Division 1 play and just how it's like robotic. It's as if they are AIs. They are made to play Brawl Stairs. They're just that good. And STMN in those first couple of sets that we saw versus Team Queso, some really big blunders, making mistakes that is not an option here for STMN. Yeah, there's been very few reverse sweeps in BSC history, uh, but even less when you look at World Finals in front of a crowd on the biggest stage. It's unbelievable uh, how good STMN have been able to handle the pressure so far in these World Finals 2022. But this is a whole other level of an opponent, Zeta Division 1. I mean, they came here as favorites pretty much, and so far they have not disappointed, taking down teams like uh, Totem uh, just earlier today, which honestly, I mean, most of us it, it, it thought Totem really stood more of a chance than that. 
And right now, SCMN, looking that they did struggle against Team Kazo earlier, they really need to bring their absolute A game against Zeta. Well, there's one thing that we've learned from the two Zeta teams. It's that going to a match point versus the other team in one of the earlier match days doesn't necessarily mean that you're off of your game. And we saw that proved by Zeta Division 0 and Zeta Division 1. They also went down one set versus their match day number one opponent, STMN going down a couple of sets to Team Queso, maybe we shouldn't think to ourselves that we know so much and just let the players tell it to us themselves by the gameplay. I, that, that, that's what I'm counting for, Ready? That is what I'm counting for. But yeah, we, 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 we need just to see both teams uh, show us uh, their absolute best gameplay. Zeta Division 1, I, I think one of you know their biggest advantages obviously is going to be the tempo, but it could be a weakness too that he has been so uh, instrumental, you know, and such a big part of the success because if maybe SCMN figure out a way to uh, single him out and, and sort of grieve him, disable him from playing uh, at the level that he's been playing so far at the World Finals, that might be what makes the difference, but it's really hard to tell at this point. It's a fascinating dynamic to think that the strongest point of your team can also be your biggest point of weakness if you rely on them too much. And Zeta Division 1, really the one standout player for me that would step up to take that spot has got to be Moya Goku. He has been popping off today as well. Just, in my opinion, barely outshined by Shetampo in today's competition. If Shetampo gets singled out, I am very confident that Moya Goku will rise up to the challenge. But what happens if ST Min just plays Diff today? As far as the ST Min roster, it's hard to single out a single player either as well. They are all doing very, very well today. But as far as a Shetampo situation, Situation. I don't think there is just a single brawler, or rather a single player on SCMN that we can pick out as a point of weakness or a point of strength here. It's not quite as clear cut, right? Because if we looked at their performances so far in their World Finals uh, this year, uh, the tempo statistically has just had literally every set had the most kills, the most damage, and sometimes by a long way while losing sets, you know, they've lost a couple, uh, I, I think two uh, actually so far, which is not that many, let's yeah. be honest. Uh, but in both, you know, uh, what most of the players I was talking about were saying is like, you know, how, how do you lose when Shetempo is doing so much of the work? And I'm not taking anything away from his teammates, but he has been just on, on, on another level as the rest of the competition. I think the closest to that for SCMN, uh, to me, is going to be OG uh, in so, some of the games we saw earlier uh, against Team Queso, but Bobby also had some amazing sets. So. Czar, I think, has been a little bit more quiet, which is unfortunate because he is an incredibly talented player, and I, I, I want to see more from him. I, I'm still waiting for him to really uh, bring the highest level that uh, he can bring, because we all know he's capable of that. No doubt he's a very skilled mechanical player, and it'll be interesting to see how he performs throughout the day, but if we even progress beyond just a player standpoint, we can talk on like kind of a team record standpoint, because this isn't the first time that we have seen these teams face in a major competition. We saw that them at MS so this is a grudge match. There, STMN took one set off of Zeta Division 1, but ultimately Zeta Division 1 did win the match with three set victories, and then they went on to get the victory. It seems like the predictions from you guys coming in are relatively confident in the Zeta Division 1 department as well. Let's get this one started. We're moving into Hard Rock Mine, and the bands, they're already up on the screen. From the side of Zeta Division 1, Colonel Ruffs, Buster, and Penny. From the side of STMN, already a notice bit coming out. They've also banned out Carl, Poco, and Stu. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing here. I mean, we saw how much value Otis uh, has been able to bring to the teams that played him. To be fair, uh, you know, Totem also, you know, brought him on a couple times. SK a lot, actually, uh, just earlier. Uh, not with the greatest success, but I, I don't think it's necessarily just the fault of the Brawler. It just depends on, you know, the larger picture, the bigger picture, and, and, and the comp that goes with it. Uh, it is a very strong Brawler at the moment, very versatile as well, and just uh, just his damage output is, is enough to put him in competitive, but his super is just incredibly strong as well. Now, Gus is also a brawler. We've seen uh, a, a fair bit. Has a lot of range, a decent bit of damage, especially if you pop a gadget as you hit uh, your opponent. But also, you know, uh, it's a support brawler that can uh, keep himself up in case he really needs to stay alive and maybe win his lane or help his teammate win theirs, which uh, can be absolutely game-changing. 
picks from Zeta Division 1 looking kind of scary here, especially Gus, but also Crow as well. It looks like they don't really want to play versus any sort of max ideas from STMN because they know just how valuable it can be in that department. Also, max hasn't been banned out. Zeta Division 1 probably wouldn't mind having it for themselves. Speaking from an NA perspective, a pretty popular pick here in North America on Hard Rock Mine is actually either Gene or 8-Bit. Either one of those is fairly popular. Here's Gene. I don't know if it'll be combined with 8-Bit. You don't exactly want to pick two mids, but that's a popular NA pick. They're going to be going with something comfortable, and typically going with comfort picks works out for STMN in high-stress situations, but this isn't just any team. This is Zeta Division 1. Yeah, they are the final boss at this point, still undefeated. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Max for this final pick maybe of SCMN, as, as you mentioned. I, I, I think it would be a risk to leave it open because, you know, Max is quite decent at juking those gene supers. And we will see the Max indeed as our final pick for the side of Stamina. Zeta Division 1 have a final answer, a final solution to try to counter as many of their opponent's brawlers as possible. Yeah, well, it's gonna come down to countering out the max because they already do have Crow. So I think this is a wise draft by Zeta Division 1 because they can either force STMN into picking max for themselves or get it for themselves. Now they have to figure out what they're going to do versus some of these other brawlers. OG is probably gonna be the most straightforward to counter on the gene. He has pretty much the, or one of the most game-changing supers Max might actually take the cake here. Here's Janet as well. And I really like this pick because you're able to throw down a turret to block a gene pull with it. And I think that's going to give them tremendous value. It's also a mystery as to which lanes exactly we are going to find yeah. these people on. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I agree. But at the same time, are we really expecting a Janet Jam carrier? No. Probably not. I think Gus is probably the most straightforward answer here. But even then, I, I don't think it's necessarily the best uh, uh, gem carrier on this map. I personally do prefer Stamina Scum by quite a bit, but if Kenji keeps tapping the way he is now, I might have to change my mind. Not only that, and Moya Goku has slows at the ready, and he's laned up versus Zara. Meanwhile, on the right side, OG's going to be taking on Shitampo. Already getting some damage down on the ground. Here's the turret immediately dispelled by Bobby. Some damage from those vengeful spirits, and Shitampo actually does fall. OG now finds himself deep in Zeta Division 1's defense, but the same case goes for Moya Goku, who, despite fighting a 1v2, is very difficult to get rid of. And Bobby might actually just abandon ship here and instead go for Kenji. Meanwhile, OG is just as well locked very, very deep in Zeta Division 1's back lines, but it doesn't really stop him for now. Almost goes down to Kenji, but will find a point of comfort on the left side where he can pinch out Moya Goku. There's a kill from Bobby, and Zeta Division 1, aside from all of this, have the lead. OG has been flanking Zeta for so long now, not quite able to find as many kills as he would have wished, but he is creating some space and he's able to get Zeta from picking up too many gems either. Bobby does have his pool. Needs to be careful. He's getting pushed by Moya Goku, and that is going to be a free kill there for Moya. And this is looking excellent for Zeta Division 1 as they are getting awfully close to a countdown. Just one more gem needed, and Moya Goku's looking very, very scary. He has just not left the back lines this entire time. He's threatening Bob, he's threatening Zar. Big damage on Zar as well from Kenji, and he gets to move back with all 10 gems. He's going to be particularly hard to take down. He does actually shield up Shitetampo so he can stay on the aggro, and Moya Goku's here to be his personal bodyguard around the left side as well. Kill on to Bobby. OG is the last hope here. Almost some damage on a Kenji, but he's just out of reach, and Zeta Division 1 take the first game. That was close from being a kill and reset, but either way, the gems were be way too far into Zeta Division 1 spawn, so they had a strong countdown, were able to hold on to it and lock in that first game. Let's see if they can turn it into a set. Zeta Division 1 once again approaching mid with nasty intentions. They are trying to get some early game damage on Bobby, and Kenji's going to do just that. Bobby's forced back. Moya Goku also tags him up with the uh, rather, yeah, there's a slow as well and some poison to keep him down for even longer. So a super popped by Kenji. Good kill from him onto OG as well. And once again, Zeta Division 1, they're deep in the back lines, but the same case goes for STMM. Right now, positioning is still quite good for Zar see if he can make something out of it as Moya and Kenji try to pinch him out. We'll get him out of position, but now the healing buffs come into effect and max speed helps uh, Bobby reach an extra gem. Really wants those two other gems, but it's going to be Kenji to pick them up as OG struggles to take down that gadget from Shtetempo. He's been a threat on that Janet. Not quite as dominant as in most games we've seen Zeta play, but dominant enough that 
They have the lead in this one and already a game up. OG on the right side is trying to do something. Gets exploded by the gadget from Kenji. No way. Sorry. No way. All the way in the back line. Shitampo is going to get a heist of three gems to walk out with. And Kenji has all the rest. Boy, Goku could get pinched, though, if he's not careful. Here's a shield. Czar, he has to use that final phase shifter to get to the back line. Oh. Shitampo oh. with a super away after a kill onto OG. This one's chalked. It's a runaway for Zay Division 1 and a dominant one at that. I mean, you know, I was just saying. I was just saying that we haven't seen as much of the Tempo in that opening set as we did in the previous matches of him. And then he hits us with literally the perfect play. He goes in, <laughs> kills the gem carrier in their spawn, steals the gems, gets away in a 1v2 with like 80 HP, gets a kill in the process as well. I mean, this guy is just on another level. He has perfected playing Brawl Stars. I mean, call it a flex if you want, but that's simply just good gameplay. And, you know, being that good at this game is incredibly rewarding, as we just saw very, very surgically played by Zeta Division 1. And despite us being more familiar and more comfortable with what STMN was running, it was, like I have been saying, robotic. It is just picture-perfect gameplay from Zeta Division 1. Yeah, love the confidence rising up as well as uh, the tempo and gorgeous. The, the crowd to be allowed when they have some good plays. And overall, I I, I definitely feel like SCMN had, had an absolute chance with this draft, but Zeta Division 1, just their execution is so well calculated. There's just no room for mistakes uh, in there, and SCMN were just not quite able to match that in this opening set. Well, set number two will be upon us very soon. We'll see if that momentum carries on over for Zeta Division 1 because STMN, I think they looked very uh, confident headed into that first win and got completely shut down in every single department. And we saw some good approaches and uh, to, to reiterate, confident approaches, trying to get in enemy back lines, especially OG locking himself in there for as long as he could. And despite finding 1v2 and despite surviving for a very long time, it really didn't give them any advantage, unfortunately, simply because of how good things were, most notably at mid, by Shtetampo. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I feel like his flanks were like brilliant ideas, but somehow they had Division 1 where they're like, we can coexist on this side of the map as long as you don't, you know, take down our jam carriers or, or fragilize our lanes. We're, we're fine with it. And, and somehow they were. That's the worst of it. Zeta really just feel like on another level again. And right now, Stamina, they are making sure they go into this second set as focused as possible. And I think the draft is about to kick off. We'll have to see what game mode it is as well, because something to keep in the back of our heads is that Gym Grab is actually one of Zeta Division 1's best maps, uh, or rather, one of their best modes. 71% win rates. Heist is coming up next as well. And this one is not really a standout for either team here, actually. So this has the potential to be that much more of a scrappy matchup in the second set. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see if uh, that is going to be enough to give more of a fighting chance to Stamina as we move on to some heist action. Man, we've seen a lot of interesting things here lately. Uh, I, I feel like Safe Zone has become a, a, a very fun map. We saw Colt earlier brought in by Team Kazo, nearly worked yeah. out for them as well. The Nani from SCMN uh, to counter uh, the 8-bit. We'll see if we see some of those similar IDs brought uh, onto the picture again, oh. as they will be the ones going for uh, the 8-bit this time around, compared to their previous match where they were facing it. Yeah, and I would call this a risky pick if this were not the World Finals, because to pick 8-bit first, the counters are extremely, extremely clear. If SDMN's picking this first, they have to have a very good idea that they're going to get countered and know exactly how to counter the counter. Zeta Division 1, though, are also acutely aware of this and need to plan out their next two picks according to that plan. Absolutely. So, is it going to be more along the lines of matching energy or going straight for counters and... Griff is a bit of an in-between, bringing some wall break to the table, as well as a decent amount of both DPS and sustain as he gets uh, those heals every couple of seconds with his star power. That is uh, the way to go at the moment. So I don't mind it. I think it's a, an absolutely decent pick. Uh, I, I, I prefer Brock when it comes to wall break, but it was their own ban. So I really think they wanted to avoid it being on the table. 
as they will bring Lola in as their second. We'll have to see what the approach is from SDMN to deal with this as well. Lola, not only does she offer great damage on lane, but she can block out a lot of damage with that freeze frame too. And I would say it's more than likely that Shtetapo and Kenji aren't going to have any issues switching up lanes here once things are broken down. It'll be wide open for them. Zeta Division 1, though, they have not picked a mid yet, and SDMN could swipe up really the best options here if they are playing smart about it and also make sure that they don't provide any good counter opportunities for Zeta Division 1 with their next couple of picks. Pick number two for SDMN is coming in. It's going to be Penny, actually. All right. I mean, I don't mind it. It's not necessarily something I think is necessarily the most meta brawler uh, when it comes to safe zone, uh, especially since now, I mean, they're, they're kind of forced out to bring out some sort of distraction, I would assume, uh, uh, for stamina. I, I, I think it's all right. I think the risk is that you get a bad game where you are not quite able to set up and... Okay, no disruption. Hmm. That is an interesting decision. That means that there's a lane that's pretty much just going to be free for Zeta. Well, I mean, in that case, I suppose SGMN is just really hoping that they can get those wall breaks out of Kenji before they have sort of any turret up as well, because OG will be able to throw his turret down on the right side, and that can act sort of as a brawler, as like a fourth brawler if they're careful about it. But Zeta Division 1 can still explore other options in terms of wall break. It's looking very, very slim, though, because Brock has been eliminated, and so has Colonel Ruffs. Yeah, well, we'll see the squeak as the final pick from Zeta Division 1. Looking at the draft, I kind of prefer the ideas of Zeta because it's a bit more traditional, but I, I, I do think the Penny pick here has some decent opportunities to counter the Lola, for for, for instance, and covers nicely uh, the Abit's uh, weakness of, you know, uh, the turret, which Penny can annihilate. Uh, so I think, uh, I think it, it, it's very even, at least from my perspective. But let's let the gameplay speak for itself. As set number two has just started, and Genji is pretty much just by himself on that left lane. Does have some cover to play with, and Ooh. even if he were to go down, there's no easy access to that lane for SCMN. Well, OG has moved the slow significantly over to the right side, but that has caused him to lose his mid lane for a good period of time. Thankfully, he's not completely forced off of it and is able to push up once again. Meanwhile, on the right side, Shtetapu, he has broken open the wall and he's doing a fairly good job versus Zar. Neither person really folding here, and despite the attempt at pinching Shtetapu, the guy just refuses to fall and continues to push up on the right side. He also has heals coming in at every given second. First turret comes down from OG. It's a boosted booster situation. No speed desired from that plugged in star power. The first turret also going up as well. They're just turret stacking up here and they're hoping to get a win in the mid lane or on the right side. And Zar barely survives. Just taken down by Shtetapo. Response from OG, but no damage dealt to either safe so far. Yeah, right now the positioning could favor Zeta into getting just a single tick of damage. We've seen in some matches in the past that sometimes that can be enough. And now that is going to be 2% damage on that red safe which means that Stamina can no longer only play defense. They'll need to eventually go for a push of their own, but they have plenty of time as of now, as we get into the final minute of this game. Not really much damage dealt so far, just 2% on the side of STMN. Here comes an aggro turret. It's going to get focused down by Kenji. Moya Goku also still standing by. Aggro turret again. OG has to be extremely careful. Big damage in from Shtetapo. Elimination of the turret as well, especially thanks to the ego of Moya Goku. And on the right side, Zar continues holding off Kenji, but it doesn't seem to be lasting for long as Kenji continues to move up. Here's a super in. Not any damage off of that super onto Zar or any member of STMN for that matter. 30 seconds remain. Not a scratch from STMN. Him in on Zeta Division 1 safe. It could be a 2% victory, but with how far pushed up Zeta Division 1 is, that could not be the case at all. Yeah, this is going to be tough. It's a very narrow lead for Zeta. A single tag on that safe could turn things around, but they do need that one tag on the side of SCMN, and they just don't have the HP to make it happen. Bobby left alone will get another kill, but I don't think he'll get anywhere near that safe, and that is going to be Zeta Division 1 was yet another game that's three in a row now. Talk about a scrappy game there as well. It was so even throughout the entire game, and it really only started to fall apart there towards the end where 
SCMN, no doubt, said, wait, guys, we need damage on the safe. We're behind by 2%. We haven't even touched theirs. And then it all just started to crumble from there. They have to take in a different approach this time. And it looks like Zar is going to be starting off on the left side, hoping to get some easy pot shots up mid. Didn't seem to work out for him either. And things have doubled up on the right side in an unfortunate way for SCMN. They're going to lose this mid fight at the beginning of the game, it looks like, unless Bobby is able to hold off a lot of people on his own. Yeah, OG trying to get towards that first damage booster. Already some damage on save that's quite a bit faster than the previous game. But is that going to be enough as the tempo gets oh, a clean man. kill on the right lane? Oh, no. Bobby is trying to find an angle. They should be able to find a pinch on the tempo, but he gets a super down and oh, he chains it! The tempo finds the kill, gets a ton of damage on save, and out of nowhere, uh, almost 40 percent lead now in favor of Zeta. And one more takedown on the right side as Bobby falls. Moy Goku just barely alive by the skin of his teeth. Kenji, meanwhile, on the left side. This is why we saw the squeak pick. It was very clear that Zar was going to try and place his turret in a place where it was very hard to reach, and Squeak is able to shoot through those walls, but Zar's gonna get some solid damage on that safe. Meanwhile, it's Bobby and OG's responsibility to defend things, and they're getting so much damage in here, but their safe is crumbling as we speak. 54% left on SCMN safe, and Zeta Division 1 are only behind by 2%. What a comeback from Stamina. Nearly out of trouble, but not just yet, as Bobby takes a lot of damage, gets shut down, and that is a big elimination to find for Zeta. The tempo with another super on safe, giving a 2% lead to Zeta Division 1 for now. A beautiful barrel from Zar there to just one shot that ego from Moya Goku. The tempo looking to get some better positioning, but running out of opportunities for the time being. One more time there. 2% behind again. Shitampo on the left side is able to help Moya Goku take down this turret. Zar needs to find some area to enter. Bobby continues to charge forward as OG has a super. They can rain down so much damage and they don't have much time to do it. Shitampo, he's silenced, but down goes Bobby. Shitampo continues to take damage, but Zar is just not going to be able to do this. Here comes the freeze frame on the right side. OG takes a lot of damage. Shitampo falls. Just a few seconds left and only a 5% differential. Bobby's going to go for it. He's charging forward, but Moya Goku wants this. Here comes the damage through. No, Shitampo arrives just in time and an 11 percent differential towards the end gets the second set victory for zeta division one stmn are on the verge of defeat as zeta division one secures a second set and now there is literally no more room for mistakes for the north american team this is the highest that this roster has ever gone in top uh, eight is where they placed last year. They really want to go all the way or at least to the grand finals. But right now they need three sets in a row if they want to shut down the powerhouse of the Zeta Division 1. Well, we know what that could look like for SDM, and we know what it's looked like in their very last match as well, except that was versus Team Queso, which is not Zeta Division 1 and I would not really place on the same level as Zeta Division 1 either. To, no, to no be one frank would. here, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, much respect to the guys. However, Zeta Division 1, they are just different, and the stats seem to tell a similar story. But when we look at STMN, by and large, higher average DPS, it looks like. And I think a lot of that just came down to Zeta Division 1 getting that damage when it mattered the most. Yeah, I, I, I think it's also about the positioning, right? The most part, uh, the fights were on the top side of the map, which means that STMN, even if they go down, they respawn quicker, get quicker back into the action, get more damage. But uh, they don't get any sort of damage on save from those sort of encounters, right? Because they're in defense the time that they get towards the enemy safe. We saw in the first game, they didn't even hit the safe. And in the second one, they did. But I mean, it, it still was Zeta Division 1 that took it. And right now, they are on fire, building up a ton of momentum and stamina. They need a miracle here in this third set. They really do. Well, thankfully, maps like these kind of offer those knockout as well. Unfortunately for Zeta Division 1, this is actually their least consistent map. 44% win rate for knockout. And for SDMN, nothing really special to speak of on Knockout. Not the best, not the worst. And Knockout, of course, it's one of the newest in the game. It is the newest mode in competitive. And as a result, once again, a little bit less consistent. This is where SDMN can bring it back. The odds, I think, are really, really in SDMN's favor here compared to other maps and modes that could be approaching.
I, I don't disagree there. We'll, we'll be starting off with our draft here as we have a both first pick from STM men. They also banned out Grom, Tick and Sprout, hating the throwers on the North American side. And Zeta Division 1 ban out Nani, Brock and Tick. Well, we've seen how that matchup can also go. It can just be particularly irritating to face with versus a sort of thrower meta on this map and attempt to guess what your opponent is trying to go for. In this case, SCMN, they're not taking any risks in that department, but they are still losing the opportunity to ban out some of the more important brawlers. STMN, they've already gotten that first pick and of Bo, of course, Zeta Division 1 now considering their second pick as well. All right, well, let's see what comes next as Right now, we have an invisible brawl. It's a Leon. <laughs> it's a Leon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they, they say you could be a mystery like Mameshi, but I mean, Mameshi's not on the team, but it's certainly a mystery, right? Yeah, it's a Janet, it seems like. Uh, but we will uh, get that sorted out in just a second. The second pick for Zeta Division 1 is incoming. And that is going to be the Otis brought back into the action. And we've seen how much Zeta Division 1 loves it. It's one of the most picked brawlers, most banned brawlers too, in the entirety of the World Finals this year. It's just in a really good place, whether it's from a utility standpoint with the mute and also uh, with the gadget, or just uh, from the pure damage and mechanics of the brawler itself. Well, here's the STM and Piper, and that's gotta be Bobby switching onto that brawler, but I mean, it wouldn't be the first time in history that we've seen another player from STM and switch onto that brawler instead. That said, once again, a comfort pick for these guys. The bow definitely raises some eyebrows for me, however, but I think it can still be quite uh, viable if they're, you know, playing things quite carefully and trying to go for some more inventive wall break here. Last pick will be coming in from STM very, very soon. They have to make sure that they don't leave too many vulnerabilities open for the Piper, and here comes the Penny as a final pick from STMN. Though I don't see a whole lot of things to deal with some close range brawlers, not even gonna be a concern, however. Zeta Division 1, they go with the squeak once again. All right, I mean, I like the squeak. Again, uh, against uh, the Penny, I think it can do just wonders, right? Take down the turret very easily, uh, depending on where it's placed, but it, it has a bit of an edge uh, to that extent. And I, I, I don't mind the bow, but I, I also don't know if it's necessarily gonna be that game-changing, especially against a team like Zeta Division 1 that are incredibly focused and so good at the jukes in the first place. Well, we got to see some jukes here because SCMN, they do have a lot of range to work with here. Moya Goku also pushes up around the top left side. Meanwhile, Bobby faced in a 1v1 towards the bottom side, it appears, with the squeak just off screen, but that's exactly how Zeta Division 1 like it. They have to lock down this lane the entire game because that's simply how squeak operates. You can consistently spam your shots at one area and deny it for the entire game unless you make a mistake, which Unfortunately for SCMN, Zeta Division 1 simply don't do. And we see it in the positioning as well. SCMN, they have backed up so, so much. Right now, OG needs to be careful. His positioning is the weakest out of everyone on both teams. Does seem to get away with it for now, but he takes a decent bit of damage. Bobby going for a wet flank on the right-hand side, but no target available. And it is going to be Zarin instead that is the first to fall as the tempo flies over, finds another kill, Bobby will go down to the gas, and that means that Zeta take the first round. And just like that, they are one round away from heading on to a match point. It's not looking fantastic for STMN. Thankfully for them, they do have a super to work with now. A little bit of damage dealt by Bobby as well with the homemade recipe. OG also trying to flank around the bottom side. Poppin used as well to break things open, but not the biggest wall break in the world. Kenji and Moya Goku still have something to work with. Turret also trying to lay into these enemies, but Kenji knows exactly what to do here. One, two, three shots, and it's down just like in Heist. OG continues to try and get some damage on the bottom side, but he's simply outranged by Shtetampo and won't be afforded any mines. STMN desperately want to find some sort of opening. As of right now, any opportunity has yet to present itself. And it's still very much a max range game and a couple of tags here and there that help you get towards some supers. Bobby. Nearly gets that elimination, but Moya Goku survives with 500 HP and stays in the mix. It's closing in now, and that damage advantage that Piper gets for being further away is diminishing. One, two kills, traded out, and it's a 2v2 now. Zar needs damage. No, here it comes. Jump in from Bobby. He knows that this one's chalked, and it's a Zeta Division 1 victory. Five game victories in a row for Zeta Division 1. 
Stamina have yet to take a game, and now they are facing match point in favor of Zeta Division 1. That is a terrifying look for Zeta. Let's see, uh, for SCMN rather, let's see if they manage to do something about it or if Zeta will go unchallenged to the grand finals. Well, here's the approach around the left side this time. STMN switching things up and Zeta Division 1 continue to reactively play very well, but they have taken a lot of damage. Could just be a bait, though, as they back up and STMN to begin to go forward, abandoning post of that turret on the back left side. Bobby also has a super to work with. A little damage dealt there by Moya Goku to force the guy back a little bit more. Destruction of the turret as well as a fat splatter comes out. Kenji continues to push things in towards the bottom side. And Zeta Division oh, 1, Bobby. oh, wow! The big tap from Bobby! And now it's brought to a 2v3. How does he hit those as Zart finds the tempo? And finally, something seems to be going the way of Stamina as they are in a three versus one. And Moya Goku chooses the gas. Does get some tags off onto Zart and unlocks his super that he can carry over to round number two. Looks like the Oda Super was not too much of a concern for SDMN because they had to know that that was going to be afforded to Moya Goku if they decided to push in. They really do need this Penny Super in order to get good control. That's the last fat splatter for Moya Goku, and it's really going to be only Kenji that can effectively take down a Penny Mortar if it comes up there. The Bow Mine's down as well. Zara continues to push through mid to try and get some shots in, but Zeta Division 1 know too well exactly what fate awaits them if they let it charge up, and here it comes. Turret going down on the left side, and Zeta Division 1 run for cover. So far, it's looking fairly even. The tempo aggressing a little bit and it's gonna take it into the skies as we get some damage over onto OG. A gadget to tank that shot from Bobby. Doesn't tank the next one, but will survive with 600 HP. There is that super still available on the Otis. A mute that could be game changing but so far is being disciplined and not wasting it. Zeta Division 1 still patiently awaiting their moment. Take down on Tomoya Goku. Still two more for SDMN to start taking this back. A take down to Shetampo and Genji's the last one. Take down with the Piper Super and SDMN have extended the match point. It's like deja vu. It's the same thing that we've seen versus Team Queso. I, I, Reddy, I know you are North American and you are very enthusiastic and optimistic. But that's one game. <laughs> There's been five for Zeta Division 1 before that. I want to believe you already. I want to be with you <laughs> for this one. But until they take the set, I'm not going to call it too early because it's still match point and it kicks off with a man advantage in favor of Zeta Division 1 as the tempo opens the scoreboard. SGMN, their best bet at this point is just to get their supers and cut their losses. They're going to have to win two rounds in a row. Missed gadget there for Bobby as Moya Goku ducks and covers at just the right moment. And another shot baited out by Shitempo, but he does end up wasting a turret along the way. Not too much of a loss for Zeta Division 1, though, because they pretty much do have this round here in their back pocket with such a heavy advantage. Though, STMN, they're not giving up just yet. Another turret falls from Shitempo, and he only has one left for the entire game. OG also has his mines. He might not use them just yet, as it feels very outmatched for STMN at this point. Yeah, they want to just save their supers for the next run, but they also want to see if they can get any sort of opportunities. Like, wow, the tempo nearly going down. Bobby will, uh, in fact, full OG follows up next. And now Zeta Division 1 are one round away from making it to the grand finals once again. All they need is this one round. Well, it's not over yet for SDMN either because they are fighters. Czar towards the top side has that turret down as well. It's actively seeking a target on the right side of the map. And SDMN, once again, they need to win two rounds in a row to take this one back. And they feel super, super outmatched. Moya Goku also is firmly locked in mid, trying to get some diagonal shots in, not too much so far. Aggressive mines are going to break open some important walls as well. And Zeta Division 1 have to continue falling back. They need something on the side of STMN, anything at this point. But they cannot afford to lose this one round. Mine will be finally defused. And right now, Bobby needs to tread things carefully. Gets a nice tang onto Moya Goku, but that ends there. 
Bobby has a super as well. If he wants to break open the walls, great dodge of that super. Rather, that shot from Bobby from Shitapu. He's looking for damage. One shot onto Bobby. The landing. OG goes down. Bobby jumps onto Kenji. Oh! oh my gosh! And the clutch from STMN to win this round. They're going to round three. Wow! Bobby saves it for STMN. Let's see if that is going to be enough because they need another round to secure this set. And Bobby off the bat here, low HP. Needs to fall back and heal up as Zor goes for a bit of a flank, but decides to reveal himself now as OG places down some more mines down in the mid. And STMN are focused like never before. They know that this could be their chance to start a comeback. Unfortunate loss of the turret for STMN as well. And Zay Division 1 appears to have the advantage in this match as long as they're careful about these mines. They, go, they know that there's no tripwire active, so they can bait them out. But Bobby is patiently waiting that predictable movement when you bait out one of those mines from Bo. Still, though, Zay Division 1, they can't really walk on this mid area. And STMN are trying to keep them at bay as long as possible. This is a golden moment for Shitetapo. One tap from Bobby, but it's not enough to take down the likes of Shitetampo. And only one mine remains at mid. But the poison is closing things in. It all comes down to this. If SCMN don't take this, then the Zeta Division 1 moves on to the Grand Finals. Big damage in. Shitapo's the one remaining. He's going to have to make it happen again. Bobby looks for it. Here it oh! comes. Open and the clutch. SCMN, they're going on around four. Bobby is playing out of his mind. The close range Piper hits again for the second round in a row and saves STMN from a certain demise. They take a set and now suddenly there is some light at the end of the tunnel. They say NA Hope and NA Hope has come true but only for one more set as they were at the brink of defeat two times in a row facing that match point and with only one round to go. Amazing clutches that we've seen from STMN but for Zeta Division 1, it's just another day at work. STMN, they're really, really on the ropes. Can we just talk about how ridiculous Bobby's gameplay is on that Piper? Like, it's not just that he's hitting ridiculous shots, which he always is, but Piper is supposed to be weak in Endgame. It's yeah. not supposed to be the closer. It's not supposed to be the one that closes out those rounds for your team. And he does it twice in a row to bring his team just a step closer from, from the Grand Finals, a step closer to remaining relevant in this match. As we see there, the instant tap as he lands. I'm sure he's never spanned his auto-aim as much as in that moment. Look at that one as well, pop in to clutch up that final game there. Just amazing stuff. And when we take a look at the kills as well, it's looking very, very good for Zeta Division 1. Most importantly for Moya Goku and Shitampo. From the perspective of Kenji, looks like a bit of a rough set as well. One kill, only 30 DPS. From the perspective of STMN, though, this is definitely a Bobby set. Five kills, 145 DPS, the most in the entire set. Looking good for this guy. If he continues to pop off, then STMN might actually have a chance. Yeah, he's been performing at the World Finals so far. So as OG, to be fair, six kills to his name, matching the tempo and Moya Goku's. But now, STMN, they need to, you know, slow things down and make sure they get everything done right, especially in this draft process. When you are trying to achieve a reverse sweep, the worst thing that can happen is to uh, draft yourself and mess things up in the draft process. Well, hopefully they don't do that, at least for their own sake. But for the side of Zeta Division 1, I doubt they would mind. Here are the bans from their side. Buster, Sprout, and Brock eliminated by Zeta Division 1 from the side of STMN. Otis and Janet and Gus are out of the question. Zeta Division 1 coming in with their first pick, and it is going to be Penny. And with the Brock band out from them as well, this is exactly what they were hoping for. You have to make sure that wall break does not screw up your Penny and turret positioning. And STMN, they're certainly aware of that, but we don't see the squeak pick just yet. And as we've seen proven by Zeta Division 1, that could be a fairly strong pick into a brawler such as Penny. Yeah, what I do love a lot about Penny on Dueling Beetles is that the, the areas where you typically will put your turrets on, on the left and right side of the map are areas that even if they get broken up, you don't really care too much. Sure, your turret is going to be exposed, but it's not an area where you care about those walls, you know what I mean? So it will 
re requires some sort of utility to take out, and in a way is a, is a waste of that. And Griff is not really going to be capable to do that in the first place, as he's not going to walk all the way there. So. He's great on this map, great in this position. You can decide to open up your own walls or your opponents, depending on what you want to bring to the table. But I think Squeak uh, is something that, again, is going to be directly uh, related with dealing with that penny and making sure that no mortars are going to be a huge threat. And, and I think Zeta Vision 1 really did force S Demon's hand here because you have to do something versus the penny here, and the wall break is simply not an option in this respect. And this means that Zeta Vision 1, they can go some brawlers that they're relatively comfortable with, especially when we see Stetanfro on that Carl. That's something that he's very comfortable with, and it's also something that does fairly well into Squeak, especially if you gadget in and then immediately super. Here's a Meg, though, and that's a big one. Yeah. This is much more unexpected, to be honest. I mean, we've seen it on Ring of Fire a decent bit, but this is a map where we don't really uh, see it all that often. However, it's probably Shtetempo playing it. He played it on Ring of Fire earlier today against Reply Totem, and he was doing absolute wonders with it. Had even an entire team wipe just on his own, and I wouldn't be shocked to see the mech work on this map too. Well, we have to see what they pair up with it as well, because Poco's still an option. Wow, and yeah, there it comes. But you have to see the response of B on the opposing side effect. I think this is pretty much a gimme for STMN, considering that they have Griff to break open walls and they have B to lock things down as well. It might be a hazard for them to face versus Kenji because he can block out some shots with that spawnable. But aside from that, this might just be an invitation to play B. We've seen how B can fare at land, though, when you're able to dodge out those shots more effectively because there's zero ping and all of that kind of business. Zeta Vision 1, they got to be confident. No, actually, a Carl pick, actually, from STMN. I think it's not bad, you know? It, it has a pretty decent matchup. Actually, a great matchup against the Poco. Uh, against the Mag, it's a bit more complicated because, in the end, Mag has kind of a great matchup against everyone inside of her Mag and a bad matchup against everyone outside of her Mag. So it, it, it's a much more situational, and it does uh, quite well against the Penny as well. So I, I like what I'm seeing on both sides. I feel like SCMN might have a slightly better draft, but Zeta Division 1 is more unpredictable. Well, here comes the wall break already on the side of STMN. They gotta be cautious about this as well. OG on the right side, he cannot afford to feed those two super, supers to Shtetampo, who's an incredibly skilled mechanical player when it comes to these aggro brawlers. And of course, he's gonna be on the aggro Poco, but the aggression gets the best of Zeta Division oh. 1 here. One, two kills. Shtetampo, no, Zara abandons ship. I'm not feeding you a super for free. Not today, Shtetampo. STMN, they are gonna be trying to take back this lead and they are about to match the capture percentage of Zeta Division 1 so far. Now coming barely ahead. The tempo is playing Da Capo on the on the Poco, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, he was shooting at his teammates, so that might be that stamina though in the lead so far. And I love the idea of opening up your own walls. It gives you more space to dodge and navigate through the map. Moya is in his mech now, but already half HP. Let's see if he can find some more value with it as he is getting up close, but not really finding any sort of success just yet. Zara goes in, finds a kill. Genji trying to get the trade with the mortar, but not quite able to do so just yet. And Stamina are building up more and more of a massive blade. Genji is one shot, but he survives for now. OG taking major damage, and Stapo taps him up for one, two shots in a row. And Zeta-1 begin to take back the control. Moya Goku also now in the mech, getting a ton of health from using that super. Bobby can try and slow things down. Two taps oh, onto oh, Stapo. Oh, oh, he oh. tried to counter it out, but that's not how the gadget works, man. Kenji also on the left side, barely hanging on by a threat. Moya Goku on the right, forced back very effectively. STM and they are in the lead here so far, but it could just be temporary. Zeta Vision 1, they prepare for that final push in. Zar looks for the kill. Shitampo barely oh. stays alive. Big value, though, from the super from OG. A little knockback on the boy Goku. Shitampo stays alive. Another super in from OG. Here's the wall break as well. Zeta Division 1, they are incredibly close, but STM didn't seem to have the mid control. Zar is popping off now on the call as well. And that team wipe is going to secure it for stamina. They are now one game away 
from tying things up, pushing things all the way to a fifth set. What did you say about a reverse sweep? Huh? What did you say about a reverse sweep? Okay. I said I wanted to believe in it. <laughs> I said I wanted to believe in it. I said I'll wait until they take the first. I will, you know what? I will patiently, I will patiently wait. That said, Zeta Division 1, they are still in this game, but we, I think for the first time in a while, start to see some blunders arise on Zeta Division 1 and some unusual things as well. DeCapo, also the use of the Poco gadget was a bit interesting as well. Here's a takedown of Kenji on the left lane as well. Shidetampo is very low, but Moyo Goku is going to be his personal bodyguard, trying to tank a lot of that damage as well. Can't really risk getting too much supercharge to your enemies because Bobby already has his, but Moyo Goku is tanking like a madman, and SD Man has not even stepped foot on this point. Yeah, this is a much more convincing game here from Zeta Division 1 as they've had so much early control and been able to absolutely dominate going in the center of the map past 50% now and Stamina has yet to step into the zone and Moya is not gonna let Zara get even a single percent. This might be 100 to zero. This is the most dominating game of Hot Zone that we've seen for the entire World Finals, and it could end at 100 to 0 as well to bring Zeta Division 1 to a match point. Zar's looking for anything and everything, but he's not going to get it. OG is really the last hope here. Does manage to step on the point and get just a single percent, and that's the last percent they're going to get for this whole game. Zeta Division 1, they bring back the momentum, and it's a match point incoming. What a way to answer from Zeta Division 1. Go from a loss to 100% to one. That's a 99% lead for Zeta Division One in that game. And STMN, they absolutely need to reconsider their plans this time around. This cannot happen again because it's once again match point for Zeta Division One. Zara takes it all the way up into Zeta 1's back lines, getting some solid damage from the back as well. Moy Goku immediately dispels that turret too. A little bit of uh, piggy bank action on that back left as well. Kenji gets great stuff in close range as well. Zara goes for one, two, oh! go! There it is! Barely hangs on by a thread, but a victory is a victory, and SMN regain mid control. Zara has been insane! on the call in this series. He's going for another one. This time around, will be patient, will get out of there, keep some uh, discipline. And so far, it is Stamina in the lead. Stadempo is pushing forward. They need to be careful inside of Stamina as Moya Goku does have a super as well. He's going aggressive, gets out of the mech. Stadempo one shot, Zar takes care of him. And so far, still so good for Stamina, but Zeta Division 1 are really close percentage rise and now taking over the lead. Moya Goku uses Super to negate the slow from Squeak Super. Brilliant plays here, and now he's forcing Zar into that back right corner. Zeta 1 to take a very convincing lead over SDMN so far by the point perspective, and Moya Goku is actually about to pop out of this mech. OG continues to force things back. Good taps from Bobby, but Moya's not done yet. There he goes. Here's the Super in from Zar. Denial of Shitapo. SDMN, they have mid control once again, but it could only be temporary. This is where things might get turned around as Stamina now have a good foothold in the mid, but the tempo does have a Poco Super that he can be incredibly clutch. He's trying to get some damage dealt overall, but he goes down to Zar without using his Super, and Zar does end up getting traded out, but in the meantime, Stamina have overtaken the lead. OG still trying to create some space. HP-wise, it's a bit miserable on the side of Stamina. They're forced out of the zone, and Zeta Division 1 are getting closer and closer to the finish line. The Super from OG as well. Is it gonna be enough? It seems like Zeta Division 1 will end it right here, right now. Stamina are out, and Zeta Division 1 are going to the Grand Finals once more. The world of finalists are back at it again. They have their sights set on the grand finals. One of the inevitabilities of Brawl Stars is Zeta in the finals, and it has already come to fruition. Zeta won such a dominating team here, and as much as we can believe in the NA Hope, not this year, at least not in our first semifinal, because our second semifinal has a bit more of that East Asia versus NA vibes. But for now, Zeta Division 1 remain victorious. Yeah, you can still have some hope, ready. Okay. Uh, unlike me, who is heartbroken forever, you are still allowed to have some hope. As Strike <laughs> will be uh, playing in just a bit. But what a phenomenal performance from Zeta Division One! And uh, just a huge thank you to Stamina as well for this unbelievable match and 
for showing up with such a performance after losing five games in a row. They do still manage to challenge Data Division 1 and make them sweat. And there's very few people in the world that can, uh, you know, actually say that. And what a challenge it was, evidently, for Zeta Division 1. Okay, this isn't really the best example, okay? 93 to 1%. Okay, yeah, maybe we, we sweep that one under the rug, but uh, yeah, a bit of a bit of sweeping action there at the beginning for Zeta Division 1, too, right? STMN, however, I mean, what a scrappy matchup for the guys. They really did bring their all, and the third seed in North America, what a strong showing for such a team. Absolutely so. I mean, no one, uh, you know, ever considered Stamina as Ooh. a third seed. Czar, man, I told you, he was popping off. I was asking for it all day long. I wanted to see Czar play at his best, and he delivered in this final set. It wasn't quite enough, unfortunately, for Stamina, but he can go home with his head proud, you know, because until then he had struggled more than his teammates, whether it was in this or in the other matches. Uh, so I think they can all go home very proud, and they made the entirety of NA proud. Shitapo Kenji Moyogoku in the grand finals, STMN bringing the NA vibes to the semifinals. Really no complaints here. However, one thing has been decided so far, and that is that Zeta Division 1 are headed on to the grand finals. Who awaits them? Well, either Zeta Division 0 or Tribe Gaming NA. Our second semifinal is going to get started very, very soon. And like I said, it's more East Asia vibes versus NA vibes. Man, I talked to the manager of Zeta Division on the first day, and I told him, who, who do you think is making the finals? And he was there like, Zeta versus Zeta. <laughs> and, and I was there like, nah, there, there's no way, right? Like the odds that they are actually both undefeated, it's a single elimination bracket. One team makes a couple mistakes, it's over. Yeah. And it's looking realistic now. It's actually looking like a possibility for Zeta. I mean, we, we talked to Zeta in the finals, this, that, this, that, but I mean, could it just be another East Asia monthly finals where we've seen Zeta versus Zeta every single month? Maybe so, maybe so. It's gonna come down to one match because it's not a chalk decision just yet. Tribe Gaming NA and Zeta Division Zero have a say in this matter. And so far, Tribe Gaming NA, they did get a bit of an upset versus SK. Certainly not an upset for the NA folks among us, but for I think the rest of the world, high expectations set for SK in that previous grudge match. Yeah, it was a big grudge match, right? Because if you look at Worlds 2021, it was Shrive and A that beat SK Gaming in the first round. SK did get their revenge at MSI, uh, that time breaking, you know, NA fans' hearts. But this year, <laughs> it's back to SK uh, being heartbroken. It, it, it feels like Tribe Gaming win the ones that matter. Pretty much, pretty, yeah, well, well, we'll see if that they matter win. the most. Okay, we'll see if they can matter when it matters the most, right? Which is right here. They have the potential to deny a Zeta v Zeta in the grand finals, and that's a huge opportunity. But of course, I mean, there's prize money at stake. There's fame and glory at stake as well. But we have to see how things have been going along on the prediction side of things, because we have gotten some pretty solid things in here. Uh, not really me. I, I say we, I say we, but I really mean that you are an Uber. So, so you won. Stamina against Zeta 1 and Zeta 0 against Tribe NA. Yeah. It's like you're supporting the homies, but not too much. Hey, 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 <laughs> you know, you know, you know. You, well, 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 I did, uh, I did vote SK. I don't know, maybe the NA vibes just weren't really flowing today, but. Fair enough, fair if, enough. If the team I predict doesn't win, then that means that NA takes it, right? Well, we'll see, we'll <laughs> see, we'll see. I'm not sure about the logic there, but yeah. This is going to be an incredible semi-final. Tribe Gaming NA, I mean, not only did they look absolutely insane against Navi, like they actually destroyed them. Now, after that match against SK, where they were also quite dominant, I could see them taking down Zeta Division Zero because they're the best hope that, you know, any other region has to do so. It is very, very realistic that Tribe NA could take this team down, but it's certainly going to be a close match. We have to get this match underway. Let's welcome this all to the stage. Et oui, on est de retour sur la scène au milieu de la foule. Est-ce qu'on est chaud pour la demi-finale? Toujours, depuis le début. La première demi-finale a vu la première partie de la Zeta Division se qualifier. On va peut-être avoir une finale entièrement japonaise ou peut-être que Tribe Gaming va nous sauver. Mais c'est l'heure d'accueillir la deuxième version de Zeta Division. Ils aimeraient rejoindre leurs compatriotes en grande finale. Un max de bruit, s'il vous plaît, pour Zeta Division Zero 
a sister team of now a grand finalist in this year's World Finals. Tensai, Achapi, Kuru, two World Finalists already. And Kuru, the new addition to the roster, who has also been blowing us away so far. Yeah, this is a fantastic roster, and they've proven to us as well that they didn't need the tempo to be a successful team. They were able to carry their own weight and get here independently. And uh, it, it's a beautiful story, actually, the Zeta Division. They wanted to play with their friends and decided to split despite being world <laughs> champions. And now they have an opportunity to reunite again at the Grand Finals. But first, they got to take down Tribe Gaming NA. Speaking of which, let's bring Tribe Gaming NA on the stage. Évidemment, on est avec nos supporters préférés. Il fallait bien. On est chaud au milieu de la foule. Un max de bruit. Parce qu'on va en avoir besoin. Voilà, voilà. Encore, encore. Allez, allez. Tribe Gaming NA! Incredibly enthusiastic Tribe fans. And we all know how much their support means for the guys in red. They are all that stands between, you know, uh, it being a full-on Japanese grand final. They are the final uh, chance to, uh, you know, make something happen against that. But uh, they're legendary players in their own rights. We have uh, the notorious tyrant, obviously the land demon Zulan, and the rookie as Livy, which has surpassed himself to an intro this year. Those guys are incredibly good at this game, but are they gonna be good enough to beat Zeta Division Zero? <sighs> it's a difficult question, ready? Two world finalists from last year, plus Ez Livy, this new addition to the roster who has been just popping off, especially on certain brawlers, which I am sure we will get the chance to see today. An absolute powerhouse of NA and the single most consistent team in that region as well. If SDMN is able to make it this far and Tribe Gaming NA is the most dominant team in North America, that might be something to say. But that last match that we saw was quite dominant on the Zeta side of things. And you said that the Zeta division uh, coach said it himself, Zeta Division Zero being the dominant team of the two. Will that come to fruition in this showdown between them and Tribe Gaming NA? I, I, I think dominant between the two Zetas is, is a big word to use, right? Because they are literally like so evenly matched, it feels like. But uh, I, I, I guess we got a bit of a Zeta Division recap to give a look at, see how they got here and, and some of their best plays. Let's check it out. So far, I mean, amazing, amazing stuff today from both teams, but Zeta Division Zero, they did really impress us versus Tribe Gaming EU. Certainly a fan favorite on the side of Tribe Gaming EU and a dominant performance by Zeta Division Zero. They started off with a very convincing set here on Canal Grand and I think really did blow us away. This was a close one right here as well, but the beginning of the games, they were very, very strong for Zeta Division Zero on such a map like this. Yeah, th th this match is also gonna be an opportunity for Tribe Gaming uh, NA to get revenge for their sister team, uh, the European Tribe roster that uh, just lost to Zeta Division Zero. It, it, it wasn't the closest match. It really felt like Zeta woke up after a bit of a scrappy day one. Uh, they are now really warmed up and Tribe Gaming NA are gonna have to show their best performance to just be competitive. Well, they're not the only contender in the showdown here. Tribe Gaming NA has had their fair share of good plays today, especially versus SK Gaming. And guys, we were in the green room and each of us was cheering for our own region's teams and cheering for our predictions to come true as well. And this one, we were for certain it was going to go to a set number five. This grudge match was not, not only so entertaining, but it really did reveal just how strong Tribe Gaming NA stacks up against the rest of the world. And it's something that they need to prove and it's something that we need to see to believe in them in this matchup versus Z0. Here's the thing, I predicted against Tribe Gaming NA twice in these World Finals, they proved me wrong twice. I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> this time around, I'm putting my money on Tribe Gaming NA and I'll be cheering for the North American side of thing while remaining totally unbiased. But man, what a semi-final this is. Are we gonna see the old Zeta Division Grand Final 
or will we finally have a North American team in the Grand Finals? Well, that question is going to be answered shortly as we're getting ready for that very first set shortly. But this one is going to be really interesting. Once again, we've seen Tribe Gaming in A. They're a very passionate team. They're a very skilled team. They're incredibly intense when it comes to Zeta Division Zero. One of their biggest strengths also is not only just the legions of fans that they have at their backs, but also that they play just mechanically perfect. We see almost zero mistakes. They've been described as just robots. It's the exact same case for Zeta Division One, but with Zeta Division Zero just squeaking ahead of Zeta Division uh, with, with Zeta Vision Zero just squeaking ahead versus Zeta Vision 1, at least according to the coach, it does give me a bit more faith in Z0 in this matchup. Yeah, here's the thing, you know, whereas it does feel at times like Zeta Division 1 relies maybe a little bit too much on the tempo performing when he has an off day, when, True. you know, he's not quite feeling in his element, then suddenly they start losing much more consistently, whereas Zeta Division uh, 0 are just more, you know, spread out throughout the team where everyone uh, participates pretty much just as much and brings just as much to the table. You have less of that one superstar player, Tensai Achapi Kuru, just incredible uh, players by their own rights. Crow is going to be our first pick here on Open Zone, and it's going to be Tribe Gaming and they bringing him to the table. They will ban Max, Squeak, and Meg, you know, taking some learnings from our previous uh, match for sure, as Zeta Division Zero also ban out the Meg, but also add B and Poco to the list. Here comes another pick from Zeta Division Zero as well. And Crow on this map can be very, very dominant. Otis' response from Zeta Division Zero, simply an all-around consistent brawler. One that I'm a little surprised to not see so far is actually Amber, a very popular pick in North America. She hasn't been banned out either, so I wonder if that is to come later in the draft. But the same old consistent stuff from Zeta Division Zero, they've been rocking it lately with the Gus and with the Otis. Overall, strong brawlers, strong players mechanically on these brawlers. They're also afforded a last pick to counter out things from Tribe Gaming NA, which we cannot sleep on. Yeah, definitely so. Strategizing on the side of a Tribe, and they'll be bringing out the Amber, which I think is quite a strong pick. I mean, it's a very North American pick, too, on the, on the, on the hot zone. Just very often brought to the table for its aggressiveness. When you put pop a gadget, you'll have that extra movement speed. The super reload as well is just incredibly strong. And this is a good way to deal with some of the, uh, you know, more aggressive ideas that Zeta might want to bring to the table. And Bell is going to be the final kill, whether it's the mark or the bouncing shots. A lot of value can be found on that brawler, a very versatile brawler that doesn't really have too many, you know, big time counters. Well, Zeta Zero have to get creative with how they're going to play versus these brawlers because in a lot of ways it does come down to the lane matchup. They got to get some more range in here. Bonnie is going to be their approach here, and I definitely like this. It is going to be outranged a lot of the time by Tyrant and Izlivi, but when Bonnie does get that super, it can feel at times like a free kill as long as you land at the perfect area. There's still counterplay for Tribe Gaming in A, but the counter is clear here for Kuru. We could see some switch ups as well on some of these particular brawlers, but a brawler that stands out to me, a brawler and player pairing that stands out to me is Tyrant actually on the Amber. At least uh, anecdotally, he's very frustrating to play versus on this brawler. I expect to see exactly that. Yeah, it's interesting to see the Bonnie uh, brought into the mix because it's a brawler we have just very barely seen so far in the World Finals. It used to be a staple of the meta that has changed quite a bit, but let's see if it pops off here as Tyrant is going to be traded out for Kuru. And that gives the opportunity for Zeta Division Zero to just remain in that zone and extend that lead nearly at 40% now before Tribe even step into the zone. They'll get their first percentages now, but as Livy falls, Guru found one, he finds the second as well. The fire will take him out with them, but right now it's still Zeta in the zone, it's still Zeta dominating. Incredibly dominant so far for Zeta Division Zero. Tribe Gaming in A, though, they are starting to fight back, but it might even be too late. A choppy takes major damage down, goes Tyrant as well. Kuru looking for anything as he extends the lead over Tribe Gaming in A. And here comes Zulon up the right side as well, but he is outranged on some of these matchups, and he's getting largely ignored by Tensai. Great use of the fast splatter by a choppy too on the right side. Good stuff from Tyrant as well as he continues to burn down the bushes. Missed Mark as well by Aslivi, and good taps from Tensai too are looking quite convincing for Z0. This is still a massive lead for Zeta, even though things have been looking 
even just a little bit better uh, now for Tribe. I don't know if that is going to be nearly enough as Zulan is incredibly low HP and Zeta are back in the zone. That mute is going to be deadly for as Levy not enough HP to tank it. Tyrant falls next. This should be a first game locked in for Zeta Division Zero and Tribe honestly not really in their game just yet. It's almost as if Tribe Gaming, they're really, really wiped out after SK as well. And we need to see that kind of energy brought to the stage as well. It's either that or Zeta Vision Zero simply are on that different level because that sort of lead where there was only really a little bit of percentage brought in there towards the end by Tribe Gaming in a, it's not a good look at all in spite of what seemed to be a pretty promising pick phase. Well, let's see if Tribe Gaming and A can start things off better here in game two. At least they have the lead for now, but it's only 10%. A couple nest eggs already placed down in the mid. Tensai low HP, Tensai falls to as Livy. And things are finally going in the direction of Tribe Gaming as they're starting to build more and more of a lead. A Choppy trying to catch Tyrant off guard, but the burn connects and a Choppy falls with it. And here are all these nest eggs as well at mid. Tensai's gonna start baiting them out. On the right side, Tyrant as well, looking for anything coming his way. Achapi is gonna be looking for it, but he knows that Tyrant's in here. Big damage as well. Achapi has the silence. Tyrant needs to kill right here, right now. There's the burn as well. Achapi will fall, does bait out the last nest egg in the process. Zulon gets the kill on the left lane as well. Tensai looks for something, a lot of damage blocked. He could get one, two kills here, but he nice, needs to line up these shots perfectly. And Tribe Gaming and A are staying just out of reach. Good tap there by his Livy. Final damage there from a choppy as well on the fat splatter but tribe gaming in a are about to take back this lead not so fast it says a choppy as well with a jump in from zulon and a kill on the left side it is incredibly even great reaction that was a blind shot to the left side and a kill for tensai tensai just knows and right now zeta straight back in the lead almost twice the percentage count that tribe gaming has locked in in that early game and I don't think there's any sort of recovery from here. Zeta Division, unless Tribe finds some sort of miracle, are going to be taking that first set. Good explosion there. A jump in from Zulon immediately destroyed. It's just Tyrant. He's the last hope for this roster at the moment, but gets disintegrated by the team. The celebration from Zeta Division Zero. That's set number one under their belt already in a 2-0 victory. Convincing stuff from this East Asian team. They're already having their sights set on the grand finals, and it's in a convincing fashion. The first game, Tribe were just not there. Not really able to find anything. Game two was better, but it, it still was miles off our expectations and also, you know, what is required to challenge a team like Zeta Division Zero. It's been improving, so let's hope that in our second set we see some more from Tribe Gaming NA because we all know they are capable of much more, but it, this is the moment where they need to find that energy, they need to uh, come up with some sort of solution. I don't know if it comes down to the draft, the execution, the communication, or whatnot, but something here needs to change before it's too late. Tribe Gaming in A, they put up a valiant effort, but there's just not much you can do versus people who play this game to absolute perfection. When it came down to the draft, I was quite convinced by what Tribe Gaming in A had to offer as well, but it's beyond just that. When you get the draft spot on, all it comes down to as far as differentials is mechanics and the stats tell the exact same story. 8-8-7 on the side of Zeta Zero and on Tribe Gaming in A side of 4-4-6. Four, four, once again, good effort put in by both teams, great gameplay as well, but there's a clear winner here. And once we transition the mode, I wonder if that will stay consistent. Yeah, that is uh, definitely true. In total, <laughs> we do have quite a significant kill lead, as well as damage on the side of Zeta Division Zero. They're, they're, they're just much better, and I don't think that was really up for debate, considering how dominant that opening set was. Real question here is, how do Tribe Gaming NA answer? How can they challenge the Zeta team that so far really only gets challenged by uh, its own sister team? It's a tough ask and I mean, as we asked you guys at home for your predictions, still 32% went for Tribe Gaming NA, but so far it does seem to be much more in the direction of Zeta.
it might just be a tribe gaming in a diff on the sort of consistency of these game modes as well because when it came down to that first set it was not too convincing for tribe gaming in a as far as the monthly finals that we've seen over the course of the year hot zone is their weakest and knockout is one of their strongest but unfortunately for them Z division zero their strongest mode is knockout an 83 percent win rate we'll see if they're able to get it done as well once we hop into the game but we're already getting underway with this draft on the side of Zeta Division Zero, Nanny, Gene, and E banned out on the side of Tribe Gaming NA. Max, Fang, and Brock banned out, as well as our first picks flying in with the Piper from Tribe Gaming NA and a Bonnie and Otis from Zeta Division Zero. I like the Piper first pick. I think it's a viable uh, uh, probably here and can be justified as a first pick, but Bonnie with the amount of pushes, even though it's not something we've seen as much recently, you used to dominate here. and. We saw how solid it was for Zeta in that first set. I'm a little bit scared, I'll be honest. I'm a little bit scared for Tribe Gaming NA right now, and they'll bring Griff to the table, which I think is a, a good idea, as it has a, a good bit of damage, which is gonna be helpful against that tanky Bonnie uh, that will be sitting at a distance. But uh, it's, it's gonna be complicated. I, I'd love to see something really out of the box because Tribe Gaming NA, they need to take some sort of risk. They need to uh, find some sort of natural advantage. And this draft needs to be absolutely on point. Well, as far as things that are out of the box here, I can't really see that in terms of Janet. She is an all-around consistent brawler and just all-around strong as well, but I'm more looking to the side of Zeta Division Zero, not only because we're waiting on that last pick, but also because they picked two of the same brawlers that they went for in that very first set, and that's something that we've observed kind of continuously and consistently from both of the Zeta teams is that they largely pick the same brawlers over and over, and where they get the diff is on the mechanics, and I wonder how that comes in. Is this the same exact comp? It's not the same exact comp. They did not go yeah, for there, Gus. There was, yeah, no, they didn't have a Gus. They didn't have a Gus. Um, you caught me off guard with your question. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting for the least. Uh, let's be honest here. They're also just bringing so much Bonnie to the table, which is not something we've been seeing much in the last couple of weeks. It's a probably that has kind of disappeared in game modes where, uh, you know, you wanted to have a, a, a tankier long-range DPS. Uh, we see 8-bit now instead. So it's been outclassed a bit by the 8-bit. It's interesting to see it so much on the table here, brought in by Zeta Division Zero. Guru has a jump in now as well. Gonna keep it patiently as he's trying to heal back up but so far tribe have been chased back to their side of the map it's only tyrant left alive and definitely not the story that tribe gaming and a were hoping for yeah not really convincing so far there's a, a spooky boy down as well tyrant looks for that jump on the jump pad but isn't quite going to get anything off but meanwhile zay division there not only have they taken away one of these rounds but they've taken away a couple of supers as well and guru could get shielded up if tensai wants to contribute to that sort of combination as livy gets some good damage to force tensai back luckily he is able to shield up to keep himself alive as well zulon also on the left side is forced back zay division Zero continue to push up and gain a lot of area control off of the beginning of this push. Down goes Tyrant after getting a little too aggressive. Jump to the backside by Karu and a destruction as well, despite being very low on health. And it's just as Livy left once again. This is gonna be a third game in a row, unless as Livy has something to say about it. But still uh, quite optimistic to consider this. The, the, even the possibility of this getting turned around as Livy very low HP using another homemade recipe, but surely he'll be going down here. And yeah, as soon as he lands, they are all waiting for him. Three in a row now in favor of Zeta Division Zero. Tribe really have yet to enter uh, the, the, the scoreboard. If anything, it gave a little bit of time left there with as Livy kind of drawing things out for Tribe Gaming NA to think of a new strategy, which they're going to need to bring to the table. Whatever they were doing in that last game, it simply was not working out. Zeta Division Zero, they've gotten good, consistent pushes up to mid every single push so far. We'll see Tribe Gaming NA starting off very, very aggressive on that left side. And Kuru trying to the best of his ability to tank a little bit for a choppy and spearhead this charge. He has a lot of health. He has a lot of speed to work with as well. Tarn has to make sure that he does not get left left alone on that left side. Tensai is taking major damage along the way as well, but so far, no significant advantage for either team. Yeah, I feel like this is probably the best position Tribe has been in yet this match, which says a lot. Uh, 
but really they need to find some sort of confirmation on any of the plays they were getting low hp earlier ten sunk still looking for some sort of opportunity on the right side a very low hp as livy but so is tensai zulan does still have the super that is going to be a kill onto tensai man advantage now in favor of tribe gaming and a as a choppy is uh, trying to find some sort of angle. The gas is gonna reset Ooh. his healing, and that is gonna be around for Tribe Gaming and a finally something going right for Tribe. But they need a whole lot more. They certainly do, but they're gonna start things off with a little wall break around the right side so that his Libby can hopefully pop off on this Piper. He needs some of the walls broken down, but Tensai has a whole lot of range to offer as well. Early kill from his Livy onto a Choppy on the left side now, and it's a 3v2 on the Brawler count. Tensai on the right is looking quite low on health, especially as this shield is going to fall. He continues to heal up a little bit as well, and Kuru is patiently awaiting a 1v1 situation with his super. There's the curve shot as well onto Tensai. A final effort from Kuru, but it's not enough as he gets taken down by Tyrant, and Tribe Gaming in a take the first game at last tribe find something but man they they, they they need more they need more they're starting to build up just a little bit of momentum two really good rounds here in a row to lock in their first game of the match let's say that division zero if they still win this one tribe is going to be in a ton of trouble but as livy we talked about him popping off and he's definitely getting a big entry kill there as Tribe kicks things off with the man advantage. Tribe Gaming in A have to make sure that they play very carefully. Now Kuru has a super and Zulon's not going to be baited. Oh, there's the shot from his Livy with the gadget to finish things off. And Zeta Vision Zero, they're down two brawlers here. Final kill onto a choppy. And Tribe Gaming in A, they might just be one round away from taking the set. But if Zeta Vision Zero can get two in a row, they can get another set under their belt as well. Nerves on both sides now as they know what is on the line. A choppy is low, but he's still alive for now. Kuru has a jump in as well, but he's not in the best HP situation. He's still gonna go for it. It's a one for one trade. Could be much worse. His positioning is potentially favoring Zeta Division Zero here as Tensai has that super. Let's see how this end as we are in an interesting 2v2. Still, as Livy has no gadgets left, it's gonna be hard for him to finish off some of these kills, especially when Achapi has a decent amount of health and Tensai also has a super that he can use to give himself an extra around 3,000 health via that shield. Tyrant is looking for some value here. He also has a gadget remaining, but they only need to win one round here. It looks like neither team really wants to make the move. That poison is gonna have to be the contributing factor to make them move in. Tensai loses a lot of health here, needs to see more damage from his Livy. Another tap onto Achapi. Tyrant's on very, very low health. Achapi he looks for it, gets taken down by the poison. It's Tensai versus the world. As Livy has to pop off, there's a spooky boy explosion with the captain oh. and Tyrant. He survives with just 1k health left, and it's a set victory for Tribe. They're all tied up. The Tribe fans can't believe it. That is gonna be the set for Tribe Gaming and they, and they tie things up. Smiles at last back on the boys' faces. <laughs> I mean, deserved as well, but they need to uh, keep some restraint here as well, not let it uh, get to their heads too quickly because we know how quickly things can escalate from here on if they are getting overconfident. But some good signs of life here from Drive that they desperately need it. And that has to be nerves as well for Zeta Division Zero because as we've already gone over, Knockout is their most consistent mode, 83% win rate. And that has to feel and that has to feel like a pretty free one. It has to feel like a pretty free set for them if you are in their shoes, given that they win 83% of those maps. No, you're right. Absolutely right. Looking at the stats now as well. It's better on the side of Tribe, and that's a welcome change because it really wasn't in that opening set. But those two final games, Tribe just started popping off, getting four rounds in a row, which is going to help cement uh, that momentum a bit more. And we know how much Tribe Gaming and A love to just ride off that momentum and, uh, you know, have that snowball until it becomes un uh, uh, unbeatable. Well, we're going to be getting into the next map very, very soon and kind of break down whether that is more of a uh, more of a consistent one for Tribe Gaming in A. But for the time being, it is one to one, a very even score here. As far as the gameplay, too, 
I'm almost tempted to call it even, but I still think we've seen way better gameplay from Zeta Division Zero taking that first set into consideration. It was a complete runaway for the guys. Hot Zone, it is not really the most consistent for Tribe Gaming NA, but it was such domination by Z0. Here comes Shooting Star, though, and it is the most long-range oriented bounty map. This is where you usually see Picked or Banned, Nanny, Piper, the like, and we see Piper banned out, but no Nanny banned out by Zeta Division Zero either. Tribe Gaming NA, they seem to know what they're doing, and Nanny Pick, it's got to be coming through. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely a strong option, but where it shines the most what? is against the Piper. And since the Piper is banned, I don't know if it's as much of a must pick as it usually is. I, I like the Sprout first pick. I think it's, it, it's all right, you know, because Stick is banned out, Brock is banned out, and those are some of the scariest Brawlers to face as a Sprout. So I think it's a great idea from Tribe Gaming NA. I mean, we have to have a lot of respect for it as well, right? But I do think that Nanny's still a fairly strong brawler in this matchup, and we're bound to see it at some point. I guess really the question at this point is which team is it going to be on? And yeah, quickly answer there by Zeta Vision Zero. I think also, though, that Tribe Gaming and A, they, you know, they're, they're clued into this. This is common knowledge for Shooting Star. So when you go for a pick like Sprout instead of what a lot of people would consider to be the de facto best brawler on the map, they know something is up and they must have some kind of counterplay for it. Otherwise, this could be a big blunder. Well, we'll see the Gus as the second pick for Zeta Division Zero. We've seen what they can do with it. It didn't quite pay off just earlier in, uh, in knockout, but it might now. Triumph Gaming and eight, they get two picks in a row now and yeah, you can tell from their faces they are very serious about this one. They'll go Bonnie, which I can respect. I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite. Uh, I'm wondering if they're going to pair it with a B, perhaps? Because otherwise I feel like they're leaving uh, a little bit of an opening considering how strong B is against Bonnie. Yeah, B can be very, very strong against that particular brawler. It can get hardwalled in some situations. Another consideration, I suppose, is Colette, which is, uh, like, I think the number one hard counter versus that brawler because she just gets so, so much damage, especially considering Bonnie's health. Only a few seconds left before we know what that brawler is from Tribe Gaming NA, and it's Lola, actually. That's an interesting one. I mean, Lola is not in a bad place. It's just kind of, you know, around, around the middle. It's playable here and there. I think Carl is a really good idea from Zeta Division Zero, and I, I, I can see it being very dominant against literally every single matchup here. Uh, maybe not quite as dominant against the Bonnie, but it's still, you know, definitely at best a, a neutral matchup. So I, I think that is a really good option here that Zeta are bringing to their comp. And I don't know, I feel like they have the edge here comp wise but I'm hoping uh, to see brawlers like Sprout here pop off and find a lot of value. Well, let's see if Livy is able to line these shots. One, two, three, four oh, shots. Oh, oh my oh. gosh, four shots already? That's the easiest super that Livy's ever gotten on this brawler. Tensai only barely stays alive with 120 health left as well, but Tribe Gaming in eight, they don't have that blue star. They might have mid control, but they don't have the advantage just yet, and they need to start things off with the first kill. Well, a big hit there from a choppy onto Livy. Not enough for a kill just yet. Very patient on the wall as Livy, not placing it down anywhere and eventually going for a more aggressive wall here to try to line up an angle against Tensai, but maybe a little too late oh. as there's not all that much value from there on. That is gonna be a nicely tanked P with the wall on as Livy's side of things. And that means that for now it's still Zeta, which was just that one star lead. Is this a plan for the whole match, is just to throw the Sprout Wall on top of the beef? If so, I'm definitely here for it, but it's not something that we really see in this mode or on this map. And even then, it doesn't even give the advantage to Tribe Gaming an A just yet, because with only 50 seconds left on the clock, Zeta Division Zero still have this blue start and they have the man advantage. However, Tribe Gaming an A have their Bonnie Super at the ready. Kuru can shield up, and he might even opt to pop it just now, because Tyrant is getting very, very up close and personal. Ajapi's on low health, too. One more tap on the guy, and he could go down. Tyrant gets exploded by the Spooky Boy from Kuru, plus the gadget, and Tribe Gaming an A are now three stars in the hole. This is looking good for Zeta. Tribe have yet to find a single star. They do have some utility to work with. Tanked Peep and as Livy survives, but ever so slightly, 15 seconds left in this one. Tyrant popping his final gadget, trying to find some connections before going for a desperate last second jump. 
All they need is two kills, but that's still a lot to ask for, and they might not find any, as that is going to be a clean game from Zeta Division Zero, not dropping a single star. And not giving a single kill to Tribe Gaming either. That looked so, so convincing from Zeta Division Zero. And I don't see the game starting off any differently in the next one either. The only difference could be that Sprout doesn't get four easy shots off the beginning of the game. We'll have to see if it happens. Tensai's already getting the dodges out here. Not even a single connection either. There's the first one as well. But as Livy's taken a beating along the way. In Zeta Zero, they have that first star. Once again, the blue star is on Tensai, and it appears to be safe and sound for now. Yeah, that, that's the thing as well. I don't even know if it matters all that much if uh, he's feeding some shots onto, onto a, a Slivy because the, the walls from his Slivy were really not all that impactful, I feel like, in a previous game. And he is going to place it down earlier this time around, which helps him get some better positioning. And I like these ideas more for sure. He re-centers it as well and extends the timer as Tensai is starting to get low HP but able to heal back up at Chappie, however. Finds the connection on to Zulan, and that is going to be a three-star lead again in favor of Zeta. Tyrant getting really beat up here on offense as well between Kuru and Achab. He might as well be a rock in a hard place as well. So far, so good for Zeta Division Zero. Tribe Gaming in A, not a single star, not a single kill to their name despite their best efforts. As Livy's still going at Tensai on the left side, Kuru getting focused down by Tyrant. Got to play carefully around this peep as well, as Livy's going to be the target. Oh. There's a the kill as well, but five stars have been claimed by Tribe Gaming in A with their first kill. Yeah, they have the lead for just about a second, but Zulan goes down and Tensai should be able to escape. Oh, that got closed, but it is going to be extending the lead to six stars now in favor of Zeta Division Zero. This is still looking incredibly dangerous for Tribe Gaming NA. They need a lot of kills, and this might be too much to ask. They need to find a Chappy and one other player. Can they do it, Ready? It looks really unlikely, but as Livy is going to start things off with something convincing on this final push, Countdown is active. Kuru has a shield up. Tyrant has no super. Got to see something as far as Tensai. Need to see damage from Tyrant or Zulon, but death on arrival. And Zeta Division Zero take a 21-star victory and win set number three. Wow. Zeta Division Zero. The call is something that Tribe absolutely overlooked here. It gets the blue star, it's dominant against the Sprout and has really good matchups against the Lola. Absolutely not bad against the Bonnie. It, it was just a Brawly that was perfectly drafted in by Zeta Division Zero. That Tribe Gaming, uh, I don't know if they either forgot to, to, to consider it or uh, just took the gamble. It, it just didn't pay off and now this is when it gets really, really tough because Zeta Division Zero they, they, they are one leg into the Grand Finals and Tribe Gaming NA, they got to throw everything they have at them to stop that from happening. Hopefully they have something at the ready for the next set as well because they could be on the brink of defeat in just one more game. That was incredibly convincing for Zeta Division Zero as we head into set number four momentarily. Tribe Gaming NA, one thing I will remark about these guys is that their drafts are looking a lot, a lot better than they have in the past. Typically, they went with stuff that they were comfortable with and it wasn't necessarily the meta. Now they're coming out with really inventive things like using a Sprout Wall to deal with an Nanny Super, but that didn't really provide them enough value to get them a win in the end. We'll see what kind of interesting stuff they have cooked up for the next set. What we can expect from Zeta Division Zero if we're just going by their track record is the same old brawlers that they just do well on and are good in the current meta. Yeah, so far they haven't had to take really big risks anywhere which just says how confident that team has gotten with how much they have achieved in the last year and a half. Let's see what is in store for us on Pit Stop. It seems like Carl is going to be our first pick for Tribe Gaming and Nay. Their bands are Max Buzz and Barley, Zeta Division Zero, ban out Otis, Nita, and Ruffs. We love seeing the Nita in ban or in pick. And Zeta Division Zero, I mean, they picked Nita for themselves. It didn't exactly work out so well for them in that first one, but I guess it's out of the question for now. Here come a couple picks in a row, and these are lightning okay. fast coming at you already. The M's and the Daryl as well. Very aggro picks from Zeta Division Zero, and I
I think Daryl is a pretty decent counter to Carl as well, especially when it comes to close range things. He's also going to get just a lot more damage locked on on that safe too. So Tribe Gaming and A need to be pretty cautious about what they pick here because they need some tank counters out here. And Otis has been banned out by Zeta Division Zero. Yeah, I mean, interesting approach here from Zeta Division Zero. They're taking a risk here by bringing out the Daryl, but they can afford to. They are a set up Rico is going to be the answer here from Tribe Gaming NA. I like it. I mean, I, I think every time we've watched Pit Stomp, I've mentioned how much I love Rico on it. It hasn't been as successful as I hoped. Uh, most of the time I saw it uh, at the World Finals. Uh, but I'm sure that in the hands of Tribe Gaming NA, they can make something happen with it. They, they have to if they want to even stand a chance in this match. Well, we have to wait and see what Tribe Gaming NA's final selection is because if it's not good enough, it will be their final selection for this entire match. There's the Gale as well, and that's going to prevent them from having to face versus any more tanks. It's also going to be fairly good, specifically versus one tank, and well, now two tanks as well, as Zeta Vision Zero have committed on the bull. This is not the usual Zeta Zero that we see, but last time we saw them on Pit Stop, they went for something kind of crazy, and now they're going for it again with two tanks. Their full intention is to go 100% aggro this entire time if they can because there's no way they can defend effectively versus the try gaming in a selections that might just be the first bull of these world finals let's see how it fares here against strike gaming and eggs in division zero dangerously close to the grand finals now Tensai does opt to take this mid roll as well versus Tyrant. He's not feeding really much damage so far. Also, as Livy on the left side is looking for something versus Kuru, but Kuru's slowly going to be charging up that super as he takes damage. He needs to be careful about feeding that super to his Livy, which he already has. Tensai also gets a kill on Tyrant too. And Zulon looks for a kill as Livy shifts lanes for a moment onto the right. He's getting great damage versus Kuru. A bit of a whiff super there, unfortunately, but he's still getting damage on a Kuru and trying to keep him at bay. But Kuru has slowly crept up and he hasn't gone down just yet. Yeah, at last, some damage onto that blue safe as Livy still was solid positioning. As the super blinked it, maybe trying to bait some supers or gadgets out from Zeta Division's hands. Guru, the double roll onto the safe, but the defense is just incredibly on point. And even though they do find some damage, I feel like it could have been so much worse. And Kuru now is going to look for cover on this left side. Does get taken out by Zulon, who's just one shot away from getting that super cycled out once again. Tensai saying just at range, but a few snowballs connect, and Zulon has it again. A choppy has very, very few oh. odds of making it through this right side. A little trade out there. The old switcheroo is Tyrant now looks for some damage on that safe. He has his super at the ready as well. Could get on top of Ken Tensai, but he is taken down quickly. And Zulon now has to eliminate things on the right side. There's a pushback. What? It's a complete whiff. He expected a choppy to move in a little bit closer but he still does get the defense. However, in spite of all of the stellar defense we've seen from Tribe NA, Zeta Division Zero still boasts the advantage. A nice stun onto Kuru, but still not enough for the kill. The bounce shots from Ezlivi oh. do connect. Tensai is low, Tyrant takes him out. This is his chance to get some decent damage onto that save. No damage gear, sadly, for him. So not quite gonna be enough to take over the lead. They have the double supers again on those tanks, and that is gonna be the double roll onto the save. Massive damage connecting, but it could be a bigger lead. There's still a chance. They do need a big final push on the side of Tribe Gaming, and they only got about 15 seconds to do so. There's barely any time, but it's drive time for Tribe Gaming in a. As Livy needs to make a big move here. Zulan has to push these tanks out of the way. Charge forward by Karus. Tyrant has to deal with it. They're going to try and get the out DPS, and it's up to Zulan to try and defend one, two connections. He's able to defend it, but now we need to see the connection on the back lines, but it's just not enough. Zeta Division Zero wipe out the defense, and we're headed to a match point. One game separates us from a Zeta versus Zeta Grand Final. Unbelievable. A region, East Asia, with only two spots, able to get both teams all the way to the Grand Finals. Let's see if that is going to be the case, or if Tribe Gaming NA can shut that idea down, or at least delay it. And Job. right now, we have some Decent angles from S. Livy getting some big damage on the left hand side. A kill from Tyrant onto Tensai. Kuru still trying to get all the way to that save. He does have a super now, but Tyrant does uh, manage to get into some advanced positioning. Will fall there, unfortunately. A 
a lot of damage in by Kuru as well, and now it begins to multiply too. Tinsai does get forced back, but he's able to pick up a super along the way, and he looks for somewhere to use it, but he needs to get in range of some targets, and as Livy is punishing him around these corners, this is not an opportune position for as Livy. He's looking for really anything that he can use. Meanwhile, Tyrant cycles over to the back lines. Tensai has to be the one to defend here. Surely Tyrant's gonna be moving out of the way, but along that way, Achapi also looks for an angle to push in, and Kuru, much of the same. Solid stuff in versus Zeta Zero safe, but Tribe Gaming in A, they need to get their defense faces on as well, as Achapi just refuses to leave this aggro position. What a beautiful bounce there from his Livy, but not quite enough to get the kill just yet. Tensai survives with just 34 HP again. Does get a connection, but not enough for the kill. Oh. Guru is on the safe. He's finding some big damage. That is the lead now for Zeta Division as Achapi is next to roll in. Tensai is finding some good damage as well. And that save has taken quite the beating. Tribe Gaming NA down to 29%. It's almost like there's not much that Tribe Gaming and A can do versus this continuous onslaught. Tribe Gaming, though, they are going to get some damage on Zeta Vision Zero safe, but Tribe Gaming and A safe is melting down. Guru is going to get the final hit, and they're going to the grand finals. It is going to be Zeta Division 1 versus Zeta Division 0 for your grand finals. Those players, Tensai, Ichapi, and the Tempo were our world champions last year, and they are all in the grand finals again, despite splitting up for this season. That is incredible stuff from the East Asian region. I mean, how, how much prouder can they be of themselves? They've made it again, and it's gonna be a full on East Asian grand final. Each of these teams has swept their respective upper and lower brackets only to meet at the last challenge in the grand finals. Together, once again, it's the team reunion that we needed to see all year long. And it finally comes to fruition after some amazing matches as well. NA, they might go down here, but the vibes don't stop just yet. However, it's a well-earned victory for Zeta Division Zero through and through, even bringing out some stuff that's frankly very outside of the box. The bull definitely blew me away, and <laughs> it at points was not blown away by Zulon. You see, he wasn't even knocked back there, and maybe that's probably why Bull was picked there. They knew that Tribe Gaming and A weren't picking that, and they were able to see the potential in some of these brawlers. This is just such a crazy story on the side of the Zeta teams. This also means that for Kuru, Moya Goku, and Kenji, this is their first grand final at the World Finals ever. I'm excited to see how they perform in a bit. I mean, a shout out to his Livy for the ridiculous amount of damage <laughs> that he managed to find in this set, but it wasn't enough to save Tribe Gaming NA from what ultimately seems to be the top region in the world, not only right now, but for a while, perhaps, taken a while for everyone to realize. But man, it's a Zeta versus Zeta Grand Final, and Tensai is gonna be our MVP for this second semifinal. Tensai's my MVP too, man. I mean, this is a world finalist from last year as well. He was a, he is a standing world champion alongside a choppy. And regardless of the outcome of this grand final, whether it goes the way of Zeta Division One or Zeta Division Zero, some people are walking away as two time in a row world champions for Brawl Stars. And that's something that we've never ever seen before in this scene. I, I, I might be wrong, so correct me in, the, in, in chats or in Twitter if I am. But from the top of my head, I'm wondering if, if, if the Tensai played the Grand Finals last year? I, I'm, I'm not sure, because I think also with Jupiter back in the days, he didn't uh, quite get to play. So it, it's great to see him, you know, achieve everything on his own, not on the bench, uh, which, I mean, he all, wholeheartedly deserves, considering how amazing of a year they've already had. And the fact that they're literally in the Grand Finals right now. What a way to state that your region is simply on top of the rest of the world. Zeta Division Zero, despite splitting apart into two separate rosters, they still managed to have this reconnaissance in the final, uh, the, the final peak competition of the year in the grand finals. It all comes down to one best of seven to determine who comes out on top. But before we move along to that, we gotta throw it down to the stage because we have a special guest for you. Good luck, guys. 
Hello, everyone. <laughs> Bonsoir à tous. Nous avons un annonce à faire. Danny. <laughs> uh, did you understand? Because I didn't. What are you trying to say? The truth is, I don't know how to speak French, so I need some help. Bonsoir à tous. So everyone, this is Felix. He's an artist and animator in the Brawl team. Bonsoir. Je suis artiste dans la team et malheureusement, je suis le seul français dans la team. Alors je suis là ce soir pour traduire un message spécial de la part de Dani et Paola. Thank you. So, before we continue with the show, we would like to give you a quick heads up of what's coming for Brawl Stars this year still. Avant de continuer le spectacle, nous voulons vous donner un petit aperçu uh, de ce qu'il vous reste à découvrir avant la fin de l'année dans le jeu. So, on December 1st, we will tell you how can you get the Omega Box, the Omega Box Zero King, a lot of rewards, and a new way to collect brawlers. Le 1er décembre, nous révélerons comment vous pourrez collecter votre Omega Box, le skin Omega Box d'Aril, ainsi que de nombreuses récompenses. Et pour finir, nous dévoilerons un grand, grand changement dans la façon dont vous pourrez débloquer des nouveaux brawlers dans le jeu. Now, on December 7th, we'll release the new Brawl Talk. Je ne sais pas si j'ai besoin de traduire, mais le 7 décembre, nous révélerons le nouveau Brawl Talk. And on December 12th, we'll release the update, which is the Brawly Days update, and also the Brawlyversary update, which means a lot of free rewards for you all. Le 12 décembre, nous sortirons l'update de Noël, accompagné de nombreuses récompenses pour fêter l'anniversaire de Brawl Star. Au revoir. Wait, 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 wait. We have, we have something else, right? <laughs> so, uh, we, can't wait, we can wait towards the finals between the two CETA teams. But before that, we'd like you to show you a new music video, which is a tribute to all the competitors um, right now. <laughs> so, enjoy! <laughs> Nous sommes impatients de regarder la grande finale entre ces deux équipes talentueuses. Mais avant cela, voici un petit clip en l'honneur de tous nos incroyables compétiteurs. Now. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. You are alive. 
16 teams have been whittled all the way down to two. Like all good things, so too must our world finals. And we have the answer of what region is the best in the world. Now we must ask which Zeta Division squad will stand the top of the mountain arc. They're continuing to reign victorious over everyone, stampling down on every other region. They are just truly built so incredibly diff. Yeah, and talking to many of the coaches and players, they struggle to put their finger on what sets these guys apart in terms of how they're able to achieve what they have so far. Incredible stuff from both our Zeta Division teams. We saw Zeta Division 1 first throughout the day, right? Both of these teams ultimately vanquishing a top North American squad to make it into the finals. Incredible really how the bracket ended up playing out and how we managed to get here. STMN first put up a really valiant effort, right? They had to reverse sweep to even be here in the first place. So we knew they'd experienced the difficulty of being behind in a series, but Zeta Division 1 never really wanted to let off the gas. Yeah, they just had the ice in their veins and I've got to hand it over to STMN. It was such an enjoyable one to watch. Moments that will live with us for an entire Bobby lifetime. Man, Bobby, oh, incredible. Bobby. Absolutely insane. The best Piper, I think there's no doubt about it in the entire world after today. But my, oh my, you got to just say, like, you know, Zeta Division 1, in the day, just stayed so calm and collected under the pressure, the might of North America and Latam North regardless. It says a lot. Yeah, that was that first semi-final of the day. Let's talk about the sister team uh, in just a moment, because I think Zeta Division 0 really do deserve special mention of their own going up against Tribe just now. I mean, that was a match that well, we, we knew Tribe had what it took, they had the pedigree, but it just wasn't remotely enough against this Zeta Division Zero team. It's kind of insane, really. You break up world champions, you've infused it with extra talent from that East Asia region, and you've got two juggernauts that make it through the respective halves of the bracket. This is just not something we really see. This is a true treat to see East Asia's best. Yeah, and dangerous because we saw how Tribe Gaming NA were playing today. They looked so fierce. They, I, I personally felt like they were going to make it all the way to those grand finals, to be honest. But we were speaking to Inzo backstage as well. He just was saying about how Tensai just moves in a way that he just doesn't understand. And it's resonated very frequently around the regions. Everyone just saying that East Asia, they just can't get their head around it. It's a complete and utter curveball for them. Both these teams getting a lot of value out of Carl on their star player. Tensai, who, by the way, plays with his device flat on in front of him, not really up. He doesn't pick it up at all. He just simply plays at the top of it. A really unique approach, and maybe that's what allows him to move so uh, uniquely as well. Here's the bracket again. First, it was Chasmac Gaming EU to fall to Zeta Division 1, then Reply Totem, then STMN. They've gone around the world in terms of their felled opponents. And for Zeta Division 0, Chasmac Gaming BR, Tribe Gaming EU, Tribe Gaming NA. Tribe upon Tribe has fallen to Zeta Division 0 as they look to fall and found a dynasty of their own. Incredible storylines have all led us here, albeit via very different threads. And again, we have to ask ourselves, who is the better Zeta Division team? Zeta Division 1 with four monthly final wins. Zeta Division 0 with three. So close, you can really throw a tissue over the two of them in their home region, but now this is it. Nothing left. Leave it all out there and be proud with what you've been able to do to get here. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's going to be a Zeta win at the end of the day. But, you know, <laughs> at the same time, it has been this back and forth rivalry all year long on the, on the day. Who is going to take it all? One more time, it's uh, a chance now to welcome our competitors to the stage. So let's head down to Damascus and let's heat it up in here. Et allez, on est de retour avec la foule. Est-ce qu'on est prêt pour la finale? On est pour la finale entièrement japonaise et tout le monde est ici pour savoir qui sera le nouveau champion du monde. Seulement une équipe pourra gagner ce championnat et on a les deux équipes. À accueillir. Ce qu'on va faire, c'est un peu différent. On va appeler tous les joueurs pour cette grande finale. Est-ce que vous êtes prêts à appeler les joueurs Kenji Moya Goku Je Make some noise for Zeta Division 1 Zeta Division, the first organization in Brawl Esports history to make the grand final on the world stage back-to-back -back consecutively in years. They are the very definition of the immovable object, the thorn in the side of so many who tried to topple them. But this is a squad who truly cannot be broken. For Shatampo, a defining moment in his career, 
as only a singular best of seven sets is all that stand between him for coming up first ever two-time world champion. Here's Ada Division One. Let's bring out their sister team, bound by fate. Et la deuxième équipe, il n'y a pas vraiment besoin de les introduire. Ils ont eu un premier match difficile, mais depuis c'est facile. Ils sont arrivés jusqu'en grande finale. Trois joueurs de plus japonais. Achapi, Kuru, Tensai, it's Zeta Division Zero! Well, it wouldn't be a Brawl Stars World Finals without one last Zeta v Zeta dance. All year long, regions watched on in fear for what East Asia were cooking. And on the menu, it's been nothing short of a firestorm. This is a chappy and ten size chance of becoming back to back world champions. And with the mastery of Kuru, his moment to seize his dreams of lifting gold. For one of the most reserved teams in the entire BSC, for Zeta, it really is a case of actions speaking louder than words. Zeta Division are Brawl Esports Apocalyptic Hydra. Cut off one head and two more grow where the first was left. We have one more chance to soak up the energy in this arena, everybody. I hope you're ready to make some noise either here at home for our grand finals competitors. Les équipes sont prêtes. Are you ready, crowds? La finale est entièrement japonaise. Une seule de ces équipes soulèvera ce trophée. Et pour introduire cette grande finale, on va faire quelque chose de spécial pour cette finale entièrement japonaise. For this entirely Japanese finals, I suggest a Japanese intro. Zeta Division Ichi Tai. Zeta Division Zero. Ite Imashou. Subarashi is the word I have in response to that fantastic way to bring us in to the crowning match of the Brawl Stars global calendar. At the end of this best of seven series, only one of these teams will stand as the champions of Brawl Stars Esports. So many different ways this could have gone. So many different ways this World Finals could have played out. We saw the best of Europe. We saw the best of Latam North, Latam South, USA. We saw the best that China could put on the table as well. Southeast Asia, none of them could hold a candle to the raging inferno that are these Zeta Division teams and we get the treat. We got what we've experienced every single month in East Asia, except now it's for all the marbles, Ark. Yeah, and we gotta give an honorable mention, massively so to Latam South. They were the region that came the closest of getting an upset. But it wasn't to be. And say to be Zeta as it has been all year long is what it is going to come down to in this best of seven on paper. Zeta Division One have a little bit of an edge. That four win in the grand finals this year, their best performance being that in October. Scary because they were clearly, clearly saving the best for last. It was a sweep in that respect as well. And actually, every time I've got to mention that Zeta Division One find themselves against Zeta Division Zero in a grand final if Zeta Division One win it. It has always been a sweep. Both of these two teams face what could be considered the unenviable experience of going up against an opponent who knows you deeply. Both of these teams, they practice together. That was the whole premise with Zeta Division splitting into two rosters. These two teams helped each other become the very best in the world by day in, day out, practicing against one another, giving each other advice, lifting each other up. They know each other's strengths. They know each other's weaknesses. They know each other's tendencies. They know each other's temperaments. And those are going to be put to the test now in a high stakes match. Don't be fooled. None of these teams think the job is done just because they made it to the grand finals together. This is everything to a Brawl Stars competitor. And only one of these teams will be holding the trophy at the end of this match. This is the Brawl Stars dream. It's what everyone has put in tears and nothing but hard work into. To be able to be the best in the world is something that so few of us will ever say. And the pros that battle on to try to achieve just that. It's an entire years of work, you know, it, it's, it's such 
a trying mountain to climb, but for both of these two teams to have got to this position, it does seem like fate. Yeah, I love how you pointed out, a year of blood, sweat, and blistered thumbs. <laughs> yeah. This draft is where it's going to kick off in just a moment. Again, these two teams classically led by superstars in Shitampo and Tensai, of course. Shitampo going up against two of his old teammates that he held this trophy aloft with beforehand. It's a good time to be a Brawl Stars esports fan, ladies and gentlemen. Our first map in this best of seven will be some Brawl Ball action. The one thing we know for sure is that we are going to be able to crown one of these two sides consecutive back-to-back -back wins. That's right. Whether it's Shitambo Tensai or Chappie, one of those three is going to become, for the first time ever in Brawl Esports history, a world champion twice. Incredible stuff. The bands are in. Janet, Squeak and Penny on the side of Zeta Division 1. Gene, Otis and Crow for Zeta Division 0. An early draft coming in as well of Max on the side of Zeta Division 1. The Ruffs and another one to come surely for zero. Now make, make no mistake, these two teams are distinctly different in terms of where they're strongest. Brawl Ball is actually Zeta Division 1's best map type. They have a 74% set win rate on Brawl Ball. They really enjoy uh, playing this kind of map. For Zeta Division 0, yeah, not so much the case. It's definitely not where many of their wins have come from. So Gale getting picked up here by Zeta Division 0 pretty early on in the piece. So they must have a clear idea of what they're looking to push back with that Gale 4 Super. Yeah, Kale and Max is honestly a devilish combo, isn't it? When you've got the ability to stun everything down and the Max able to close the gap in that respect as well. It is going to be a tough one for Zeta Division 1 now to rebound off the back of this. And I would have gone for the penny. They actually chosen to ban out themselves, which is interesting to see. Carl, though, again, not banned. Oh, <laughs> coming in. I love it. This, Very aggressive stuff. This is a Stitampo classic. If we get to see him on the surge, that's something well worth being excited about. As the game progresses, that surge is going to be even more difficult to shut down. Stitampo is going to ramp up in his effectiveness, his lethality. And he's the kind of player, the kind of star that you want on this role. No matter what compositions that Division 1 have been playing right, it's been Shitampo and the Meg or the Carl or the Surge, a centerpiece here in his composition. I expect that to be the case going forward. And they're going to round it out with a Poco here on the side of Zeta Division 1. Their draft now is locked in. <laughs> Buster coming in, and I really do like this comp on both sides. They're so fun. The comps are so enjoyable to watch. The Surge is a riskier one, but not for either of these two teams, really, is it? I mean, they just know how to demonstrate so beautifully the best of Brawl. And I cannot wait to see who has the edge. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more on the side of Zeta Division Zero. But here we go. These two teams waste no time in meeting in the middle. Guru's got to be forced back first. Take cover, already popped there by Moya Goku. The bouncing shot's affecting a Charpy now as the Super takes out that box and a Charpy's already fallen. Kenji realizes he can't forge too much further ahead after losing Moya Goku, but the ball's in a good spot for Zeta Division 1. They're happy so far. Yeah, I'm just going to play this one around a little bit. Try to earn some utility. A nice block there from Kuru and everyone really on the side of Zeta Division 1 going down here. The pass surely going to come through. Oh, the stun. And Chappie there just with the support. Beautiful start. So one thing I think people forget is that while Buster is using his super, he can also auto heal if he's not taking that damage, right? So he's healing, he's deflecting damage back, he's charging at you, closing the gap. Nothing Kenji could do once Kuro got in his face, but a chap has gone down early. Shitampo approaches the goals, Moya Goku's healthy enough. It's a walk-in for Zeta Division 1. And as quickly as that, the response is there. Wonderful to see. Shitampo though would like to gain a bit of Stacks along the way here, a bit more range would go a long, long way, but struggling with the back of that Buster shield now, but the push through for the Division Zero. All in the back, Shitampo! Beautiful stuff from him, deflating the entire push, leaving Moyogoku alone, but now with the respawns coming in, a chance to redeem. Look, he gives up his rank four in order to do that right, but definitely feels like it's worth it. Back now to level two, which is going to be his floor because of his star power. 
For Zeta Division Zero in a commanding position, remember one goal will end the round. Oh, Kuru moves up here with that montage. Kenji's forced to take cover inside the goals, trying to heal with that super. The ball's off to the oh! side, but it's a triple gale force. Kuru now wants to keep the pressure on, but Achapi's low and has to back away. Supply drop comes in, Shitapu's <laughs> down. Achapi trying to deal with Kenji. Moya Goku at 20 health is enough to hold Zeta Division Zero back. Absolutely everybody there, just on such low HP, but the aggression never ceases, it never stops, they just keep going. Tensai now trying to bring the ball forwards here for Zeta Division Zero. With the help of Kuru with the shield as well. And we've just seen how much value he's able to obtain off the back of this. There's 10 seconds go, as will the boxes. And this is a good position for Zeta Division Zero to hold. Kuru's able to back away here, get some help. Supply drop being thrown down in Shitampo's direction, and we are in overtime, so those goals now essentially not relevant. First goal wins with 53 seconds left in the round. Chappie has that super up here, but it's going to be tough to get value now as there aren't any obstacles to really knock his opponents into. He's low. Kuru has to go for the montage here as Kenji wants to harass from the right-hand side. Kuru back it up. Let's go pop by Tensai and Moya Goku shepherds the ball forward slowly here. They collapse though. They found Kenji. Three versus two now with 33 seconds left in the round and Moya Goku's pushed out the way. Zayda Division Zero get themselves the round. Considering that on the other side of things, everyone in Zeta Division 1 were all souped up as, as the result of those you know, rough supply drops. They had to eradicate methodically one by one to give themselves the best odds in that overtime situation. And they really, really did persevere in a fantastic way. Now though, it's reset. A chance to redeem themselves. Shitampo again though, is gonna have to really try to connect as quickly as possible. He's a very slow and sluggish surge in those early outsets. He needs to get those stacks. Yeah, you think Zeta Division might actually be great in the late game. They build up in strength because of Surge and also because Ruff's giving those supply drops out and boosting uh, your teammates' effectiveness. Doesn't end up being the case there as the Charpy's Gale pick has really been a difference maker. Titapo goes for the super. The immortality frame wasn't really enough to keep him alive. Kenji's in trouble. Protected tunes aren't going to help him if he gets collapsed on. Wow. The heal there is good though. Fantastic super from Kenji. Zeta Division 1 now trying to push things. That next level. Getting this goal off this position here. So Chappie does not have super the break. The rough timing. It's just never gonna aim it. No, he didn't quite make it. It's off the line. Chappie now bring it to safety. Kuru though is incredibly low. He's trying to buy his time, but Zeta Division 1 just continues to keep turning up the heat. Chappie flashes the super there as well. A bit of a warning sign. Saying get back, otherwise I'm gonna pin you to the wall, freeze you up. Time now for Tensai is able to return to the rest of his team, but things looking a little bit dire based on Zeta Division Zero's positioning here. Kuru's in a great spot to get hit by the bouncers and he doesn't have any way to stave those off. Shitapo's approaching and rank four will be on the menu. The damage! It's too much to handle. Oh, Goku's been playing in a, a marvelous game. He really has. He's just bringing in so much utility for his teammates. Everyone able to benefit from those supply drops as Tensai there. Trying to find the spot for Chappy as well. Can do so much damage in this position here. Dangerous. That's the start. Bringing it forwards. Kenji healing Moya Goku that keeps him alive, but can't handle Kuru getting in his face. That's the montage. Shitapo goes over the boxes. He's going to send the ball to the other side of the field by some time. For Zeta Division 1 to respawn and regroup. Time is ticking here. For Zeta Division 0. They need to get a response. With the amount of heals available to Zeta Division 1 with the Poco Kenji and he's got another one now as well. Trio over to Shitampo. Perfect person to have it for. Great take down the left as well. And now boy Goku just gonna push the ball through. What a response. We are all tied up. Absolutely stunning stuff there. Moyo Goku, a really standout player here, right? It's just insane that every time that rough super comes around, it's gonna equal some environmental uh, destruction. And that's really devastating when uh, you know the topography here really is supposed to help you defend as the team in red. Stunning stuff from Moya Goku now. We have an even set. Tampo knees. Those the Capo heels there from Kenji to really go on the aggressive. It's a tough thing. It's not actually even running speed here, no. by the way, as well, which is an interesting choice. And making it work nonetheless. Shappy's got to be careful. The pinch coming in. Moya Goku gets the clear up. Perfect pass coming through, but there is Tensai there to prevent this as best he can. It's dangerous. Still very dangerous arc. Moya Goku getting topped up here, like you said. Kenji trying to keep him alive. Achapi runs him over, though. Now you're on the back foot. Kenji's not in a good position to defend here at all. Achapi pinned him to the wall once more, but Zeta Division Zero, no. 
the D1 are going to spawn up. Tampo there just flashing his super, reminding Zeta Division Zero that a stun could be potentially inbound here. Here he goes. Pretty Open the box. So far, though, it's going to be said they are controlling the ball and bringing it forwards now. But Chappie with a stun. Shitampo, vulnerable. Curry pushing it through. Oh, Shitampo mistimed it. It was a beautiful bait. But no, finish to be had for Zeta Division Zero. Machapi had the stun there, but the ball was just short of the goal line. It wasn't able to get through. Kenji desperately trying to throw these heels at Moya Goku. Kuru's not able to convert here. He's going to be stuck in the corner, and Kenji gets the better of him. Now a chance to breathe for Zeta 1. They need to heal up a little bit, but they're not inclined to get the ball out of the corner too early. It's going to get moved now across to the left. Zeta Division 1, they don't have a terrible matchup in overtime either. Especially if Shitabu can be on those max stacks when it comes in, but the speed of Tensai is fierce. It's popping in now. Kuru moving forwards as well into an advantageous position to Tomoe Goku. Kenji, though, is in position. Those hills ready. They can't push it too fast, too quickly. They've got to tie their runs here. But that is a three versus two situation, and nowhere was they to one to go. There it is. The double stun. That's what they were waiting for. Kuru's not healthy enough to walk it in, so it's going to be a teammate. What a super pass from Shitampo away from the goal. It's going to buy some time. The Twister, though, that's a problem. The respawns are the only ones who could stop the ball. And Moya Goku Kenji able to walk in. They lose Shitampo, but they get a lifeline. Yeah, no trick shots, no flashy plays today from today's Division Zero. They just want nothing but pinpoint precision. Nice done again there from a champion to Kenji. Survives it, though, as well. Detective Tune's going out. The speed of Tensai now, the push is inevitable, the box is going down. This is a shining moment here for Zeta Division Zero to take this. Watch out for the Gale Super! Everyone's the Gale Super! Oh my word! Zeta Division Zero will take this first set! And we said it, watch out for the Gale Super, and it turned up in a big way. Zeta Division Zero able to control the map, the buster, so hard to shift. Even with Poco giving out so many heals, Surge is not the most durable brawler. Even with, of course, the, the gadget that lets him hang around in the fights a little longer. Zeta Division Zero starting off really well. It's not going to be a clean sweep for Z1 this time around. Ah, Zeta Division Zero looking a little diff today. Yeah, breaking the mold. And this is the perfect time for it. You know, the comp for me just felt a bit safer. Surge is always a bit of a risk, you know? But isn't it just poetic? For Zeta, you know, Max is the brawler which really made them so, so famous. And you're going to see in Brawl why it works so fantastically well. But at Shappy as well, he was able to gain so much value off the back of that Gale pick. He really, really was. Despite the poker heels, it just wasn't really enough there for Zeta 1. And again, I mean, I'm curious to see what the kind of numbers tell us here because it's pretty hard to quantify Gale's impact, right? The super stunts are just absolutely ridiculous. Here's where they push in, right? That's the first one. Uh, it's the one in overtime that really kind of blows my mind. Shitampo there with a super pass, get the ball away from the goals, just buying enough time. You're done here. Look at that. Absolutely hammered. Now, no stun from that, but it, pushing them back is more than enough. Absolutely ridiculous. Here you can have a look at our stats here. Oh. And again, like I said, I don't think, you know, Achapi's disgusting impact on that round is really displayed there, but we know, and we're telling the world, so I guess that's fine. I just want to point out as well, Moe Goku stats there with 13 takedowns. I mean, <laughs> pretty commendable round for him. But it is State Division Zero with that lead. And again, such an important thing, such an underrated thing to have in a competition like this. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, you know, it's a lifeline, isn't it? It's, it's the start, the roll of that momentum potential. And State Division One, they're going to have to respond now in a big way. Everyone in the world is watching. And it's kind of an unwritten, unspoken agreement between these two teams to just go absolutely freaking hog wild on each other every <laughs> single time they play. Don't hold anything back. You know, to be training partners here, they're used to this pace of play, right? Yeah. Other teams, we've seen it today, right? Some from Europe and NA to some degree, but just try and slow the game down a little bit, compose themselves, gather themselves. These two teams ride the lightning. They thrive in a maelstrom of brawlers, of supers being thrown around. This is their element, and they're giving each other and us an incredible show. Yeah, everything they've got to give as we go in now into Bounty in Canal Grande. I'm curious to see if we're gonna see a Carl Batten because it's definitely the flavor of both of these two teams here, and this is what I love so much about a Zeta v Zeta. They both know all the tricks, and they're both banning out Janet, both banning out Penny. Buster on the side of zero and Ruffs on the side of one. The first draft is an Eve, an underrated brawler here 
one that has, again, so much maneuverability. And after a recent balance change, really coming into a nice position now. Carl's open. Uh, you know, obviously flying hook to get yourself that blue star straight away. Definitely important. Clearly not the number one priority necessarily for Zeta Division 1, but I really do expect to see that come up. Unless something between these two teams is like, you know, push them away from wanting to play that. Maybe both teams understand that there's like a counter. Because Otis is actually going to get snapped up right after. It's interesting, isn't it? The level of priorities. And very map dependent. You know, Eve is one of those brawlers that just can really thrive here. Tick for control, but again, if you lose that mid ground, which a Max on the opposite side could well be something to encourage. It's going to be a struggle to gather spawn. Jean as well coming in for Zeta 1. And I really, really do like that. We see it a lot in other regions. Normally, actually, is a first pick brawler. Yes. The information game on Canal Grande is pretty unimportant. You have really wide ranging attacks and you know, being able to light up enemies, whether it's like Ventral Spirits or just your primary fire, get, making sure you're not getting crept up on, especially by Otis. Otis has super. You don't want him just walking at you out of a bush and getting an insta kill. You just cannot afford for that to happen. Canal Grande is the kind of map where the fighting can get much more close quarters and that makes sense to see Gale come up as a result. Such an interesting draft, isn't it? <laughs> it's inside the mind they of the wanna, masters. They want to throw hands. They just want to throw haymakers at each other all game. I, for one, welcome our new overlords from East Asia. I welcome this kind of play style. If you listen closely, you can just hear the sound of pencils all around the world as they're <laughs> writing all this down. And right, step one, lose your sanity and become absolutely like hog wild in the game of Brawl Stars. Two, <laughs> find a team that's willing to follow you down that rabbit hole and play this ridiculous brand of Brawl. <laughs> Three, question mark. Four, profit. <laughs> Five win. <Yeah. laughs> well, Blue Star has actually kind of left relatively open there. Moe Goku will pick it up. Kenji just trying to keep Kuru low, and actually that's incredibly low. Thick head being ran on the gear side of things, and going out now to keep Kuru under pressure. Oh, he does get it taken down, but amazing start really, wasn't it? Thick head, I feel so seen right now. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's incredibly powerful and hard to break down. Max can handle it reasonably well. He can just kind of auto-aim it often times as it sort of runs at you. But that blue star is in the hands of Zeta Division Zero right now, and they're applying a lot of pressure, especially because of this gene. I've got to say, a Charpy as well is really causing Shitampo some problems. Nothing better than his opposite number trying to lay down the law. I worry for Shitampo there, because ultimately, if Charpy wins that lane, he can then just go very, very quickly over to the right-hand side. Hatchlings. Hatchlings coming in as well. The thick head goes out. Very swiftly taken care of, but it has broken up some of the bushy areas, and that will leave less space for their Zeta Division Zero to hide. Kuro doesn't need to do this. He doesn't have to go aggressive. Zeta Division Zero already have the lead, but he realizes he has a golden opportunity to get even more of a star buffer. That's what I love about these two teams when they play each other. The best kind of show you could ask for. A chap there wants to keep pushing back here, of course. The recipient of the blue star in the first place. One of the safest brawls to have it on here, especially with the gadget that lets him jump away. Chitampo trying to get aggressive. Z1 are in trouble. Thick head, jump away, and Chop, he's got the moves. Start no match. Chitampo, Kuru goes down. It's the blue star that's keeping Zeta Division Zero together right now. Ten side with the face shift. And the what response, 174 HP, and he's still going. Chitampo could have got there, but that puts one in the lead now. Zeta Division Zero need to get value out of this magic hand, and they need it in the next 10 seconds. Boy, Goku has the mute. Ten is probably about to run headlong into it, but look at the moves. The face shift to get him out of the way. On the left side, though, the magic can had to come out and it wasn't enough. Zeta Division 1 fight back from an early deficit. <laughs> there really is nothing quite like it. There really isn't. Zeta and Zeta are just so enjoyable to watch. It's so back and forth, so aggressive. You really got to keep up because the game goes so quickly. And it's not just because of the max, it's because of the thumbs of both teams. Chappie pushing really aggressively here into the mid, trying to keep Shitampo against the wall, and he is so low. The hatchling might even get him if he wasn't taken down by the shots. And Kenji now way out of position. Five stars, and that blue star in the hands of Zeta, Division 1. Uh, better, zero. better give the uh, damage to Kuru there as he's got that magic hand up. No! And Moe Goku come in for a big hug, friend. Kuru greets him with familiarity. Tensai wants to push up here, Shitampo feeling the heat somewhat. Fat Splatter on the left-hand side will keep Kuru at bay for the next couple of moments. Kenji with a thick head going out. Chitampo trying to bait as many shots as he can. The ten side does make quick work of it. Two little shots from Kenji into the mid. Keeping Shappy low, but again, he's able to really maneuver and jump away. 
He's got that Essex strategy, but I can't say the same for Tensai. He goes down and a lovely ball yet again from Kuru. The stars are starting to really rack up now for Zero. Important for Kuru to find that, but again, the gene, six stars on him right now. Definitely needs to be a little bit careful, but that means a Chappi Tensai especially can take some risks in trying to get even more stars. Even a trade here if it's switched to Tapu is a net gain of one star, so keep that in mind. Might affect how Tensai gets aggressively. Zeta Vision Zero giving up a lot of ground here though, Ark. Yeah, they are, but they can't go back this early into spawn. The gates of one are gonna punish it. The Chappi is gonna be the first shot to go down, and there's a double stun! A double stun! For Shitapu, Kuru, and Tensai juking for their lives, and oh my no! Division one are turning around and they are retreating back and rightly so. Only one star in it. There's still a magic hand up here for Kuru. You see a Charpy Tensai going aggressive. All their opponents have more stars than they do. This is a golden opportunity. They try it even the ledger, but Shitapo was lying in wait in the bushes. And he has the perfect antidote. Now we have a game. Wanna well, say that that escalated quickly would be <laughs> a massive understatement. My goodness me, the cold, cool exterior there of Zeta Division 1 really proving all it's worth. Interesting to see Shitapo there uh, on the gale. I love it, he's just waiting in the bushes. Very, very patient from him. He knows, of course, that Zeta Division 1 have to come forward and he punishes that so well. Kuru that had six stars on him. You know, definitely a feeling like Zeta Vision Zero start giving ground way, 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 way too early in the round. Yeah, they can benefit by grouping up from Magic Pass, but they head to the backs to the wall, and it was just a shooting gallery for Z1. It's exactly it. You know, you, you really want to reap the benefits of those heals, but you've got to still hold your ground a little bit longer, otherwise you've just got nowhere to go on a map like Canal Grande, even the Chubby on the Eve. Know, who has got that extra strategy? He was in that exact same boat. Look at Kuru's game there. Five takedowns. Tensai was zero actually, but Shitampo, you know, Moiko, Kenji, yep. all split. Everyone I mean, doing their bit. Tensai's on the max there as well, so definitely looking to, to be the aggressor and uh, you know at least create openings here for someone like Achapi, uh, for example, to get in there. Big deep breaths here for both teams now, as this is playing out like a classic Z1 versus Z0 matchup that. You know, we kind of got to see, again, in the East Asian region in monthly finals, just on a far grander scale. To reiterate, last time these two teams played, it was really one-sided. Uh, Zeta Division 1 were all over it. Really looked very dominant from start to finish. It's quite clear that Zero put in the work over the last few weeks, really tried to take its, their run-up to these World Finals seriously. And I'm glad they did, because they're giving us an absolute banger of a game. You gotta consider as well the fact that, you know, Zeta Division 1, you know, they are the MSI champions. There was only one slot available, though, in this particular and region. on the sidelines. <laughs> Zeta Zero. Yeah. Watch them go. Watch them dominate the rest of the world. Go. What about us? Well, they got their chance here to make up for that and some. Dallas Rush in the draft now coming in. Fans of Janet Crow and B for Zeta Division 1. Carl, Otis, and Gene banned out by Zero. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see this. I think if either team is going to be more likely to go for the Carl, it's definitely Z1. Uh, Z0 has actually been on multiple occasions so far this tournament. They've also picked it, to be fair. Uh, they just didn't want to try and pick it up straight away. We talked about the Amber on Double Switch, right? Really important. Any map that's particularly verdant, want to try and clear some of that up at least. Create an asymmetrical situation where you have more cover than your opponents. And the Gus is going to be there to follow it up. So that also means that whoever's playing that Amber can actually start to get a bit more aggressive, push forward a little bit more because the more, the more time you have in connection with that ability uh, on your opponents, though, very quickly they burn down. I think it's interesting as well just how much Zeta Division Zero value that Amber pick. And again, it's the order of which they choose to draft that I just find the most fascinating. The yeah. Fang coming oh in. Oh my goodness. For Zeta One. And that is a brawler that we just have not really seen much of at the World Finals so far. And it's always going to be something that is going to have to keep your guard up. Zeta Division Zero now are going to have to really keep their firm eye on that whereabouts and have everyone on the communication ready to take care of it as swiftly as possible. Yeah, Fang, really scary in a pinch, right? Because it's not just one target that he can hit with that super. If anyone is too close, they're all going to get slapped for a base of 1,000 damage if they do so. And that only gets worse, of course, as you sort of uh, level him up. Here comes Poco now for Z1. This is a pretty nasty setup for Zeta Division 1. Gem carry, of course, most likely to be max, but 
We'll be able to watch Poker get aggressive at times, try and collapse those side lanes here. We'll have to be very wary, of course, of both the Gus and the Amber, and let's see what Zero opt to round out their composition with. Oh, <laughs> the Boogeyman returns. <laughs> Buster for State of Division Zero, and we all know what that brawler can do. It's, it's a very, very aggressive lineup, more so for State of Division 1 than Zero, but at the same time, the support network that really is there for Zero, you know, combining the Gus Shield onto Buster, he's going to be such a difficult one to shake, yeah. to take down. The positioning is really going to have to be considered greatly on the side of State of Division 1 to handle this situation. All right, so Moiko and Kenji, looks like they swap here. Kenji just descent him on Kuro, I love that. He knows exactly what he can get away with. Kuro thought he was dealing with Fang. Turns out the Fangs were even sharper as Kenji turned up. A sharper here, yeah, okay. So that matchup, Sitapo, definitely not favored in it. The bust is gonna be a problem in those head-to-head -head matchups. Roundhouse kick there to try and start on Sharpie, it's not enough. Yeah, Kenji as well has to retreat back away from this. He's now gonna try and respond, but oh my god. Speed gonna come in soon. It is Zeta Division Zero that are really taking a fantastic position on the mid speed from Kenji there as well. Shitampo with as much support as he can oh. give, but Chappie just locking it down. I love the position there, but it is gonna be a Chappie that wins that lane. Yeah, the numbers definitely don't favor Shitampo in that head to head, and especially with Tensai opting to give that shield over to a Chappie every now and then. There's a question about what they do about Kuru's lane though, because that's been a bit of an issue. We still need to get Kenji to part with these gems. He narrowly escapes in that last fight. Shitapo is, he's running it down into a Chappie. Running it down time and time again, and he's coming off second best at each and every one of those occasions. Gems are very evenly split, though. Boy, Goku lurking here, waiting for that shield to go down. He goes in, but he didn't quite get as much on the back of it as he would have liked. Shield for Tensai as well, and he'll soak up some damage. Kuri pushing forward, and this now, is scary now Kenji on his own with the gems on the right-hand side, late, not even in the mid, in a very precarious position here. Speed coming in for his entire team and a chance to push to prevent this countdown. Divine Souls there for Moe and Goku, so it's a little bit hard to get that damage to stick, but here's the countdown for Zero. They have so much map control, they converted that into a countdown. Chitapo trying to chase out the 10th side. He's healthy enough for the time being, and even Kuru holds onto the gems, and this is where the wheels start to fall off. The Zeta Division 1 bus. This jump is going to struggle to get around the corner. Screeching Solar there is nice, but again, not enough to force his opponents to part with their gems. Just goes to show, though, as well, that it's not always about aggression, you know? Sometimes it's about longevity, about strategy, and just trying to make sure that you're always in a good position. For Moe Goku, I'd like to see him just kind of take his time a little bit on this Fang pick. Try to really make those moments count, make it that two versus three, and open up some space for him and his teammates to be able to capitalize and going in now with a lovely time round. Hasuke gets the take down on Kuri now, surely not far away from Super either. Yeah, it's a bit of a trade in the end here. A Chapi now wants to encroach on Shitampo's territory. Moe Goku's going to be able to return to ward him off. We have Kenji rotating out of the mid lane here. Tuning for, if I'm not mistaken. And it's not enough to keep Kenji standing. Kuru's able to burn him straight down with the help of that Gust Shield. And here comes a Charpy, a perennial problem for Zeta Division 1. Shielded out, but Kenji just trying to find a little bit of an angle here. Connecting nicely now, but look at that, how much that mid control they've had to give away in order to do so. Chappie is just always in a fantastic position, healing up now as well. And Tensai coming in with some lovely support. Kuru there, gonna just leave some of that oil slick to be able to potentially burn it whenever he wishes. Speed coming in for Kenji and a lovely little spooky pop as well. So Shitampo's little cubby there gets burnt down. He can now no longer hide in a location that's close to the spawn of the gems. That's a big advantage over the Tensai and Co. now. Shitampo needs to put himself in a hard oh, Kuru. He gets there, Kuru goes down. Tensai now has to back away as his right side lane has collapsed. Still able to pick up a gem despite this. So fortunate spawn, but that's not going to stay that way. Zeta Division Zero need to reassert themselves. And a chop is coming through for the back line. Boya Goku's in deep trouble now. Somebody get him a Senzu Bean. Tensai gets out of the action here. And Zeta Division Zero, well, they're running the clock and they're looking awful good. Zeta one on the hunt. Six seconds remain. They've got to get Tensai. He is the only one there. The patients are in. Oh! Kenji gets it. Oh, and Moe and Goku coming in behind! Achapi. What is going on? Achapi Zeta Division do 1 are doing wondrous work! Achapi's trying to keep them inside his side of the map. Going after Moe Goku could be crazy. He's gotten so far away. He takes one gust hit. Tensai has to shield himself. Three seconds left. Kuru's bird comes in and it drops the gems! Kuru 
gets four. A Chappie with nine. He has super. He's going to try and walk away. The utility belt healing. The montage block. Zayna Vision Zero pulled off the grandest heist. The unthinkable. They managed to return the favor. And I don't know whether Zayn 7 Division 1 can do it twice. It looks like they're going to keep it. Oh, oh my word. What an incredible moment. I mean, <laughs> it really just goes to show. These two teams are just this close. Three seconds left in the round. Moya Goku's headed for the hills, but Kuro is hot on his heels. And I mean hot figuratively and literally. The blowtorch comes out. He burns <laughs> Moya Goku to the ground and gets away with all the loot. Zeta Division Zero, a hair-raising recovery on that gem grab round to go up two to one in this series. It just doesn't get any better than that. Unbelievable stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss for words, to be completely honest. Just what an amazing way to turn this around. This was fantastic. I mean, Kenji there, just superb. Moi Goku there with the perfect timing for this here, there, where Moi Goku was low. Kuro from the side, a chappy. Every single member of Zeta Division Zero just doing their bit and getting around the situation. I love that from a Chappie uh, in those last few moments. Look at his 362 DPS, absolutely filthy. Because he is one versus two, right? Zeta Division One have the gems, but a Chappie is on Zeta Division One side of the map. So he's backing up, trying to contain them, trying to slow them down. Throws a montage even in their direction, and it does. It slows them down just enough for the rest of the reinforcements to arrive and to get those gems dropped. Moya Goku, despite all his damage reduction care of uh, Divine Souls, is not able to stay alive after all three players from Z0 turn up and start snatching up the cookies from his cookie jar. A Chappie had 14 takedowns. 14. I mean, <laughs> talk about okay. the way of you out, Danny. To be fair. In the crowd, giving you some love. <laughs> to be fair. Uh, Shitampo kind of inting on him uh, at the start of that round, right? Running and trying to take these fights over and over again. Really just trying to keep a Chappie very much contained on that right side of the map. So a lot of those eliminations do come from Shitampo just serving himself up on a platter. <laughs> Still, very, very impressive performance there. Achapi's been one of the most exciting prospects on this Zeta Division Zero roster so far this series. Three sets down, still only one set in it, two to one. It's the moments I live for, the moments I wake up every day waiting for. It's just incredible. It really is. Zeta Division One as well, you know, when you look back at this year, you know, they were MSI champions. They were also the Season 1 Snout Dragon Pro Series champions in the grand final against this very team on the other side of the stage, Zeta Division Zero. It does feel fitting. It does feel a little bit fitting that when it's all said and done, Zeta Division Zero starting to get back with a little yeah. bit of an edge. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many bouquets they've caught, but I think they feel like it's their turn. Let's have a look at how this series has played out so far as these two teams deliberate on their next moves or approach in the halfway point in this series. Starting on Brawl Ball, uh, and again, these guys were straight at each other's throats immediately. Yes, yeah, such an exciting round of Chappie was getting so much value off the back of that Gale pick. And then Canal Grande, so back and forth affair all the way through, and that moment there, great stuff. Really was from Zeta Division 1 to capitalize down on that early retreat there from Zeta Division 0. But every single moment as Scott plays, it really speaks to the testament of how well both teams know each other. Yeah, again, the tendencies, just how the tempo would be. I really love this uh, this last round. Uh, Gem Grab always gives us some special moments, but again, we're seeing just how powerful these two sort of newer brawlers to the game can be. This Gus, this Buster combination. Very, very hard to slow a Charpy down. He doesn't have the highest fire rate either, right? But uh, again, doesn't matter. He's durable. He has a heal for all of his team. And this was it. This was the moment. A Charpy and Kuro both able to get away. The fact that a Charpy walks back with that super available means that there's really no chance of getting those gems back off of him. Oh man, how much is left in the tank for these two? Zeta Division 1 got to be feeling some degree of frustration here. But a close match between these two, nothing really out of the ordinary. I mean, we've asked everybody, players, coaches, pundits, you, whatever Teddy is, you know what I mean? They've all said the same thing. These two teams, like, a lot of teams in Scrim saw that Zeta Division Zero was actually looking a little bit better so far this week. But seeing him on the other side of the bracket, it's been so hard to say which one we expect to win. And that burning question that everyone has been asking in the backstage area is who is going to be able to take down Zeta Division 1? Well, the answer could well be Zeta Division 0. It's going to take their own organization. 
potentially to bring them down. Either way, players getting themselves geared up for the next draft to come and having a little bit of a breather. As you say, just trying to reserve some fuel in the tank and never a bad thing. Yeah, again, look, I mean, these two teams operate without coaches on stage. So a lot of the discussion about, you know, how their, their draft is supposed to look probably happens in moments like this. They do know what the next map is, right? So they have a chance to prepare for that. There's also the question of like, okay, so the other team knows what we normally do. Is it worth really throwing a wrench in the works, uh, mixing it up a little bit? And if we're going to do that, what is that? Have a chance to discuss that here. I think that's what exactly what Shitampo is doing to his two teammates there, as they are definitely having a discussion. Three sets in out of seven. We can only hope that this is going to go all the way. We've seen a pretty solid variety of brawlers so far in the last three maps arc, but I've got to say, definitely uh, a few repeat offenders coming out. It's interesting that Carl is not getting banned and is still not being picked. So something that neither of these teams actually want to risk playing against each other. Maybe they both know how to counter it and they don't want to risk running into it themselves. Yeah, oh, well, it's banned out this time by State Division 1, actually, and I think it's about time. <laughs> but like you said, maybe there's something in it. Maybe it's just a brawler which they feel is going to dominate every other region except themselves. And that would prove to be correct for what we've seen. Colette going to be that first pick. Pazeta Division 1, the bands on their side. Bonnie, Carl, and Max. Pazeta Division 0, Lola, Brock, and 8-Bit. And this is going to be a much different game, a much different pace. Longer range brawlers are going to be all the rage here. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Colette, obviously, is a bit of a given at times because they're super so effective, getting free damage on the safe forcing people back, also it operates as a tank counter in and of itself. So you're really satisfying two win conditions with the one pick. Really a no-brainer. She's been incredible in that role ever since she's brought into the game. But very, very quickly, we see Otis and Eve locked in. The amount of play rates and, and win rates that we've seen for Otis in this World Finals. No surprise that State Division Zero wants to really prioritize that particular brawler, Eve, as well here to work out tremendously well, just being able to support on every given lane. Not going to need a wall break necessarily on that side for Zeta Division 0 for that very reason. And now, Zeta Division 1 coming in with some picks of their own. Will they be daring enough to go with something like a Pyro Bell? Going to be a bit yeah. more of a safer choice. And I like that one for me. The reload gear has really, really catapulted her into the forefront of the meta. And we've seen B, Lola, even Rico at times on bridge too far. They're all completely reasonable options. I don't know if Zeta Division 1 wants to risk trying to play a tank here when Z0 have a, a final pickup. They did take out one of the most prolific tank counters, of course, in Colette. But there are still other options to try and shut that down. And it's also really easy to 2v1 lane when you have that Eve, right? Just, oh. just cross the water. Nani getting picked up here. OK, so double sharpshooter Colette set up here for Zeta Division 1. Well, if Zero were thinking Piper, I don't think they will be now unless they're brave enough and bold enough. There's no way. To stare straight into their counter. I mean, yeah, we've seen crazier things. I wouldn't be surprised, but I feel like it might be. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> a safer bet. To go with something else. But this comp from Zeta 1, it's very, very good. The Otis, though, and the Eve is going to be something to be trifled with. Buzz, I know even if I tried to think what the response was oh going to be, God. I would never have landed oh on Buzz. Oh, my <laughs> God. Kuru. Locks the buzz in. Let's talk about it, obviously, because Buzz, first of all, needs to close the gap. Now, he can do that with his super, also his gadget gives him a pseudo super without the stun. So it's very much for a, a gap close. He can get up in, and once once Buzz gets on you, you're in deep trouble. You're definitely going to get blown up. I have the idea of putting Tensai on this roll. Where do they put the buzz? How do they get value out of it? That's the burning question. They're going to double lane on Moya Goku right now. Shitampo very quickly is going to uh, about face and head to the right. Yeah, I mean, rightly so, he's going to get more value there. Already connecting lovely shots off against both the Chappie and Tensai. He warped! He warped out! Stop there. Shitampo trying to defend this with Kenji, but oh my boy, God. Goku is now going to be able to get some damage. Look at him go. Some damage? Some! <laughs> he's got 38%! And counting now. Moya Goku is actually going to get away with this. That is unbelievable! Tensai getting run over. Shitampo knows to come across on the mid lane, and now it's Kenji's turn to put some pressure down. That is... The audacity of that is just... I can't believe it. Warp blasting on the other side of the map at the start of the round. Zeta Division Zero took them a moment to realize what on earth was going on. Can't let it happen. Tensai now coming in, but the defense is beautiful for Kenji. Moi Goku, two nest decks on the right-hand side by Kenji as well, just to be able to deter anyone that tries to contest and push that lane. Nice tap on Takuru. Tensai really struggling on this bus pick. 
I had some high hopes for it, but so far, I need to see a little bit more to be convinced. Yeah, she's definitely been tough again. Even tried to play him in a two versus one lane, and it didn't work out. Shitapo on Kuru there, ten sides able to get the connection with the super, but he's marked. And there it is, taken down instantly. Moya Goku finds the peep on him, and that'll be that. Zayda Division 1, unstoppable in that first round. Getting themselves off the mark is exactly what they need. They are behind in terms of sets, but now ahead in terms of games. I feel like this comp is much more rounded. You know, it, it, it's much safer, more controlled. But I think that the big mistake in that last <laughs> round really was <laughs> Zeta Division 0 leaving the Nanny on the safe. Yeah, Tensai cheering for Zeta. No surprises there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Tensai pops the gadget there. Shitapo wasn't born yesterday, so gives him plenty of room. Moya Goku already pressuring down that Eve here. That is a terrible matchup, I feel, for the Eve. It's got to be tough. Able to play over the water at the very least here. Tensai, oh dear. Uh, this might be chalk, Dark. This draft did not play out well for Z0. Yeah, Tensai just knew that he couldn't really go in. Ultimately, he was probably going to go down regardless. He wants to be able to reserve that super, at least now, to have something of a high ground, but. I really do feel like it's just not the, the problem to make this draft work. It's almost like it's a bit of a sitting duck. He's not able to contribute really too much unless he really times this run perfectly. On the left-hand side, Kenji with a pickup and Nest Egg there for insurance. A couple of taps on the safe. Kuru with the hatchlings here, able to get into a more commanding position. Moya Goku obviously can't oh, help because oh, the peak oh, was there. Okay, oh, oh. overshot with the peak, but he uses Warp Blast just to change the style. Now he's in a position to harass down the safe. Tensai looking to do the same thing. He's going to do a lot of damage up close. Kenji has to respond to this very quickly. They get rid of the offending buzz, but a champion now turns up. This is starting to, to break down into absolute chaos. Kuru can't finish Moya Goku there. Maybe he expects that he... He's in the back of the bush, I'm not sure, but he stops firing anyway. Oh, shit, Zalpo! How do you like those supers? How about two of them? He'll have a third one in just a moment here as the gotcha catch. It looks like it's being popped, Shitampo. In a pretty nasty position now. And still a lead for Z1. Well, the score is actually incredibly close. Tensai goes in and does get the upper hand over Shitampo. On the left-hand side, Moogoku trying Wait to defend this Makura and Tensai are now both on the safe, and they take the lead! We thought this could have been over! We thought the draft was just bad for Zeta Zero! But as soon as they're able to get some proper map control, start to work their way up, getting the buzz on the safe makes all the difference! Now Zeta Division Zero have got to come up with something a little bit more special to finish this off before Z1 have a chance! It looks like they've done it! 1% to zero! We're even up here on Heist. When I watch Zeta Division, it's like I just am relearning the entire game every time. It's just a constant learning uh, cycle. I thought they, it was chalks, man. <laughs> I think one minute something doesn't work at all, and it just is showing clear signs of being a potential miss. And then you see why all the time there was a strategy, a game plan behind it. But now, the reset. Will Zeta Division Zero be able to do that again? Tensai flashing the gadget, gets the connection, he dies on his Shitapo, healthy though! He's able to get that super up, but Kuru snipes him as he backs away. Some damage on Zeta Division 1, safe though, it's probably from Kuru, 4%, his name. Shabby healing up now, and I'm surprised to see him come back so aggressively so quickly, but the fat splatter is down, and Kuru the egg now, gonna bring out some hatchlings. Wargok are doing his best to try to defend this, but struggling a little bit, but now a peep. Maybe a chance of grace to be able to get forwards. Oh! Lost way forwards. Titampo healing up now. Pressure down to Hatchlings, but Kuru's going to be there. Kuru's been so important in this round. Nothing flashy from him. Just constant pressure on that safe. Giving the lead to Zeta Division Zero. Tensai, super. Oh. No connection. Gets the gadget in, though. He wants to damage that turret, but again, Titampo is there with the super. Well, it's a really healthy lead so far for Zeta Division Zero. Now Zeta Division 1 coming back with some shots of their own. Chappy trying his best to be able to 2v1 this right-hand side lane. Tensai missed, and there, I think a gadget onto the safe as well, so that's going to take a bit more time to get himself on it. Shitampo defending for his life, and doing a fantastic job of it. If he can get down Kuru now and help his team. Kenji! He went down to the mute, the ticking damage eventually got him, and Chappy is winning a 1v2 lane somehow. Boy, Goku wants to pressure down, oh, oh, but Zeta Division 0 have the lead. Another time to collect his Tensai's failed. Kuru with some hatchlings on the way here, constantly pressuring down that safe. Eventually, a Chappie falls, a valiant hold on that right-hand side, but Tensai's going to walk up on this. You know he will. He gets brought down before he has a chance to lay a hand on the safe. 
but Achap is back in business. 30 seconds left. Tambo here gonna try and line up a super surely. Battles some shots forward, gets the save it's down close. to 11%. It's a tie potential here, but I don't think it's gonna end that way. Block, 20 seconds on the clock. Block. Oh no, 1%, 1%, 1% is all that was in it. There couldn't have been more down to the wire. And they can barely believe it themselves. Tensai body blocks the last few shots while Kuru's on the other side of the map doing what he's been doing all round. Safe, long range damage in small increments. It all adds up, Ark. And 1% separates these two teams, sending zero to a match point set. Unfreaking believable. Oh my word, I need to just reflect upon what I've just seen. Oh, we don't have time. <laughs> These guys aren't going to stop you, kidding me? These guys have one gear. Go! <laughs> oh, it's just insane. It's just insane. There's just so little in it. It really is just beautiful brawl. And there's nothing more you can say. It's impeccable, impeccable skill. I mean, we've got to see how this sort of plays out. This is 11 to 11. Watch what Tensai does. Block, block, block. And Kuru walks up on that turret. No chance for the hatchlings, but he just says, I've got to go now. I don't know what my team are doing on the other side of the map, but I know I have one objective. It's to hit this damn fridge. Wow. Look. <laughs> Shatanfo. 14 takedowns. He tried his heart out. But a very even split. It's got to be said on the side of zero. Five, seven, seven. Nothing Shitaba could do. I mean, but how's that going to feel? Three, I mean, he doesn't know this, thankfully. No one's telling him, oh, by the way, you got 361 DPS, still couldn't win Omega Lot. No one's saying that, of course, but he has to have felt it. Every single one of those 14 eliminations must have given him the feeling that, hey, we can do this. I can do this with you guys alongside me. Achapi holds that one versus two lane. He actually gets that elimination after getting the Otis mute onto one of his opponents, makes it a 1v1. He eventually goes down, but he does his job there. Stalwart defense combined with Kuru. Love to see it. They ignored him. They ignored the Eve so much of that round. Big mistake. What an advantage now. I say it's Division Zero. <laughs> Who would have thought it, honestly, of that draft? And uh, it just blows my mind. <laughs> it really does. Can I wait to see how this next one fares and whether Saints Division One can start to bring themselves back in this series? It's unusual to see them as behind as they are at the moment. But nothing but love between these two teams. But when the game is running, they are against each other now going in to Hot Zone. This is going to be epic. <laughs> these guys can be as friendly as they like afterwards, Ark. But right now, it's Knives Out. Zeta Division 1 are at risk of letting this one slip. Sharpie locking in the Crow here pretty much straight away. It's very hard to avoid Crow's primary fire. When you're trying to catch to the point, you are going to expose yourself to slowing toxin, and that's when things can start to get dangerous. I'm glad to see as well that Zeta Division Zero are banning out the mech. You no, know, it's one of those brawlers which is so dominant in the current meta for Hot Zone Squeak. Coco okay. as well banned out, Penny, Otis, and Max banned out on the side of Zeta Division One. I mean, you have to ban Poco Meg because Zeta Division One played that into Griff Squeak, a literal counter to that composition, and they still won the damn round. So if you can't counter them, just ban them. Just be done with it. B gonna be locked in here for Zeta Division 1 alongside the Ruffs. Some slow potential then on the side of Zeta Division 1 now as well. That Pogo ban, they actually placed themselves on the side of Zero. It's gonna be very difficult to do much when the slowing toxin comes into play and that does seem to be a bit of the strategy here of Zero. Now, looking to have something a bit more punch maybe in the mid, but then again, I mean, at this, at this present moment in time, Say it's Division Zero keeping the whole world guessing. Gasto gonna come in, provide more of that support and that all important shield. Gonna keep them on the objective for a much longer period of time. So I'm looking forward to seeing who the other beneficiary of that Gus shield would be. Remember, Kooky Popper is so scary. Walking up, getting hit by that fourth shot, and then taking an extra face full of damage is really very hard to anticipate. B is definitely going to have a range, range advantage here, but bringing Brock in will help answer that. Rocket Rain can also demolish the safe part on the left-hand side of the map for your opponents. Looks like a pretty robust draft so far. Feels like Zayt's Division Zero Morris be trying to really just ambush that mid, really just rush it in that sense, but CSZ Division 1 have a time now to respond. I, I love the roughs 
side lane, ultimately anything that's going to feed in over time to help their team, that be. I would like maybe a bell here myself. They found out the max, which has been a fantastic brawler to have. Janet coming in for Zeta 1. I feel like Zeta 1 have the better comp, but we've seen what Zeta Division 0 can do with the Gus and just how they're able to make that support brawler just lend itself to the entire army. Both teams here opting for rather long range compositions. Again, as the round goes on, the supply drops from Ruffs are going to be absolutely crucial. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Ring of Fire. It's three to one as Zeta Division Zero are poised to lift that trophy. Just one set away. Rocket Rain there from Kuru. It's the perfect spot for it. Everyone just keeping their range. And I did feel like the comps may be all designed to rush the mid. It seems like that was the early intentions. Now they start to take their lanes. Great slowing Toxin. Machapi, Shatampo jumping away. And now the objective just seeping itself in to Zeta Division Zero. You're not getting Janet probably pretty frustrating there for Zeta Zero. They used a Kooky Popper as well to try and secure that elimination. I said Sharpie's using a uh, shield gear here. He wants to make sure as much as durability as possible as Crow really can't handle the heat when it starts coming his way. There it is, Maya Goku falls 10 side, finding consistent connections. Now gonna shield himself out. Got the base used on the left hand side, but Shitampo on his own. It's not enough. Zero now, go up to 54%. Got the score, 60 now, and only six on the side of Zeta Division 1. They really need to get into this game. Time is not on their side right now. It's getting close to 70% now. The retreat is there for Zeta Division 0. Zeta 1 now take their, their mantle in the mid. A lot of info here for Shitampa. They dropped the beats to Noim, but they're going to be able to blow up those three barrels and get rid of that gadget as well. Shield up for Tensai. Perhaps they send a Charpy a little bit further forward. He still has slowing toxin charges available. Kuru's used all his gadgets though. 82, 83% and counting. Zeta Division 1 have to come up with something quick. They need some connections here from Moya Goku. They need consistent damage. They need a chance to take some map control, and that might have been it. Kenji now in a position to wrap around. Zeta Division 0 don't want to move, but they've been given no choice. Now only 8% remaining, but Zeta 1 hold the mid. They cannot now lose it. There is no opportunity of error. A Chappie jumping in. Desperate attempt, and Shatapo will shut it down. Tensai will do his best to try to aggress, but. He might well do it now, the shield pop is going to rush to the mid. This is going to be the round going the way of Zeta 0. No way for Zeta 1 to do anything about it. And Shitapo knew that. That's why he used his crescendo there. He knows he can't contest the hot zone while he's airborne. <laughs> he knows that it's essentially chalked at that point. The Brock gets a lot of value, a lot of, uh, like a lot of shit, a wall break here on the side of Zeta Division 0. They stand on the precipice of becoming your Brawl Stars World Champions for 2022. One more round, and they'll be home. Championship point. Such a daring thing to stare down the eyes, stare down the barrel here for Zeta Division 1. But if there is any team that can bring a comeback, it's going to be them. They have got a better start. It's going to be said. 20% now on counting, and it's actually this time Zeta Division 0 that are a bit slow to the mark. Slowing Toxin there because the Charpie hits two members of Zeta Division 1 with primary fire. That enough is to, that's enough to force them away. Kuru wants to try and clear the map, but he still doesn't see Moya Goku coming out of the bushes. Just 18% accrued for Zeta Division Zero here. It's okay, but they're definitely behind the eight ball so far. Tempo favors Z1. Chappy now with Shield pushing his way forwards and slowing Toxin onto Shitampo. It's a great maneuver there. He might just tick down all the way. Kenji's got to go. Yeah, he's so low. And now Chappy trying to finish him. Oh, that's from the base from Shitampo. It was beautiful, but not enough now. Tensai still holding firm in the mid, juking. Moe Goku there as a chap who will go down. The slow, not going to connect there either. It's so close. It's a 2v2. Kenji is still behind enemy lines and he is causing a lot of problems. He has no sandbags left though. So he has to hope the rest of this round he can get away without being able to take cover. Kuru comes out of spawn here. Shitapo gets slowed up. He has to use that crescendo now to stay alive. Looking to snipe a free kill on Kuru when he gets it. That's value city, baby. But Zeta Division Zero are up on the hot zone and they've gotten the lead. Look at the time they're taking down now as Zeta 1. Close in, it's 55% apiece. One minute 30 remaining, but Zeta Division Zero trying to find their way back in. A supply drop hand over from Kenji to Shitampo. It's neck and neck, it couldn't be closer. The shield though available to Tensai is gonna encourage a big meaty push coming in for the objective. 
A Charpy doesn't have the durability, that's a problem. Tensai might need to think about using that super pretty soon. Zeta Division 0 playing it safe, but they need to get that percentage. It's even again. Zeta Division 1 bring it back to 62 apiece. Got the base thrown down, but it's going to be dispatched just as quickly. Moi Goku misses the empowered shot. A second one going wayward here. A Charpy going to get shielded now as he goes forward. The crow is diving, and he can't find the kill. Kenji will tick down in health, though that poison will tick. One more shot would have been enough to do it, but this gives Zeta Division 0 a chance to stay on the point. 82 almost for them. Zeta Division 1 now regroup a little more, but they move up once more. There is a rocket rain available here for Kuru. He's going to let it go to the right-hand side of the map. 87 now. We've got 26 seconds left in the round. Moe Goku's trying to push this right-hand side. Tapo's down. This could be it. The dive is there for Zeta Division 0. And it turns out, when you divide by 0, you get a problem you can't solve. Zeta Division 0 Ah, your 2022 Brawl Stars World Champions. The greatest team in the world. It had to be a victory they plucked from their sister team, but they were always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Now they've received a promotion to Kings of Brawl! What a journey. What an amazing achievement this really was. Saints Division Zero reign victorious. There are tears in the arena. Everyone on their feet. What an amazing achievement this was. A moment here that may never be achieved by another player, a Charpy and Tensai with back-to-back -back world championships. Oui, pour Zeta Division Zero! Wow. Quelle journée, quelle journée, quel week-end, quelle compétition, mais évidemment les champions ils sont là, ça fait deux doubles champions du monde dans l'équipe. Donc prenons quelques petits mots du gagnant. On va la faire en anglais l'interview, comme ça on peut la traduire en japonais. Very quick interviews of course, with the winner and with the captain Tensai. My first question is very simple. On your first day you were against Chasma Gaming Brazil. You were O and two. That was the hardest moment. What happened? You haven't lost, like, you haven't been worried since then. What happened at this point two moment? ショウさんはね、まず 0-2 so when we lost the first two, we went to the third one, and we knew we were super strong on this one. So when we got that one point, we knew that moment, okay, we're good, we can go all the way. That's super good. One more question, of course. You know, round of applause, guys. Was it the plan to have Japan versus Japan in Grand Finals? There was one Zeta last year, they won, and the two Zetas are in Grand Finals. Was that the master plan? Well, obviously, we wanted to go all the way from the beginning to the end for the Zeta Championship, and we did it. And one last question for our champions. We know the Brawl Stars Tour comes back in 2023. Japan just won it back to back. Can Japan go for the three beats? Can anyone stop Japan next year? Japan won the 
連続できると思いますかそれとも日本はもうずっと最後まで優勝できると思いますかもちろんこれからも優勝していけると思っています Obviously we're going to go for the third one <laughs> No one can stop them! It's Zeta Division Zero Thank you so much everyone for joining us all weekend long Please make some noise for our champion Zeta Division Zero! See you everyone in 2023!